గిఫ్ట్ వచ్చింది అది దానికన్నా ముందు ఇంకా ఈ రబ్బర్స్ ఉంటాయి అవునవును ఆ రబ్బర్స్ చాలా రోజులు ఉండి 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 అయ్యి ఇక వాడంగా వాడంగా అరిగిపోయి చిరిగిపోయాయి అన్న ఇక్కడ పైకి పోయి నాకు వైట్ షర్ట్స్ తేవా హలో ఒకటే హలో శ్రీనివాస్ గారు హలో ఐ కుడ్ హియర్ యూర్ వర్డ్స్ మ్యామ్ Yeah, 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 madam. Good morning, madam. Good morning, oh. good morning. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can see you and I have made your course, madam. Okay. okay. Yeah, we will start in uh, 10.15, madam. Is it okay? 10.15. 10.15? 1.5, 1.5. 1.5. Yeah, we will start anywhere participants are here, no? We will start. 
because uh, yeah yeah i can understand okay 10 madam 40 1040 i'll stop sorry okay 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 madam take your time one minute sir प्लीज म्यूट योर सेल्फ श्रीनिवास सर शेल आई स्टार्ट सर शेल आई स्टार्ट सर या या शुरू मैडम या या स्टार्ट यस 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 सर Uh, good morning and welcome to the second day of the two day national e workshop on training development of sports and games orientation program organized by the department of physical education university college of engineering osmania university in collaboration with batruka college yesterday we had a wonderful session with eminent speakers like dr uh, dr george abraham professor b sunil kumar and uh, uh, dr narsimha yadav and we also had a chairperson from uh, be a chief uh, chief guest from uh, badruka college pre principal of uh, badruka college dr n mohan kumar and we are very grateful to badruka college for uh, arranging this in such a wonderful manner and uh, now i would like to welcome the resource persons the chairperson professor kumar molugram who is a principal university college of engineering osmania university the convener professor sushil kumar the co convener dr srinivas members of organizing and coordinating committee as well as the participants once again i assure the participants that the second day is equally inspiring and exciting as the first day and we have lined up eminent persons as we did yesterday this is your moderator tain savriyapur your host for the second day orientation program without much ado we let us begin the first session the resource person will be dr p swati dr p swati head of the department of psychology osmania university hyderabad will be explaining about the psychological skills and sports performance 
And the chairpersons for this session will be Dr. Ravinder, Assistant Professor in Physical Education, BJR Government, Degree College, Hyderabad, and Dr. Suresh Reddy, Associate Professor, Department of Physical Education, VV Degree, and PG College, Hyderabad. Before Madam starts her session, a brief introduction about her. Dr. K. Sridhar Reddy has 14 years of experience. Sorry, sorry ma'am, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I mean, just a minute, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> Um, Dr. Swati, HOD, Psychology, Osmani University. She's also a practicing psychologist, has more than 15 years of experience in teaching in UG, PG, and PhD courses. She's also a trainer in psychology and a research supervisor. She has done courseware for distance education. Welcome, ma'am. I request you to take the first session. Thanks a lot for your sweet and precise introduction. Uh, generally, like a uh, series, they read the whole thing, but you really made it very precise uh, uh, to, for the time saving. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, outset, I really uh, thank all the organizers for organizing this event, uh, especially like uh, at this time, uh, where like the participants who are in the sports field or even otherwise the students and general human beings are uh, slowly like trying to come back, resume to their uh, traditional and conventional kind of the jobs that they're doing and uh, coming to the online and uh, uh, trying to still sustain their activities. Uh, I think uh, at this particular time, organizing such programs to motivate the participants, to motivate the physical educators, the coaches, everyone uh, to make them again, bring back to the stream, uh, uh, mainstream line. I think uh, such activities are needed. Probably like in future, in the coming months, I think definitely we'll be moving on from online to offline. Uh, so I thank all the organizers for giving me the time to talk. And at the same time, I really uh, express my uh, uh, sorry to really cause some inconvenience due to my change in the schedule. So originally we thought like 11 to 11.40, but uh, I have to request uh, Dr. Srinivas to uh, push it uh, to the first session. So. Uh, within the half an hour, I think probably definitely we can focus on certain inputs. Later on, like we can take those concepts to the inputs into the uh, practical field, where how you can uh, implement them, we can uh, try over that. So coming to the today's session on uh, the psychological for a better performance. Naturally, like when I said performance, it would be a sports performance because uh, all of you are related to the sports. Are you able to see the PPT which I shared now? Are you, are you able to see the slide? Yes, ma'am. We can see. Okay. We can see the screen. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So generally, like I think in this uh, group, uh, there might be physical educators, there might be uh, the coaches, there might be the students who are pursuing their physical education course and probably some of the players wow. also, right? So the moment we say the performance, uh, whether it is a performance in the exam, whether it is a performance in the competition related to facing some interview or writing in the entrance exam or directly uh, like entering into the uh, competitive field where you have to attend the match or uh, face a run, whatever it is, the moment we say the term performance, obviously like mentally, whatever preparation you have done for the couple of months, for the days together, on that particular day, something stops us or something is bothering us, right? So even the best players on the ego, on the, uh, the kind of the mental set that they would have probably is very negative or the the kind of worry that they are experiencing might be really showing the uh, effect on the performance. So I just want to know from you through the chat box, what are your experiences? As a coach, as a physical educator, or as a sports person, when you really get the technical training related to the sport that you are playing, and you still have a very good practice also. But why sometimes the players generally miss the target? Why generally the players fail to achieve their goal? Whatever the game, what, what are your observations? In spite of the uh, efficient training, 
in spite of the uh, best coach that is available to them why sometimes uh, they are unable to reach their goals why they are not up to the expectations of the audience or the team players or the coach or the physical educators what are your observations if you can put it in the chat box that would be better we can have the interaction only from me hope the question is clear simple thing in spite of technical support in spite of the technical support here is the best coach the best tips that are given as to how to play the game but still why players fail on the day of the competition in reaching to the expectations of themselves reaching to the expectations of the team players or the coach or the physical educators a voice is not clear is it to everyone yeah yeah ma'am voice yeah, is not clear clear right yeah i have seen in the chat box voice is not clear so i just got it now so you can just answer in the chat box what are your observations yeah uh, those who raise the hand probably if you want to respond you can respond madam continue madam yeah yeah i am asking the question so if anyone yeah some inconvenience okay uh, so what is what could be that inconvenience i don't know why voice is not uh, clear srinivas can you just uh, Uh, me like is it only to few people the voice is not clear or is it to every yeah it's not like that but that some yeah we, your your video and your audio is struggling madam sometimes ma'am it is slightly not audible ma'am not the clarity is not there yeah actually in the arts college this is the problem from home that because i have to attend here also i am sitting here um okay i'm are you moving no, the slides ma'am i'm i didn't move i didn't move okay. those slides i okay, just asked yet. the question and i am asking the participants responses yes ma'am yes ma'am okay what could be the reasons for the students uh, for the players performance i don't know why this Yeah. Okay. What could be? Uh, I don't know whether you are able to uh, listen to my voice. So generally, like people uh, give various reasons as to why they are unable to perform well. This could be uh, like the anxiety, the kind of the worry, whether the uh, opponent is more uh, stronger than me, or will I be able to reach my expectations? So all such kind of the. uh doubts self doubts the negative thoughts all these things might be worrying the players so sometimes in spite of the hectic uh, practice but still they may not be able to be up to the expectations so gen what is the term peak performance what do you mean by peak performance any idea what is the peak performance what do you when you call uh, the players performance as the peak performance when do you call the players performance as the peak performance yeah very high uh, ashok uh, i don't know like high in the sense you are speaking about the performance is high right the performance is very good okay so when you feel like the players are depicting showing the peak performance what sort of the characteristics do you think uh, these sports players will be displaying when they are giving the their to the utmost performance the peak performance what sort of characteristics we expect how that kind of a performance will be so can anyone answer 
if the peak performance means like the best performance very high performance effective performance among those players who are able to give the peak performance what do you think are the characteristics that they they have so peak performance means those very rare moments when everything is uh, going well for an athlete both physically and mentally so physically they are like to their enthusiastic levels very high levels the kind of the maximum physical fitness that they are able to display and at the same time psychologically also they are very strong that they are not ready to give up they are able to take up even the crises they are able to meet the crises and then they are showing the best performance even under the critical situations even under the crises that we can call it as the peak performance and that particular performance we can also call as zone of optimal functioning what do you mean by optical and uh, zone of optimal functioning what do you think is the zone of optimal functioning everyone will have the maximum level where you can do the best if you are a teacher where you can give the best lecture if you are a player where you can put in the best performance or if you are a coach where you can maximum like you can do your best to make the to mold the player so similarly for the players we have that zone of optimal functioning there is nothing uh, left unturned we generally say there is no stone unturned that the ent e mukha avakasanni kuda vadalledu complete best performance ki try chesi the best output ivvagaligina zone ni zone of optimal functioning ani antam optimal level of functioning so among such players who display the peak performance we can see these characteristics a narrow focus of attention so what sort of an idea like narrow focus of attention in the sense we have broad focus of attention we have a narrow focus of attention narrow focus of attention here means like the focus the concentration is only on what is to be achieved what is to be done what is to where to be focused not getting diverted to the other areas then the performance is like automatically it is coming up it's not like completely under the strain the performance is not displayed under the mental strain whatever the crisis whatever the hurdles whether it could be the weather it could be the strong opponent or there might be some injuries but all those things are not stopping the uh, the person so the performance is very automatic and really not uh, we can see like the player is enjoying the play rather than under the stress so the performance is effortless and automatic and there is complete control of body and mind so uh, they can regulate their physiological levels that is like no uh, heart rate is increasing no perspiration rate is increasing uh, they are able to sustain they are able to maintain their physical balance and at the same time the mental balance because we cannot separate mind and body but unfortunately if you look the individual as two separate entities working with the mind working with the body then but you feel like if i start worrying when there is a mental disturbance naturally that will be affecting my energy levels the physical energies so similarly like if there is a physical fitness is low or if any kind of an uh, physical disturbances like it could be the illness the physical illness some kind of an uh, normal day to day uh, sicknesses if these things even a slight a, a headache during that particular moment that may be disturbing the mental state of the individual so we need to have the complete control of the mind and body if they if we are trying to uh, give the peak performance and more than all these things definitely what is your attitude towards the game towards yourself towards the opponent towards the audience so don't bother here about the expectations of the expectations of the audience all these things but we need to have like the the present moment we have to live in the present moment the focus should be on what is to be achieved how i should be able to deal with it and even if i have to manage the any kind of a crisis at that moment sometimes like probably uh, the shoe might have not been right really helping 
uh, or there might be some injury on this court or uh, any like the weather might not be supporting but still if the game is continuing to what extent like we have to uh, take, take it in a positive way and believing in oneself like any sort of a crisis i am ready to handle or my my earlier experiences will definitely help me to deal with the situations the current situations so this kind of a confidence in the player will make the person perform better and there is no fear of failure the moment to be think generally like will i be able to pass this exam or will i be able to pass this event or will i be able to perform well uh, what happens like if i don't do or uh, my opponent is very strong and he has these uh, strengths whereas i don't possess the this kind of the strengths so the moment we focus on the fear of failure naturally whatever the optimal functioning you can perform that cannot be done and you should play that is the player should be completely totally relaxed so here to make the person totally relaxed the psychological skills are to be taught so as a psychologist what i feel is if all the physical educators who are working as coach uh, or like uh, the team leaders i think definitely you are good in, the, in your own technical field there is no doubt in that you can train the uh, players in the most best way but if you can also learn certain psychological skills if you can also undergo certain uh, psychological skills training probably uh, you can impart those skills to the uh, your own uh, students that is physical educators students sports students uh, players whoever you are dealing with directly because it is a highly heterogeneous group and you, most of you are playing different roles so whenever i say all these uh, who are associated with the game so this psychological skills as coach probably first you have to learn you can undergo certain kind of the training uh, especially on few uh, important techniques which might be really useful to uh, inculcate in the players so why this psd psd is doesn't uh, it is like the simpler form of psychological skills training a research says um, many coaches when they were interviewed when they were asked to Uh, who the questioner they said like 50 to 90% of the athletes success can be attributed to the psychological skills so this psychological skills it is like how you develop the technical skill how you develop the te- tactical skills like how hmm? how to hold the ball how to hold the bat uh, what is the angle that we are trying to hold uh, the instruments similarly the psychological skills can also be practiced can also be learned by the athlete only thing is we have to we so cannot have part. a tailor made thing you cannot say like so all the players can have one similar program because each individual is unique their strengths may be different their weaknesses may be different their limitations may be different so you have to stick with each player you have to identify what are the best things that they have psychologically what are the limitations that they have at the psychological level and we have to design the programs accordingly so when you give the psychological skills training performance will be enhanced personal growth will also be promoted if we can enhance the motivation levels and also we can create a self awareness the player will know like they can do the spot analysis with regard to the play with regard to the game what are the best points in me what are my strengths while playing the game what are my weaknesses or the limitations while playing the game why am i failing or why am i not able to reach the goals and there might be certain threats like what are the threats that they are thinking so the threat could be here uh, probably they were not uh, they have not taken a very uh, high level of a coaching whereas the opponent might have taken the they might not have certain opportunities so this kind of the threats will be there but what are the opportunities that they have so when we when they do the spot analysis naturally like they will know more about themselves and self awareness can be improved so when the self confidence is inculcated in them definitely there will be a flow performance flow performance in the sense like completely they are involved they are enjoying they were playing the game without experiencing any stress and strain without having any fears without having any negative thoughts so that flow performance can be improved up like for example like you might have seen certain dancers or musicians the way they were engaged in that they will forget about what is happening around nothing will be bothering so that is the flow performance 
So in order to increase this, this kind of a peak performance or a flow performance, naturally like we can uh, use the psychological skills training. And the research says one side of the coin is they have to be trained physically or technically related to the game. The other side of the coin for the success is the psychological skills training. There are certain uh, myths also regarding the psychological skills. Who have to be given? Is it like only for those athletes uh, where they have a problem that they are not able to perform? No, it is for everyone. Even those who are really doing good for their better performance, we can still give them the this kind of a psychological skills training. And sometimes like they feel like probably it is only for elite athletes, only for uh, those uh, special populations, not necessary. Anyone can be trained. It's not only from the elite population. And psychological skills training will not give you quick fix solutions. Overnight, uh, you will not, you cannot expect. But once the skills are inculcated and if the players are able to practice these skills, definitely like uh, over a period, the performance will be improved. It's not like quick fix solutions. Overnight, you cannot expect them. Then sometimes, some of the coaches may be feel, feeling like those who are not, especially in India, we don't have a sports pro, uh, sports psychologist very prominently, right? So they might be feeling what is there in the psychological skills. The more they focus on the how to play, probably that will be uh, definitely be helping them out. But actually, along with the technical aspects, even the mental uh, training is necessary. So there are different phases in the psychological skills. First, the assessment. You have to assess your player. Like uh, when I said like SWOT analysis, you can create the SWOT analysis. Like what are the best points in game? What are the limitations in the person? What are the desired outcome? Desired outcome in the sense, like is the confidence is lacking in the player or anxiety is more in the player? We have to reduce the anxiety or is there more of the negative self-talk in the player? So what is to be decreased? What is to be enhanced? So the desired outcome is enhancing confidence or sometimes they may not set the goals or the negative thoughts might be uh, reduced. So that, that is the desired outcome. So once you assess what is to be improved, what is to be reduced, we can plan the intervention. The second stage would be education stage. So here we tell them how this psychological skills will also help them to perform well. So simple exercises we can give certain worksheets will be given to them, certain uh, motivational videos can be played in order to make them understand like how they have to deal with the crisis. Next phase is acquisition of skills. Once we give them the importance of psychological skills, then we try to make them acquire, learn the skills in a proper safe environment. Like sometimes uh, the coaches feel like we have to be very harsh to them, only then we'll take a challenge. That is fine, that's good. But for every player, it may not work. So we have to say like, there is a conducive environment that you are very empathetic to the players, that you are uh, morally supporting them. So once they feel like they are not in a threatening situation, the coach is able to understand them, definitely they'll be able to acquire the skills. So once they acquire the skills, they have to integrate the skill into the practice routines. So every day how they give uh, practice to the game. Similarly, every day they have to practice whatever techniques they have been learning psychologically. And then finally, the evaluation. After introducing the psychological skills, whether uh, there is an improvement in the performance or not. Okay, next. Like when we say psychological skills, we can divide them into three levels. Foundation skills, performance skills, facilitative skills. Like how uh, you, before you start teaching the actual game, you give them some foundation training. It could be warm-up exercises or it could be certain things to make them physically fit. So like to, before teaching the psychological skills, they you have to uh, give certain foundation skills. And these foundation skills means first commitment. Is the player playing on their own interest? Are they interested in being in this field? Or is it their um, mother's uh, desire or father's desire or someone else's desire? 
because if if you want, if the player wants to fulfill someone else goal someone else dream naturally like uh, they cannot own it so the commitment levels the motivation levels the confidence levels have to be first improved so these are the most important foundation skills once the foundation skills are improved then we can say we have to focus on the performance skills so here performance skills are those skills which we have to teach in order to improve their performance so when they were training during the training we can give them and these skills can also be practiced can also be implemented when they are in the actual competition so what are the performance skills here concentration how they have to improve their concentration levels what are the things that they are disturbing why they are losing the sight why they are losing that uh, attention while playing so we have to identify the reasons behind it and we try to improve the concentration coping with pressure definitely even the best player will be under the pressure under the whatever be the reason behind the pressure so how they are able to handle the pressure since it's not like maximum players don't experience the pressure even the best player when they experience the pressure how they are able to bring the control on them so that coping with the pressure is the most important thing and control activation that is to what extent they are mentally prepared to participate in the competition to take up this kind of an uh, event so naturally like these are performance skills where concentration coping mechanisms and mental preparation has to be there then the last one would be facilitative skills when you teach these facilitative skills performance skills will be easily improved so here the way you communicate to the other players to the coach about your nature of the game or your own uh, limitations that you have you can talk to the coach then uh, motivation how one can enhance the motivation levels it's not like all of us will have the same kind of a motivation throughout the event or throughout the uh, learning of the game or when you are participating in a series of competitions every day you may not have the same kind of a motivation so how you have to increase your motivation level self motivation how it can be increased and if it is a team game team game like what sort of a team work how team building has to be inculcated how the team spirit should be there in order to have a better performance and sometimes like injuries will also depress the person will cause more of the anxiety we see in our uh, everyday things also like how uh, the players whenever they were under the injury it takes some time to cope with it so how they can be rehabilitated and then their lifestyle management so strict diet proper sleep all these things also have to be focused upon so the research says all of you know that if you are not having any anxiety any arousal also it's very bad there is a poor performance if you have a very high level of arousal also there is a poor performance but when you have the moderate amount of arousal the participant the player will show the maximum performance so this inverted u shape u shape curve indicates there should not be too low of anxiety or arousal or high of arousal or anxiety but there should be a maximum performance and we need to focus on building the efficacy of the players so efficacy means the efficiency how we have to enhance that so like if there is uh, too much of emotional arousal naturally they cannot perform well the performance would be poor there should be some kind of a verbal persuasion that is that moral support from the coach and also from the positive self talk that i'm capable of doing it probably i'm improving in my game gradually so this kind of a verbal persuasion will improve the expectations regarding the efficacy and also ultimately the performance then vicarious experiences observing the others players both the good role models and also the negative role models from the good role models like what are the things that they are putting in uh, for a better performance how i should learn those things or why these players have failed what are the mistakes that they were doing and then assuming that i should not do these things so simple successes also will uh, help the individual finally to gain the confidence and then do the performance another important aspect here is mental gym most of the players like they go to the uh, do the engage with the physical exercises doing the gym and all these things but mental gym that is 
what sort of an activities you are giving to your mind so cognitive techniques one is visualization we have to teach them like to visualize the occasion the event the audience uh, who is the opponent uh, the best part of the opponent the kind of the game that they are putting up and then uh, how this player is playing doing it in a positive way visualizing is a positive visualization that even if the opponent is wrong even if the client is not conducive how the player is able to put the best performance so that imagery or that visualization will definitely help the person then self talk we we know that most of the time like we engage in the negative self talk but how we can inculcate this positive self talk then we have to have the control over our attention so external factors will be influencing us it could be the audience it could be the noises or internal factors like your own negative self talk or your own worries so all these things need to be controlled so here just in uh, visualization is about like if i get this if i uh, be successful in this event probably i may uh, get a car from the money that i am getting it or in a small kid might be visualizing about a toy so this is like what they are doing it so when we are it's asking them to visualize it is not simple visualization but the using all the senses like touching the ball or the, touching the bat how it is how they were feeling okay then uh, uh, how they are perceiving the things the whole event so in the visualization that is in the mind side how you are looking at the game the ingredients of the game that is the instrument that you are using as part of the game so you are touching you are feeling you are sensing uh, and you are entering into the, you are able to touch the grass in the visualization it's very smooth it's giving you a good feeling and the way you started the game so using all the senses making the players uh, visualize the game and that visualization also that they are performing well that will help them out to really put it into the uh, that is Thing doing when they were in the training. So when they were doing this at the real uh, uh, event, definitely like the amount of anxiety they experienced would be very less. They have already visualized in their mind side the the scenario, so that may not cause the more of the worry or high levels of worry. And coping strategies also can be taught as to how they can instead of worrying instead of avoiding the situations how they can handle the things the another one will be the concentration so concentration is the most important thing for any task to be performed and that is definitely for the players so we have to overcome our uh, distraction from the internal thoughts internal feelings sometimes like uh, some event might have happened before coming up to the competition so that might be affecting your mood that might be disturbing you so you have to keep all those things aside and the best players generally like they live in the present the present moment once the game is uh, over probably again they may think about the events that have happened it may be traumatic experiences it may be some crisis at home but uh, at that moment they do not think about it and similarly like you should not be you should be used to all those external uh, noises external disturbances like noises or uh, too much of light all these things so concentration can definitely be learned can be practiced if you are able to give them so here already i told you like uh, there might be a broad attention there might be a narrow attention so internal factors have to be controlled uh, to that like we need to be mentally prepared as to how we have to put the things aside and how we have to rehearse mental rehearsal has to be done not to get distracted and then finally uh, depicting the action plan then somatic techniques like gen the generally like breathing problems or too much of uh, uh, anxiety and worry or uh, perspiration is taking place so for those people we can give pmr technique i think probably you might be knowing this pmr technique so this pmr technique will relax the whole body so after the event Uh, that is like after the practice every day before going to the sleep if they can use this pmr techniques uh, that will soothe the body and also relaxes the mind but all the 
just taught if they want to do like control the anxiety then breathing techniques can also be used then activation that is you have to be like activated that is you have to be mentally alert how you mentally prepare for a particular event so not only the hard work that you are doing but you also have to relax the body using listening to the music uh, reviewing what are the goals that you have set in for this what mistakes you have to avoid what what are the things that you have to focus upon so when you are mentally preparing either on the day of the event before Uh, the moment you get up from the bed when you visualize these things when you activate yourself uh, the adrenaline uh, hormones will be uh, released and that will make the body like be ready for the event so goal setting is the most important thing so if it is a beginners the goals will be different if it is inter the intermediate stage the goals will be different already they were so the uh, new people already they were the like uh, they were running the track so like those who have witnessed most number of competitions uh, for them the goals will be different so what should be the outcome goals what should be the performance goals what should be the process oriented goals they have to be having the clear cut so outcome goals is like after this event from this event what is it i am expecting to prove myself in what are the areas performance goals okay earlier this was my limitation or weakness but this i could improve it process oriented goals join playing what are the things that you have concentrated upon and then goals should be smart i think you might be knowing so you have to have a specific goal and that should be measurable like one month back what was the mistakes that you were doing and how you could improve that if there is a, even a slight change in the uh, in, in the in the technique that you are following that means you are able to measure it that you are improving it and the goals should be realistic not comparing yourself with the others or overnight you cannot expect to change then mental toughness so you can you not only physically tough players should have that mental toughness wherein the concentration levels confidence levels focusing only on the present and in the present moment there should not be any fears or worries and they always always like whenever there is a thought that comes up negatively they have to use a mantra i will never give up or i work harder than everyone self so whatever mantra you can create for your own self based upon your uh, uh, situation you can use this and certain things have to be let go if someone has said something they spoiled your mood uh, don't take it to heart before that event you have to let go certain things and sometimes we are human beings in spite of uh, number of uh, practices we still make mistakes so first instead of blaming us we have to forgive ourselves and we should practice on focusing focusing is here again concentration so generally if you observe your self talk even for simple things uh, we get uh, mostly the negative thoughts so whenever we are getting the negative thoughts we have to use a technique called thought saving that is take a break from the worry don't allow your thoughts to crop your mind put it all the thoughts that you are getting so that on a piece of paper so that you will not keep it in the mind that is one way you are transforming onto the paper the moment you share it with someone or you put it on the paper that burden of negative thoughts will be lessened then thought review is another thing that is how to manage the expectations of the uh, different people around like all those coaches or the peer groups or team players whoever it is then thought stopping generally like uh, the more we are indulged in the negative thoughts immediately you have to stop that by using a technique called stop that is you can have a rubber band near the fist whenever you feel you are wasting time on the negative thoughts just pull the rubber band that pain will make you come to the normal see at least for some time you may not go back to the negative thoughts uh, for some part of the time so you can save that time so stop techniques can be used can be you can create any of your own uh, stop techniques and you should compose yourself you should know how to balance yourself and then come back to the actual that is refocusing should be done then performance routines generally these performance routines like which you can uh, maintain focus even under the pressure so for example like 
if you are familiar when you are doing the visualization or if you are playing in the same kind of an uh, auditorium uh, sorry same kind of an uh, sports lounge or wherever you are playing uh, the familiarity of the environment the kind of the routine generally you practice before entering into the field the structuring of the game uh, how you have to play who is the first player who is the second player or uh, who has to start or what sort of kicks depending upon different games i'm speaking this so who has to give which kick all these things if they are structured these performance routines also make the person very uh, having control over the thing and similarly before the competition the kind of the meals the kind of the diet that they are using so that is that also comes another will have impact on the body and also on the mind so you have to monitor those performance routines to have control over the emotions so pre competition routines like uh, setting the stage for the competition trying to alert yourself increase your mental and physical energy then just one night before the event the once again reviewing your goals trying to be confident and instead of working under the pressure trying to feel like uh, you are trying to enjoy the game and on the competition day you have to come with the excitement not with the worry and you have to whenever if if at all there are any distractions you have to be focused and certain routines have to be done for the dressing equipment check and warm up all these things so that like nothing is going out of the track everything is followed as per the schedule so when we have when we are learning this mental techniques that is like relaxation visualization all these things that will improve your mental skills like having a self control emotional control you will be able to cope with the pressure which leads to the good mental qualities like developing the resilience even like something is going on uh, even if you are missing one round the second round you will uh, bounce back that is uh, having that resiliency skills when you are confident so when you have all these three definitely you have a self regulation on your own so for the time that i have uh, uh, i will give a brief presentation quickly if anyone wants to uh, uh, ask any questions you can ask me yeah thank you ma'am yeah sure sir great yeah. uh that was a wonderful uh, presentation uh impress you madam and you have been talked about a uh, mental toughness and self talk that was a wonderful when we have when we are in a, a sports in a, on a, a competitive sports we need to have a mental toughness to decide what to do in a, in, in at a competitive level thank you that was a very good uh, presentation thank you very much yeah thank you thanks a lot Sunil sir, would you like to give your input? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, madam. First of all, I would like to thank each and every one. Especially thank to Dr. P. Swati, ma'am. She is a wonderful presentation. I heard about this cognitive technique, smartness, mental, mental uh, skill and qualities, everything. Uh, really, I never thought uh, like that uh, to sports uh, related to saying Swati, ma'am. i am very thankful to madam swati madam thank you yeah yeah really we all all are enjoy your uh, speech thank, thank you, you thank you sir yeah. only thing is i am little bit hurry otherwise i would have been more at leisure <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so is a very good uh, message passed uh, each and everyone hello thank you ma'am uh, can you just stay with us for 5 minutes because we have chairperson dr yes. ravinder and dr suresh reddy who would like to give their input if they are present hello. in the uh, sure sure yeah uh, dr ravinder sir and dr suresh yes. reddy sir are you present sir yeah i think uh, they were not there i think sir okay uh, they are not there <laughs> Yes. Uh, madam, so, uh, everybody has been enjoyed your session, madam. What are saying? Thank yeah, you, everybody, everybody is uh, uh, impressed you. And in YouTube, in YouTube also, we had uh, we had nearly hundred people over there, and uh, that was a wonderful, amazing, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for an extremely wonderful, informative, uh, informative session, ma'am. And you have informed us that psychology is, uh, psychological skills are very important for sports and games and athletics. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we uh, we move on to the second session, and the second sh session is yoga. When you talk about no, yoga, no, no, it can no, be no, yes. Sridharit, Okay, sir. Then I go back. Okay. Um. Uh, the next um, resource speaker for the second session is Dr. K. Sridhar Reddy, Assistant Professor, Saint Joseph Degree and PG College, Hyderabad. So he will be speaking on table tennis players' performance in the first. Kelo India University Games, a study. Before that, a brief introduction of uh, Sridhar sir, I would like to do. Dr. K. Sridhar Reddy has 14 years of experience in uh, prof professional teaching, has done his bachelor's in master's in, in uh, master's and uh, physical education and was awarded PhD from JNTUH in 2017. Sir has presented eight international papers and 14 national papers. All India University and first Kelo India University Games was under his guidance. Welcome, sir. Please take over the session. Sridhar Reddy. Sridhar Reddy, sir. Dr. K. Sridhar Reddy, you have been made a uh, first. And I would just like to inform that the chairpersons are Dr. K. Sudhakar and Dr. Rajeshwari. I request the participants to please mute yourself. I request the participants to please mute yourself. Sridharadi is available, ma'am. Sridharadi is available, eh? See, sir, on the screen, sir. Ah. Sino, sir. Hello, Sino, sir. Sino, sir. Dr. Nalala Sino, sir. Sir, so, sir, so I was talking with Sridhar Reddy on a phone. Ah. Yeah, he's yeah, is, is going to connect right now. Is there? Yeah, is there, is there. So, I just want to tell you to come here. Okay, so after the set, uh, next session is ready to all. You, uh, it's uh, yoga, sir. Rajesh, Rajesh. Sir, Rajesh, sir, please uh, contact uh, Srinivas. Srinivas, sir, Srinivas, sir, please contact Srinivas. Yoga. Sridhar, make it fast. Your cell is there, no, Sridhar? Your cell is there, no? You use your uh, mobile for audio and uh, system as for uh, presentation. Sridhar. Yeah, Sridhar is ready, sir.
दो मिनट दिया तो सर रेडी है अपने श्रीनिवास सर युवा का देखो एक दो मिनट आए तो सर आल अवेलेबल ठीक है ना ना ये योगा का भी टेक है लेवेंथ थर्टी से जिसका योगा शिनो सर लेवेंथ थर्टी ले लेंगे है है लेवेंथ थर्टी है मगर अभी सीधा रेडी साहब ने है तो तुमको लोग बोलेंगे क्या बोलो एक एक फाइव मिनट देखेंगे हेलो हाँ ओके ओके श्रीधर रेडी गुड मॉर्निंग आर यू रेडी रेडी ओके यू प्लीज टेक इट ओके नो प्रॉब्लम ऑल द बेस्ट गुड लक डॉक्टर श्रीधर रेड्डी के श्रीधर रेड्डी आर यू ऑडियोबुल आपका आ रहा नहीं आपको बात में वॉइस नहीं आ रहा सर यू म्यूटेड योर सेल्फ सर श्रीधर सर यू म्यूटेड योर सेल्फ सर आप म्यूट कर लिए अपने आप को यू हैव म्यूटेड योर सेल्फ सर अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ श्रीधर सर यस श्रीधर इज देयर यस यस सर प्लीज टेक ओवर द सेशन या यस मैम या गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल गुड मॉर्निंग सर प्रोफेसर सुनील कुमार सर कन्वीनर टुडे नेशनल ई वर्कशॉप ऑन ट्रेनिंग डेवलपमेंट of sports and games orientation program and uh, uh, co-convener dr srinivas nalela mvsr engineering college hyderabad uh, good morning sir and thank you for giving opportunity for uh, giving my uh, uh, topic uh, this one and uh, today i am taking about uh, related to uh, table tennis event uh, sir uh, today i'll share about my experience in table tennis last uh, uh, 14 years onwards i'm uh, i'm in uh, table tennis event i'm taking care of i'm running i won academy and uh, students also participating different different levels and uh, here i'm giving a small brief information about uh, uh, table tennis sir in table tennis sir uh, basically the students if they want to start 5 to 6 years age is a good time 5 to 6 years age there is a good time for learning age and uh, that learning age is for education and sports side also and uh, at that time if the child is starts for uh, training that time basic training basic training he can start in academies different different academies or coaches are and uh, here they can learn small small uh, topics uh, like uh, tapping pushing and uh, backhand push and forehand push and counters backhand counter and forehand counter and ba- basic services tapping uh, topic uh, tapping means ta- little bit uh, backhand and forehand topic tapping and uh, pushes forehand pushes and backhand pushes and back end uh, and uh, counter uh, services and back end counter and forehand counters and basic services uh, these uh, skills can learn the students uh, children uh, at least at, at the age of 5 to 6 years age 5 to 6 years age why because if they are going to academy or coaching centers that is a age for uh, grasping easily and next level is 7 to 8 years If they are going seven to eight years. Uh, training strategies, training standards, exposure and understanding and match structure. After taking basic tips in five to six years, then uh, seven to eight years, they can learn at least exposure. How we can play, how we can understanding, how we can match structure, uh, match point system, how many sets, uh, and uh, tournament uh, standards. 
tournament, uh, how, how the tournament starts, exposure, understanding, match structure, uh, they can learn seven to eight years. And uh, after seven to eight years, next level is 10 years. In 10 years age, they can at least age uh, to be in a top rank players. After taking basic information, basic training, and uh, seven to eight years, basic uh, understanding of the game, match structure, and point system, and uh, duration, uh, point system sets of the how many sets. Like then, after ten years, they can play the game. They can play the game. The, they can play the game in district level, or state level, or national level, and SGF school games. Ten, 10 years level. Uh, and at the time of playing, if they are uh, getting rank, top rank, uh, top five or top ten, they can uh, concentrate on the top five rank, top uh, ten rank, like state level and district level and national level. And uh, next after that, uh, 11 to 6 years. If they are reaching district level and state level and national level, uh, they are representing or participating, if they get medal or not, it's not a matter of. But if they are participating uh, different levels of the uh, tournaments at the age of 10 years, uh, they can learn something, at least uh, how we can play, how we can uh, match situations, how, how they can uh, start the match, how they can understand the opponent players, how they can own game, uh, we can change the uh, opponent uh, players game like. Then uh, 11 to 16, 16 years, 11 to 16 years, amateur players, the middle of the basic middle of middle of the basic uh, that uh, situation advanced expert players that that is the age of 11 to 16 uh, 16 years that time they can learn drives and advanced services and fitness weight training agility exercises and psychologically they can learn at least uh, psychologically the mind mature levels also they can uh, increase that time uh, why because starting they are taking small small uh, basic and they are after that uh, learning uh, exposure of the understanding the game and 10 years age they are playing district level different different levels games and 11 to 60 years they can improve the game like uh, drives advanced services armor services different and advanced services are different in table tennis and the fitness levels because of 11 to 16 years they are playing more games if they are uh, fitness only, they can play the uh, three sets and five sets and seven sets. Otherwise, they cannot play the continuation of seven uh, still five sets, 11 points game. And weight training also very, very important. Uh, agility. Agility is the very important in uh, uh, table tennis. The movements, uh, leg movement, leg movement and uh, uh, eye, eye hand coordination, eye hand uh, leg coordination, the left side and right side table uh, left side movement, right side movement, middle of the position. Within the fraction of the second ball will comes uh, 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 ball, uh, left hand and right hand position on the table. Then they can move. The agility part also very 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 important in that time. And and the same age, how to play the matches in losing positions. They can learn at least that time, ten years, eleven years age. How to play the matches in losing position? Because of uh, one example is uh, suppose opponent player is uh, getting nine points, and uh, this player can uh, four, uh, four points. If they get opponent player two points, then the match is close. Uh, uh, deciding last uh, final. Play. Then how we can balance the? How we can think it? How we can uh, play the? We can get the uh, point. Uh, that match uh, losing position that is a losing position he can think it and uh, advanced knowledge also of the game rules and regulations that is 11 and uh, 12 years advanced knowledge of the game rules and regulations they, he can learn uh, game rules and regulations if he knows games rules uh, regulations only then he can properly he can uh, play the game and uh, taking timeouts and uh, point system and everything and for example, in that service school and uh, uh, towel, uh, toweling break. Because uh, after start the match, suppose if he wants the break immediately, he didn't get the break. So at least after six points only, 
Of six points means that opponent person or same person. Offense person, defense person, you can, after completing six points only, you can get the uh, traveling break. Like service uh, bounds and uh, traveling breaks and other, like he can learn the age group. And the uh, next level is seven to, 17 to 21 years. 17 to 21 years expert level players. That time, he can travel to play for country. 17 to 21 years because already is uh, playing uh, state, district, and uh, division level and uh, national, and is playing uh, 17 to 21 years. He can play the country in open tournaments. Open tournaments. If he play the open tournaments only, he can get the uh, uh, conference levels and getting exposure. If he suppose open tournaments means national level, if he play the open tournament, he can play the different different state players and top players can uh, play in the tournament. Uh, suppose losing and winning, it's not a matter, but he can get that, he can learn the game uh, game and uh, how, what is the, his position, how he can play, how he can uh, uh, improve the game next level. And uh, next, standards also. In, uh, international standards, uh, he can attend the 17 to 21 years. He can attend the camps. Camps are very, very important. National camps or international camps uh, or uh, some uh, state level camps, he can attend it. In camps also, you can learn some so learn uh, so much how to uh, different uh, co players are there. So, uh, from co players in camps, so uh, three morning, three four hours, afternoon three four hours, he can practice and uh, he can and in camps are also very 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 important. And he can focus the uh, strategy. 17 to 21 years strategy also very, very important. Uh, about uh, game, opponent game. Strategy means so you put, uh, one small thing. Suppose uh, when he was playing uh, three sets match, one, one, one is game. And the third set is playing. Third set means how can strategy you can use it. Suppose he's first servicing. Our opponent person is first servicing. What is the strategy he can use? First, he can take the lead, or suppose if he take opponent person take the lead 0 3 or 0 4, how he can plan it? What is that? How, what, uh, what time he can take the break? Uh, the strategy also very, very important. Uh, suppose five all, and he can take the break or continue. He can get the points continuation. He, he can take the break, or upon, if he take the opponent break that time, next. After the break, how he can play the, uh, what uh, opponent person can think it. He can also, uh, at least he can uh, think, uh, like the strategy also important that uh, it. And uh, next, after the 21 years, after 20, 17 to 21, next 21 years, he is uh, playing uh, national and state and international level. 21 years, he is uh, aiming for Olympics, and Asian Games, Commonwealth Games, and uh, uh, international, uh, he can represent the international different, different clubs. European countries are more important, are giving more importance for uh, table tennis. And most of the table tennis players are representing European countries and China and Japan. That, because of that only, he, he, the inter he, he can get the top rank in India and top rank in five, top five position, top 10 position. And he can uh, play that uh, European uh, clubs at least uh, or two months uh, and three months, he can learn so much game and he can participate in uh, uh, other international matches, international level uh, tournaments. He can get the medals and uh, he can maintain the ranking levels also. And uh, that about, uh, okay, for that is basic information about me. And uh, in Kelo India, in Kelo India, the uh, first time, 2000, uh, 1920, 2019-20, Kelo India University Games conducted central government organized at uh, Kit Bhuvaneshwar, Kalinga Institute of uh, Technology from Bhuvaneshwar. They are organized in Kelo India University Games. The uh, 22nd February to 20, uh, 1st March they are organized. In that uh, event, in the uh, tournament, they are conducted 17 events. 17 events they are conducted. Out of 17 events, 
uh, Usmane University represented uh, athletics and long tennis and uh, table tennis also. In table tennis, men and women team participated and uh, long tennis, women team participated and athletics, girls participated and wrestling and uh, some of the boxing events also, some uh, athletes have participated. And about table tennis, uh, our Usman University students represented in Kelo India. Before that, every year, the central government uh, organizing uh, Kelo India Games. Kelo India. Kelo India Games is different. Kelo India University Games are different. Every academic year, they are organizing Kelo India. But 2020 onwards, the central government introduced a new uh, system for in Kelo India University Games. In that Kelo India University Games, uh, only for those who are representing the university level players. So university level means university medalists only. That also top four uh, position teams. That also top four position teams are representing in Kelo India University Games. They are giving eligibility for like that. Then last uh, 2020 academic year, uh, our Usmane University represented in Kelo India University Games at uh, Bhuvaneshwar. And five students are represented. And that five students uh, men team participated in the tournament. They got silver medal. They got silver medal in Kelo India University Games. Uh, I'm uh, very much happy for that. And uh, uh, along uh, Sunil sir is the uh, uh, manager, team manager. I am also uh, a total uh, all uh, contingent team manager, Sunil sir. And I am the table tennis. Uh, taken care of and uh, we went uh, and the students also participated in got medal and uh, finally what I'm saying for one medal for getting one medal one athlete how, how much he can practice what is the time duration he can get how, 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 how many hours he can practice daily what age he can start uh, how he can maintain the uh, game how he can the, maintain the tournament how he can participate in uh, different uh, levels of the tournaments. And my knowledge, I'm seeing, actually I'm not a table tennis player, but uh, my, in, uh, my own interest, I am involved in this game. And uh, well, uh, I told you first, starting, I told you one word. Last 14 years onwards, I'm taking care of table tennis in Usmani University. When I joined in this career 14 years back, in my college, I'm working St. Joseph's. Uh, in my college, uh, no table tennis player, no tables, nothing. But one student is there. The one student, the one student represented Usmane University in South Jersey. Usmane in South Jersey, one student represented. And from that time, I'm, I'm taking care of and developing and infrastructure developing. And in the, uh, the academy also opened, and every after two three years we opened, and we have students also practicing. Uh, and uh, similarly, we uh, after two three years, I conducted, uh, I conducted university intercollege level on tournament intercollege level. But uh, in the tournament, thirty teams are participated. But I am not having team, only one player that time. We are not having team, but we are hosted and we are conducted. And next year, uh, again, we hosted. After two, three years, we got the medal, fourth position. My college got the position, fourth position. What I, why I'm saying, just in terms of the game, how the students can play, how the uh, pra practice, how the students can improve, how the students can uh, place the top level in international level. After two, three years, we conducted. Uh, again, so every year we are conducting two, three tournaments and uh, table tennis we are conducted uh, after three years. Then we got the fourth position. Then fifth year we got the position, second position. And finally, 2000, uh, around 2014 or 15, we got the post first position inter-college level. Inter-college level, first position we got. And I'm very much happy for that. And uh, university... Uh, Professor Sunil Kumar sir, Rajesh sir, Satna and Sarah and Ratul sir, they have supported so much. And because of that, hosting and training the student and participating, we got the first medal inter-college level. Then after, 
every academic year, the students are representing university, but not getting the medals in South Zone. And finally, we, uh, those who are practicing uh, that seven years, eight years, or 10 years intermediate level players, we are approaching the student and the way they are practicing, how they are practicing, what are the level, and uh, we are taking admission in under Usman University. Finally, they, they are taking admission, they are practicing and college supporting, university supporting, and financially, and uh, uh, game-wise and practice-wise and camp side. And uh, finally, we got uh, South Zone and All India Medal Council. Uh, All India Medal Council. Then after that, today, got the All India Gold Medal also. All India Gold Medal also. Then after, the students are selected World University. World University level also, they reached. One uh, world university level also, the students stand selected and they represented. Like that, the students' interest and uh, coaches' interest and colleges' interest and university interest and parents' interest, everything matter. And that is the reason uh, what I'm saying. Whoever interested in uh, individual game or team games, you can take the children to uh, five years, six years, that age, and you can train the student, and you can uh, uh, at least guide the student to attend the uh, regular coaching and regular camps and regular good coaching centers. And, uh, at the, uh, and at the same time, we can support the academic side also. We can support the academic side also. Because if one student can practice morning three hours, afternoon three hours, then only you can get that game and uh, some levels you can improve. Otherwise, morning half an hour, one hour, evening half an hour, one hour training, it's not good. It is good, but you cannot get it more than the uh, 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 game and uh, practicing sessions. That is the reason uh, who are the, whoever the interested in game side, and academic side, our uh, PTs and uh, PDs and professors, we can support it, academic side. And uh, at the same time, we can support the student. We can learn the game that age and uh, we can take that position to uh, division level, uh, school level, division level, district level, state level, and college level, and university level, and uh, India country level, and international, and uh, Olympics level also. That is the intention. My Yes, my in my life, my experience, I'm sharing to you. Uh, I'm very much happy for the uh, coming for the students and participating that levels. And uh, uh, I thank you for uh, Sunil sir uh, for giving me opportunity. And uh, uh, and uh, Srinivas sir also, uh, thank you for giving this opportunity for giving uh, today's workshop. For this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you, uh, Dr. Sridhar Reddy. Very appreciate because he's a real and practical. Oh, oh, sir, <laughs> so I thing, you have to start from grassroots level I... and increase a uh, high peak level. Okay, you sir, very good message. Yes, who are to interested really uh, a parent, uh, particularly who are to uh, produce, really is a very good for message. <laughs> yes, it, because he's a four years to start in the career. Yes, sir. And uh, study and uh, grassroot level, grassroot level, we have to increase so that we have to reach is the high peak level. Example, you know, all these things is uh, Professor uh, Rajesh sir, uh, son, that over early age, now is the uh, uh, growing is gradually, gradually. So, yeah. after two years or three years, they become a really is the uh, for national and international level. Sir, at the same time, academics also, sir, colleges and schools, yeah, 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 yeah. and everyone can support, sir. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. the students can uh, motivate, the mot students can participate, and uh, both sides uh, cannot balance. Yeah, yeah, uh, Sridhar Reddy, really very appreciate and very good manner, and without any hesitate, you have to speak well, because yeah, you are inside your practical, your practical person, really, I have said to you all, these things and uh, really we are so happy each and everyone uh, the deliver the lecturer non-stop and uh, Dr. K. Sridhar Reddy. This itself is just like now you are uh, knowingly not is the Sridhar Reddy is the table tennis uh, Dronachari. 
Yeah, yes, sir. Actually, I'm not the table tennis player. My passion and interest are yeah, 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 yeah. in yeah, academic running. And, and uh, Dr. Sudhakar sir also got very encouraged by part of uh, particularly the table tennis. And uh, you know, in the history of table tennis, Hyderabad is very important for the sport. Uh, yeah, 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 వెరీ గుడ్ అండ్ yeah sure ma'am of this session yeah sridhar reddy it was a wonderful uh, practical oriented and your experience we have shared with up to a grass level from a grass level to a high performance level by up to uh, university level that was a wonderful what you say is practice makes man perfect that's what in a quotation over there you said that every time every time you do a practice you will become a, a skilled person that's what you are mentioning thank you thank you very much thank you reddy thank you thank you sir so can we move on to the third session sir srinivas sir yeah sure sure madam yeah. one yeah all right we begin the next session with yoga when it comes to yoga yoga is a science which originated in india it can be traced 5000 years back to ancient india it was first mentioned in the rigveda and later it was refined and developed by the ancient rishis and we are very proud india should be very proud that yoga which originated in our country is now practiced all over the world and all people of all over the world have realized the significance and importance of yoga so we have with us to tell us the significance and importance of yoga uh, in our present lifestyle we have mr srinivas and uh, and uh, resource for the chairperson for this session is dr ramalakshman sports office tswrei society telangana state and dr sayed farooq kamal associate professor in physical education st francis degree college and pg college hyderabad but before that a short introduction of our resource person mr srinivas has rich experience in yoga consultancy therapy mentoring training and practice he has done his ms in computer science from united states has done msc in yoga secured a place in guinness world record represented several national international and state level yoga competitions was a judge for all india yoga federation <laughs> sir has taken many sessions on life skills management role of yoga in managing stress desktop yoga yoga diet management sir's mission is to share life changing practice of yoga to the world we are pleased to have you with us sir please take over the session uh well, thanks a very good morning one and all uh before i start the session i would like to thank our professor b sunil sir uh dr b mohan sir and professor lb lakshman kant rathod sir and uh, in organizing the training development of sports and games orientation program organized by the badruka college of commerce and arts in the collaboration of department of physical education and all the dignitaries over here one and all i would like to thank you for first time uh, before we start yoga i would like to uh, say what is yoga so we should all be aware of it what is yoga so as ma'am you already described what is yoga yoga is a science of sciences yoga is a science of sciences where it has been from the ancient india from a decades to we have been learning yoga in many different indirect forms of the ways నేను 
I request the participants to please mute yourself. Kindly mute yourself, participants. राजेश आप स्टार्ट होता थोड़ा टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम आए ओके सर ओके सर अभी आता दो मिनट में प्लेटफॉर्म्स Like today, we are going to discuss about the importance of yoga in present life. So, how we have changed ourselves in our present life, we can see over here. Because of this pandemic, we can see how the children are being, how the children are being addicted to the mobiles. I mean, directly or indirectly, we can say. Like we don't have any other option rather than that the child has to attend the online classes and all. Like if it may be an uh, infant, it may be a children. we can see the difference it may be a parents and parents have no other option to give the gadgets and how they it is impacting our health as screen sharing you can see the kids have been wearing the glasses on the very less age like where the eye glasses in our uh, time if you have seen we used to get the glasses at the age of like there's no restriction to getting the glasses at the age of sight development and all but you can see at very young age they are suffering with the eye problem and all so this is because of the screen i mean monitoring the screen for the longer time and how do we overcome that so in yoga if you can talk the word there is some kriya called as trataka kriya trataka kriya is useful to help your vision much more like we can assure that those who have the sight also can get use with the help of trataka kriya and this is all about the child and if we come to the at i mean teenagers and teenagers you can see how they are addicted like an, it it is more dangerous than that like i can say like all the social medias like whatsapp twitter facebook maybe instagram snapchat whatever it is it's like drug you can see more than anything the teenagers are addicted to the social media and what if one day the net doesn't come how how much we are completely addicted to the social media now whatever it is and what is the so i mean what is the a uh, main reason to get it addicted because in old i mean like in the past which we have seen we have a good playground we have a good sports i mean we have the everything in it now these days everybody is being i mean bounded with some boundaries of and all and because of pandemic also the kids were being bounded with the boundaries like you are not supposed to get out so this is the worst scenario right of now it is going on with kids i mean the teenagers and you can see one more thing is the game they are completely involved into the screen ma'am can i request everybody to mute from your end please participants please mute yourself let's show the screen please please mute yourself get in this chandra hey mat ko bande pyaar hey Please continue, sir. You muted yourself, sir. 
Sir, you are muted. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm sorry about it. Yeah. Yeah. So how the teenagers have been completely addicted to the social media? I mean, social media in the sense like all the WhatsApp, it may be a Facebook, it may be a Twitter, a Snap, a Twitter. They may, at point of the time, they may survive without food, but they can't sustain without the social media. That's how they are completely addicted in it. And if you can see uh, the teenagers, again, apart from that, the games. the completely involved in that and the losing their skill set apart from that like they are losing their inner hidden talents among that what they are capable of so they are becoming lazy okay because completely sitting in one place of course like it makes you a very lazy now it is all about the teenager now if you can see adulthood now the teenage age has been completely passed and when you get into the adult when you have been done with your studies and the job stress now how the stress can be overcome through yoga there are so many pranayamas which can throw you out from the stress uh, before i talk about the stress i would like to mention a word there are i mean the common word which we all hear that is called a stress management i wonder like why do you have to manage when you can when you are saying a management that means you are managing when you don't manage it doesn't become a stress management so the things about, uh, which are going to be fall at that place will obviously fall no matter what so it is all about relaxing yourself and doing like stretch and time saves nine so always okay prevention is better than a cure we always say. so it is all about thinking relax you thinking will always make you out from the stress yeah, i understand it is very easy to say but at times it is very difficult to practice but it is not that difficult to practice anything like a practice makes a man perfect so how do you overcome with the stress all the pranayama meditation relaxation asanas that will definitely help you to come out from the stress now it is all about the job stress and you can see uh, how much stress and how much what all the various concept will be you are facing in the job is like you can see anxiety at times harassment work overload i mean business bullying what there are so many debit deadlines expectations late night work stress tax there so many things going on so how do you overcome at that See, end of the day, it is one who you have to face everything. So, how do you overcome all this? This is only, I mean, like I don't say like the practice with only one day will help you out. So, definitely, we need a good practice. That is because of the med. I mean, when you get a good practice of meditation, definitely meditation means like focusing. It improves your focus, which improves your concentration, which develops your capability skills of relaxing. that can be done with the help of the meditation and also not only that i mean like you can see when you sleep also you think about the see and at last we will be becoming in such a way like we have to keep a day for like world sleep day and then we have to sleep that is where we lack into so this is how we end up with the sleep because in the sleep also we dream about getting up tomorrow and what is the exactly task we have to do it and where exactly we have to go and what i mean chat we have to do it and what work we have to do in the sleep in the dream so thinking about the every hour every minute there is no peace end of the day health is wealth but what we are making ourselves is wealth is health so how do you deal up all this things that is with the help of yoga there is a called again the sleep is called as yoga nidra yoga nidra where you can be making yourself internally externally completely relaxed it is called as yoga nidra and adults this is the problem now if you come to the next of the uh, old age how do you can see the old age also uh, let me share this old age then in the olden age we have everything with us but there is no health within us we earn a lot but uh, tell me one thing so we are completely a wealthier person at the age of 40 only imagine like take not don't take a maximum i mean like a minimum number of 40 at the age of 40 we are very healthy person but the unfortunate thing over here is we are diabetic now tell me can we eat a small single i mean one rupee a candy can we eat it when you are diabetic we can't even go and eat a single candy which we like it because we are diabetes and that is because health issues and all comes out because we have so many hospitals towards us like super specialty multi specialty multi multi specialty but what is the use of it they don't even give a guarantee of your health they only predict that you don't get this use this medicine how long you have supposed to use that medicine are you sure let's like, see for example here if may somebody and the meeting if somebody has a diabetes because these are all the common problems which are going within us 
like thyroid, diabetic, knee pains, back pains, spinal cord disorder, this all thing. So if you go to a doctor, can any doctor tell me you use this medicine for three months, you'll never get this diabetic again? No, not at all. But what is the solution? But we still believe the same doctor and we go and we continuously blindly believe the doctor and we keep going and using the medicine. At the end, again, when the, the diabetic level raises up, we still go to the doctor and ask, doctor, my levels are gone up. And he said, okay, the dosage is 100 mg for you. Let me put it on 500 mg and use it. But whereas in yoga, if the root cause of diabetes will be found out, the root cause, like why you got the diabetes, like how you got the diabetes, how that means, like do you have a parental background or like what is the food style, what is the lifestyle you are leading, what all the exactly root cause of it, we deal with it. And here in the yoga, we don't use any medicine, equipment and machinery. We directly try to deal with it, uh, with using your body parts, no machinery, no equipment, no medicine, nothing. Only through using our body part of the ancient art that is called as Yoga Shastra, using the asana, pranayama and meditation, we try to cure all the problems of it. And that is a word, right? Uh, medical history. Now, if you can see in this, this picture says, I mean, there's a saying like always a picture says more than the words. Now, you can see when we need to 50 years, very difficultly, then we can see looking down to ourselves, oh my God, I have to live more 60 this is the tragedy of our life it has become into. When we leave for 50 years, we seriously making ourselves, oh, should I can leave for the 60? 60 is so long for me. When you leave to 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 50 is fine. After there, obviously, we are doing a good life. I mean, good life in the sense ups and downs are there. But 60, you can see, it is completely somewhere, like nowhere related to us. We are looking down completely 60 years old. This is how I have to live in 60, how struggles I have to face in 60 years. So if you can question yourself why this is happening because of the lifestyle, because of the diet and all. Now, if you can see our fathers, forefathers and all, how do they survive with all the proper food? Now, they have taken the food as medicine, but we are taking the medicine as food. If you can question yourself, we are taking, there is a very uh, serious thing has to be noted. Our forefathers used to take the food as medicine and they work hard. And But we... We are taking the medicine as a food. Okay, if the doctor writes and gives that, we will take it happily. And we'll never bother about what side effects we are getting and what impact we are getting on the food, what all the major drawbacks we'll get it. And after using this antibiotics and all, we don't worry because we want an instant and constant results for us. We just go with the pills, whatever the doctor will. Have we ever wondered like, whatever the doctor has given us the things? Have we ever seen what does the di I mean, like a... Uh, uh, Side effects of the medicine which we get it. Side effects. We have never noticed that side effect. We always, we always see there are a few members who have been listening to this also. They may feel themselves because we always take the pills. No matter what, doctor has written us and we will take it. So doctor has given me, I will take it. But what does this thing is happening? Because we are using the natural food. We are we are going against the nature. See how many of you head to the sun? Tell me how many of you head to the sun every day in the morning a very hard because we want to facially cream our city. maybe we are all here all the sports men and women are there so we may not but in general terms many of you are uh, we use the cream what cream uh spf if, sir if you're not aware the cosmetic industry is making this creams i'll tell you fair and lovely so if you are using a fair and lovely why not all the south africans will become fair this is the marketing strategies of that. You be natural. Don't look about this external beauty. Look about the internal beauty, what you are doing for yourself. Whereas the internal beauty is lacking with us. It is inside like your age is just a number. Here, why specifically I mentioned the 60 to 70. If you will eat 60, the 70, 80 and so on is very easy for you. It's this generation. But leading after 50 years without any problem, that leads your health properly. The next this is the picture which says how the yoga has derived into it. As before the yoga session started, the ma'am has excellently uh, said like what the yoga is, like how the yoga is, the ancient art. Like it has been from the Vedas and Upanishad science. In the Mahabharata, there is a sixth chapter which is completely defined about the yoga. Then the yoga you can see, it is called as Ashtanga Yoga. Okay. 
let me before uh, getting to the ashtanga yogam let me uh, clear one small misperception of yoga everybody asks see however i meet somebody if they ask me a question sir what kind of yoga you teach i wonder like what kind of yoga i mean like i do i cross question them though i was doing it from the 20 plus years of yoga i still wonder myself what kind what do you mean by question they yes, sir you teach power yoga i think like when the power is off should i turn on the power and that is called power yoga a little sarcastically all the time then i'll ask me a question like no no sir like the power yoga somebody said no you teach silpa shetty yoga i wonder like silpa shetty came into the yoga and started doing it become silpa shetty and i wonder like if somebody comes and even the ramdev baba you take an example or somebody take an example or whoever it is they do also have the gurus because without there is a saying without guru there is no excellency of your i mean like uh, uh vidya whatever you learn so this is in the yoga shastra it is said very clearly your guru parampara is very much needed over here so everybody has there is only one yoga that is ashtanga yoga which is traditional yoga you can see here this ashtanga yoga is only one yoga which existence and this is the only yoga to make you understand little because i feel like everybody is getting little bored because yoga is such a topic where you completely have to involve then only you'll get it so let us make you some little mouth watering for you all you all know the breakfast i mean of course there is nobody such nobody knows the breakfast right so we all know in that you all aware of the batter dosha you all aware of it of course yes right so uh, can anybody i mean like a message or like just uh, say me i'm muting yourself if you can say me how many kinds of doshas are there like for example whatever you need that is out of topic why i want to say it was like the misperceptions misperceptions of yoga has to come out so what do you think like there might be see we ate masala ah sir it is my favorite we ate because without masala crispy onion and all we cannot so masala onion and that this all that there but why i am telling is if it is onion dosha also the batter is all same if it is masala also the batter is all same if it is paneer also the batter is all same but the platform of the dosha is everywhere is all same but why about this so the same thing people came into existence and they named as power yoga light yoga water yoga acho yoga what is this all it came into existence yoga was there before ancient time and it is there at that time it is there now and it will be there after because the science of sciences i can probably see and it's an indian art so yoga is only one that is ashtanga yoga that is only the traditional yoga we don't have any platforms for yoga for example somebody says like this is our branch we don't have any branches for it. this also the same thing yoga doesn't have any other platforms it is only one traditional yoga that is ashtanga yoga now you can see ashtanga means eight ashta for yama this is first yama niyama asana pranayama pratyaharana dharana dhyana samadhi yama is what what is yama a social ethics and a personal ethics this is all called moral discipline social ethics and personal ethics are nothing but a moral discipline so you can see ahimsa satya asteya brahmacharya aparigraha what is as ahimsa the like kindness and all like yama is again subdivided into five parts satya ahimsa satya asteya brahmacharya aparigraha and these are all very common social ethics which we have to follow but tell me how many of we are following it kindness how kind we are truthfulness how truthful we are and non stealing of course at the time when somebody doesn't do we steal like modernization that is okay brahmacharya is modernization so how many of you following modernization is nothing but you should not marry that is not being married celibacy it is called as modernization in yoga aparigraha okay aparigraha means like general ethics so what exactly how, how many of them are following this means you can come to niyamas niyama is saucha santosha tapas swadhyaya ishwari pranudana saucha is purity purity doesn't mean you have to wear all the neat clothes and hair cut and all purity it is what you talk should be pure what you talk should be pure then all the actions will become purity so how many of us will talk pure then it is contentment how many of our contentment oriented tell me how many of you we are contentment towards our work calls at times tapas okay tapas and a swadhyaya and an ishwar prana if you extend this is going to be these are all the social and moral ethics now coming to asanas 
now i need at least somebody because see i i always want the class i mean like the session has to be interactive so can anybody can anybody over here tell me how many asanas are there approximately what is your guess in yoga shastra can anybody say me like how many anybody in the vina how many asanas what do you think like roughly i something uh i repeat if i am not audible can anybody answer me i'm curious to listen because we are all like you are all sports teachers and sports uh, professors sports hodies and all so how many asanas what do you think in the yoga the how asanas are there okay let me only uh, uh, i think it is 84 sir 84 to 85 excellent ma'am appreciate wonderful the like, matri shakti has already answered it so uh, always yeah. like ladies first so ma'am you deserve <laughs> it and you said it i appreciate the matri shakti has taken like a step forward and she answered it anybody else i would like to have one more answer before i go for one one answer any rough guess because we are already when we started in the session any rough guess please anybody okay i don't waste much of your time let me tell you there are 84 very good can you all at least make a lip movement of yours at least whatever i say because if somebody asks you it should be an i mean like i you end of the session there should be a 1% of the knowledge extent where i can give you i should feel that can you all repeat after me if your mouth leading also done it as like i can hear 84 oh sorry 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 not only can you all repeat it only again please because it should be an interaction session i wish right uh, okay before i say i would like to before i reveal the answer little suspense let me tell you one thing okay you all aware of it how many muscles are there in the human body there are 600 muscles in the human body how many nerves are there in the human body there are 7 trillion nerves in the human body so this many 600 nerves where is the first nerve smell nose because if something is cooking in the next house how do we smell if mama is cooking something how do we smell if wife is cooking and husband how do we smell a very fast so the second thing is our smile even if a 10 seconds of your smile make a photo a photograph beautiful for a lifetime why can't you keep smiling and make your life a very beautiful can't we so a little smile because yoga is a thing where we have to relax ourselves first of all. when we can relax ourselves then only we can go further so what was the question is like with a smile everybody can say after me only a smile please only i i want everybody to say five times only yeah again only please only everyone it's a request kind request only now listen the answer 84 lakhs 84 lakhs of asanas only 84 lakhs of asanas see this is the greatness of yoga everything is yogam you are sitting in sukhasana you are sleeping in shavasana you are standing in tulasana you cross fold your legs ardha padmasana you are cross fold your legs and standing it is vrukshasana everything is asana everything is an asana the definition of asana is tirastuka asanam everything you make it comfortable and sitting or standing posture is called as tirastuka asanam what is the definition of asana but according to the patanjali maharshi is asana is where you step stira stuka asana stira mean stability suka uh, may request other participants can you please mute from your end a uh, little voice disturbance is going on i request other participants please mute yourself thank you stira means stability stuka is comfortness and asana at times when we i mean we generally when we you are all sports background people i mean when we lose our regular practice and when we try to start back again how do we feel ourselves a little one day tired but how do you keep yourself a little tired and easy lazy and all like but how do you but in the yoga shastra it is said like whenever you doing samasana you have to stira means stable and sukha is comfortness when you are doing asana can you be comfortable yes we will be comfortable when you do under the guidance of the proper guru or the master who is trained and asana is the physical posture of the broad physical posture of the god next coming to the there are 80 so i hope i have given 1% of knowledge now so how many asanas are there no don't say 84 lakhs only 84 lakhs so that 
it makes your smile at the same time think i can also generally say 84 lakhs but what is the differentiation now only when you think the word then you will remember 84 lakhs of our sirf 84 lakhs kevalam 80 lakhs of asanas now coming to the point of pranayama so what is pranayama so before i step into pranayama asanas are again three types uh, cultural meditative and traditional asanas that there are three category of asanas cultural meditative and relaxative asana now pranayama the fourth one you can say pranayama what is pranayama pranayama means a breathing exercise we all know sir ramdev baba we see they do this they do that that is sir, that is pranayama we all say but are we not breathing in and out now you are all breathing in yes or no uh, i want at least the thumbs should be up for you all so that i can understand that the interaction is going on so is are we all breathing in and out now yes so what is the difference between the normal breathing and the pranayama breathing what is the difference between the normal breathing and the pranayama breathing let me tell you so in pranayama we will be aware of our breath we will be conscious of our breath we will be uh, focused on our breath focusedly conscious awareness breath is called as pranayama but in general in normal will be not aware for example whenever you are sleep do you aware of your breath how it is going in and out do we aware of your breath the whenever the breathing is going on or out yes or no no we are not aware of it generally it goes in and comes out right but whereas in pranayama how to breathe in from which nostril you have to breathe in from which nostril you have to breathe out how to breathe in through mouth or through nose and through now ask us to close and how to breathe in breathe out and which nostril this is all again the pranayama it depends upon the climatical condition in the pranayama we can make our body heat and we can make our body cool also the, the help of pranayama we can make our body heat and we can make our body cool how we will learn i will tell you one small example of it but tell me one thing we not witness that but we have noticed it right in the himalayas still there are rushi i mean himalayas and mountain there are still rushi saints and munis who are getting meditated over there we know but because we have seen in the movies but do you think really think they are fully covered like us with the shirt pant and all like if the lady the sanyasis are there they covered like us no they are barely covered the body and with all the ash surrounded them and there are minus centigrades over there minus centigrade how do they sustain themselves how do they sustain themselves with the help of pranayama pranayama can heat your body pranayama can cool your body because of the help of pranayama only they can cool and heat let me tell you one example okay before we move forward let me tell you one example we all know the uh, dog i mean we all know the scottish kennel uh, called as dog can anybody tell me the uh, i mean like uh, we all aware of uh, do you all aware of the uh, life span of the dog it is hardly 12 to 15 years maximum life span of the dog 12 to 15 years so 12 to 15 years life span of the dog now if you can take an example of the elephant elephant lives to 150 to 200 years at the same time tortoise lives to 450 to 500 years so what is the differentiation you can say sir i mean like uh, this dog is very small elephant is big so that is the reason the life span is goes up then tortoise is very small compared to elephant the only difference between these three you have to notice is the breathing the breathing okay the breathing is the difference so how do you differentiate the breathing here is dog breathes in and breathes out to the mouth a very fast breathing and breathe out to your mouth and that is the reason the whenever you fastly breathe in and breathe out the life span is coming down the life span is coming down now coming to here elephant the elephant lives for 150 because can you all check yourself now everybody can you please experiment yourself because these are a very important prana yama prana means life yama is an expansion expanding the lifetime pranayama expands your lifetime but how we will learn now so can you all see just breathe in when i say one two three start you all can breathe in and how many seconds you can breathe in you can question yourself one two three can you all breathe in once that's it five counts hardly you are done right but elephant breathes in for one minute and breathes out for two minutes imagine one minute is so long for us 
but whereas tortoise can live under the water on the earth the difference of the breathing how you control your breath that much your life span will become more that much your life span will become more so how does our life span become more with the help of the pranayama i will i will say this so this is all about that now can i ask you as one small practical example to do yourself everyone can you all keep your hand like this in front of the nose please because this will say, okay before you keep your hand i'm sorry you all have two hands yes right just at least a smile a smile can make me understand because i said you 6 600 muscles 7000 trillion nerves will be getting activated if you are smile okay as i told you i mean 5 to 10 seconds of your smile can make a photograph beautiful why not a day so you have two hands everyone is it working properly of course we are working okay two ears of course ears are working then only we can get two eyes yes which is working two knees what all the things which you have to it is working right so can you check yourself keeping your hand like this can everybody keep your hand like this now breathe out very no there should be no force there should be no stress there should be no strain a very slowly breathe out and check yourself both the nostrils are working at the same ratio or not one will work faster one will work slow you can question yourself now yes amma sir we are so wonder like we are not aware of it all these days yes my dear participants of course yes isn't it one is working faster and one is working slow in the yoga shastra it is said that if the right nostril works it is called as surya nadi and the left nostril is called chandra nadi what surya means what a sun and the chandra is a moon right is always creates a heat left is always creates a cold but do can you all tell me one thing if our body uh, needs uh, do our body needs only heat do our body needs only cold no so that is the reason there are pranayama which is called anuloma viloma pranayama nadi shodhana nadi is the nadi shodhana pranayama which is alternate nostril breathing where you practice the pranayama of nadi shodhana or anuloma viloma pranayama then balancing of your hormone imbalances and heat and cold body and mind this all thing will happen in anuloma viloma pranayama but again i would like to tell you it is not to practice in one day it has to be practiced every day when you practice it every day at least 5 minutes or 10 minutes if you cannot dedicate 5 to 10 minutes for ourselves then what is the use of living our life for our health now this is all about the pranayama if you can now those who all checked if your right nostril is working properly you can check later those are the left nostril work not now immediately after 10 15 minutes it always keep changing it won't be constant it depends upon your food it depends upon the way you sit it depends on the climate it depends upon the side you sleep it varies from the time to the time it keep changing it will not be constant it will be constant only to the yoga professionals who practice the pranayama every day and those who do the kriyas kriyas is inserting the capillary tube and taking from the one nostril to the mouth and water from the one nostril to the other nostril that is an in depth practice of yoga which is all kriya cleansing technique now after pranayama we are coming to pratyaharana pratyaharana means knowing about ourselves pratyaharana means knowing the point where what we are how we are what we eat what we do what everything knowing about ourselves it's called pratyaharana mean from the time we get up to the again time that we go to the bed it's called pratyaharana now dharana what is dharana concentration so we all say we have concentration let me tell you how is our concentration works when we don't like something when we like something for example we all eat dinner at our home might be in office lunch might be breakfast at home but dinner time we assemble at our home so for example we are sitting with our kids and we are having our dinner but our kid was i mean sitting with us and he is listening to the movie or song which is going on and when some rhyme i mean rhythm is coming when some line of the movie or the song is coming he immediately tells the second line that is focused concentration and we also when something see you may be all taking your i mean skills like someone is basketball one is football one is coco and all but by seeing the participant where he is good you will say that is your focus to concentration but where is our concentration first to develop to develop the focus concentration not only on the like things to all the things we need dharana dharana comes with the regular practice of pratyaharana pratyaharana will come with the regular practice of pranayama one less change to the other one 
So dharana is about again you have consciousness, subconsciousness, super consciousness, superior consciousness. This is all about it. and consciousness and super consciousness. Consciousness like when we sleep, also our conscious mind, I mean, like our breathing will work, and our mind will be still awake. Like when we get a dream, we will be recollecting the dream in the day. So you have slept. How do you know that it is working? So our mind will be still awake. It is working. So that is called subconsciousness. Super conscious is when you practice all the pranayama levels perfectly and pratyana. Then it is called super. Superior conscious is when we say somebody like he already knows and how calm he is. How can he say that so beautifully? And how sweet he is. He can predict the things before it happens. That is because of the, all the focus he has on his work. He has on his dedication. Okay. Now coming to dhyana. So you can question, so what is the difference between dhyana and dharana? There is a light, slight difference between dharana and dhyana. What is dhyana? Dhyana is a meditation. Meditation means close your eyes and keep your hands like this and relax. That becomes a meditation. Yeah, very good. But what you do, you close your eyes, so many bundle of thoughts will come in your mind. A bundle, our, our mind is a bundle of thoughts. So how do you overcome the thoughts? Making your mind empty as a zero. Can you? Even before you're going to sleep, you think something. When you're driving, you're thinking something. When you're working, you're thinking something. How? How do you come? There are so many techniques of dhyana. I mean, meditation, japa dhyana. I mean, uh, mantra dhyana. There are so many ways to get into the level and the see, um, and then the chain process of dhyana. That will become, I mean, that is, comes only with the regular practice, anything. Now, coming to samadhi. Samadhi means we all think like the graveyard when we go, when we die, that is all samadhi. Yes? But in yoga, if some uh, samadhi means somebody praises you, oh, sir, Awesome, sir. You are, you are, because of you only this is going on, good, sir. Now, how do you feel? You feel very proud of it. But if somebody says a back, I mean, like something bad about you, am I? Seriously? You are telling to me how mean you are to me. We feel it is disgraded, right? So, can we balance the both things like Samadhi? If somebody says you odd and somebody says you good, can we balance both? No, we cannot balance because this is our human nature. But Samadhi teaches us to balance both. If somebody praise you, neither you don't care. If somebody scolds you, you don't care. Because you are here to do what you are to the Samadhi process. Because Yama Niyama Asana Pranayama Pratyaharana Dharana Jnana, then only the Samadhi comes with you. Then if you practice all the seven steps, you will reach the seven steps. That is Samadhi syllabus. Okay, that will come with the regular practice. Okay, pure bliss means there is no... Uh, where is there is no chitta so that is called samadhi somebody I and mean, if you are rich or poor doesn't matter and whatever it is you don't even care because you are there and this is and you will feel that you are related to the atma to the paramatma soul to the pre soul soul to the divine soul that is the samadhi this is all about the ashtanga yoga now moving to the asanas part now we have the, our today's topic is like present generation i mean the present lifestyle now tell me present lifestyle, though we are the physical directors and professors and deans and all HODs, now at times there will be a long day where we're going to sit. You all see what is what causes the lower back pain? At times heavy lifting, we don't even lift the weights because we are into the position. Now we are PT teachers, we are physical directors, we are professors. Now why do we have to? We tell the student, that's okay. But unfortunately we lift the weight, a mom, my back started paining. But or you can see, Roma is like completely, it's somebody poking your spine. Non-mechanical disease possesses because the kidneys and all, like, it is one related to the other, your spine. Poor sitting positions. Yeah, of course, I understand. As soon as you go into the office or your uh, day starts, you'll be very active. Like, I'll keep my spine straight, my sitting position, my everything. If you are tired of the day, again, we lose ourselves and then sit in. Proper sitting position also matters over here. Frequently bending forward, uh, one of the biggest addiction when we see in the child also today's online class. So how our frequent bending also impacts on our body because the nerve, I mean neck and uh, this generative condition. You all know like uh, when you suffer with the spinal disorder problems, it is called as L when you diagnose, go to the doctor, they call it as L4, L5, lumbar bone. That is the way you have to strengthenize your spine. And there's a beautiful saying in yoga, I would like to tell you, if your spine is fine, everything is fine. And I would like to add on one word over here. See, when we don't have one kidney, 
still we can survive of course heart is the major resource which we can't survive without that but we don't have eyes we survive when we don't have a hand we survive but if spine you can say we can survive but there is no use in the meaning of life you have to be completely bed reader because it may be a urination it may be explanation it may be a food it may be hunger but everything has to be done on the bed because there is no life it is like that alive yeah so i repeat the same beautiful saying again if your spine is fine everything is going to be fine so for that to make your spine what we have to do is every day if you can practice this bhujangasana for 2 to 5 minutes just hardly improve yourself for 2 to 5 minutes bhujangasana is a cobra pose okay you can see the uh, benefits of bhujangasana is strengthens the spine what else you need when you strengthens your spine tones the buttocks because it makes you because you can see the major parts of the human you can see the major part of the human it the hip joint and the stomach will be grown bigger for men it is stomach and the neck so it again tunes your buttocks okay stimulates your abdominal organs of course you can see your abdominal organs will be stretched and you can enlarge your chest when you enlarge your chest the lungs capacity increases what happens when your lungs capacity increases the breathing capabilities will be developed in this pandemic when you are all aware of it like how the corona has made everybody into like breathing disorders happen when you are a good practitioner of the pranayama and asanas your lungs capacity see for example our lungs is like a balloon when you bend like this it compresses your body when you expand see the shoulders are been moving back you can see in the posture the shoulders are been enlarged the chest is enlarged the lungs capacity has developed over here so it is like a balloon you are enlarging it so the breathing capabilities will be increased by it now you can see uh, helps relieve stress and fatigue of course when you do all the uh, asana the blood circulation goes through all the parts of your body top from your head to the bottom of your fingers of your leg then of course it relaxes the stress you will feel free and relaxed therapeutic for asthma patients i wonder like when like winter and when uh, rainy season comes there are many who suffer with the asthma sinusitis and all so how do you overcome the lungs capacity increase because you are expanding you somebody may be wonder one asana does all these things of course when you go to a doctor when you have a headache cold and all if you want to do you ask the same question no right definitely no we just take it happily we take it this also same thing one part is related to the other part of the body so one asana helps you all the parts of your body that is the beauty of the ancient science that is nothing but the yoga shastra benefits that male and female reproductive system helps regulate menstrual cycle for the women and ah uh, this is the biggest problem which many youth are going on with the women and the uh, may because the uh, i can see matrusakti the women the girl i mean from infant it she turns into the girl from girl she turns into the lady from lady to woman woman to the grand okay grand i mean like uh, completely old age so you can see many changes will come man. because it she will become the mature age then then mother then lactation then feeding this all will be there but you can see many are suffering with the irregular cycles also how do you overcome it with the practice of surya namaskars you can overcome all the menstrual cycle problems also because that is the main reason for women to become a mother because if you have the problem in the menstrual cycle like pcod because if you have a pcod problem then there is no chances for you to get into the i mean like become a mother this is the biggest thing and after this if you can see neck sir what to tell sir today i have been a long day in my office my neck started paining you never witness yourself that i am watching my mobile facing it down you will never witness that you will never agree that only thing you agree sir uh, apart from the mobile i don't only blame the mobile sir today this many bunch of files i'm doing correction 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 and i'm checking checking my neck has started paining so anything exceeding your limit definitely goes down so is there any way okay before i go to the neck i would like to ask you some small question but only i expect the something from you all is a little smile my dear participant a little smile okay so can anybody tell me as soon as you get up what you do now please don't tell me sir i catch my mobile that is the first thing everybody does a little smile at least now good i know as soon as we get up from i will open our eyes uh, where is my mobile we catch because of present lifestyle is going on that so what we do after catching the mobile take out that point now we brush sir 
very good how what you do in the brushing you do you bend forward or do you bend back we obviously bend forward to brush to spit right then after wash your face bend forward take water from the bucket bend forward eat the breakfast bend forward wear your pant and dress bend forward or sweep uh, sweep your house or drive bike or car bend forward. where is the back bending in your life from the day you get up to the go to the bed can anybody tell me where is the back bending in your lifetime please don't tell me sir when you on i go a little back not the 1.01% that is just you on because of the laziness when you get up from the bed so where is the back bending going on in your life there is no back bending that is the reason when your spine is there you can see here i show you the picture very clearly that is the reason you catch your spine become curved over here this arthritis comes this because of your improper position we always use for bending forward 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 in olden days now we don't find anybody like 80s and 90s to see them if you have seen in your generation if somebody is 80 they catch the stick because of bending forward and supporting themselves so if you can do any back bending asanas in a day in one any back bending asana for 2 minutes then your spine will be completely perfect i'm guarantee for you any back bending asana you take any asana at the back bending then your spine will, because of today's generation you don't get a proper food at as of a father and forefather gets it this is the best asana for the spine the cobra the bhujanga asana will help your spine completely straight okay now coming to the neck what is the best asana for the neck you can see all the easy pose sukshma vyayama sukshma means minor but the impact will be major all the small small asanas and rotations of your neck can make your neck completely stand those who can see the asar my doctor advised me to catch the collar also i'm using collar what to do sir i am only 30 but still i'm using collar sir this has problem attack to me there is nothing to feel shy use the collar because doctor advised you there is nothing harm it is going to be so these are all the small asanas and exercises which help you to strengthenize your neck which again doesn't lead to the spondylitis you know spondylitis they have to catch the neck and they can't even see like a robots if somebody calls to my right side i have to turn my head uh, you called me i am like a robot uh, you called me this is how it is we have to do it this is because of the improper structure and stretching i mean over stretching your neck now this is the biggest thing we all face now sir what to do sir whatever i eat i deposit over here sir of course what is where you all deposit our bank is our stomach sir whatever sir these days i am not eating properly but still i am become a big fat sir now before you tell that you are not eating properly but tell me how you are eating what is the regular time you are maintaining for your yourself today if you eat at 2 or 2 o'clock lunch tomorrow you are eating at 5 o'clock lunch will the 5 o'clock becomes a lunch for you yes this is the lifestyle we are becoming it is 5 o'clock becomes a lunch for you it is a snacks time but we eat the lunch at that do we eat in a limited oh no no it is so yummy let me eat one more plate because i don't know again we'll get a chance to eat or not and you know this obesity where does it leads to a type 2 diabetic okay hyperkidemia obstructive sleep apnea and heart disease hypertension okay there are so many problems other diseases so on we get it and at time we don't even realize what we have oh my god i have put on this so much we don't realize and for our tongue we only want crispy yummy fried deep fried oily juicy in hindi there is a very good proverb i can say jo zuban ko maza deta wo saza bhi deta I repeat again, जो जबान को मजा देता है वो सजा देता है नाल का कह रहे तो रुचि तबुल तुम दो आदि मेक पनिशमेंट है ओपन गुड पेट कौन वन थिंग आई वुड लाइक टू से यू ओवर हियर इज वॉट एवर योर टंग लाइक अवर टंग वॉट डज इट लाइक स्वीट आई वॉन्ट स्वीट वेर द घी इज मोर बट यू ईट आई डोंट डिनाई नीटिंग सी आई टेल यू वन एग्जाम्पल ऑल द मैन हु डजन कुक और कुक और दुमेन हु कुक ओवर हियर if in the curry if you had an extra spice what do you do you add a salt to balance that or a lime to balance that but what we do in our daily life if we eat a junk food or if we go to the party i eat full it's okay tomorrow also i have a party i will eat. but can you at least given a thought like today i had a party 
party hard party so that i will balance myself today to skip my food or to drink some liquids or water or buttermilk or coconut water who will drink all that mad fellows will take all that we will take another party again and next tomorrow we will see this is how we become so i will tell you only one thing eat because we are all like lovers of the food when it comes to one point of a time everybody has some favorite food for ourselves it may be a vegetarian non vegetarian irrespective of that whatever you eat but only thing i would like to say compensate that with the alternative food where you can balance your like like salt and pepper like salt and uh, spice when it is more and higher how do you balance the same thing or else you have to suffer with all the etc etc problems in your life and one more thing uh, what time we all have to reach the office imagine a rough structure of nine in olden days you used to notice because we are discussing about the present generation so i'm giving an example of the olden days how do they used to take a bath used to go to the river take a bath for half an hour minimum those who have the well still if you have a background of village you go when you go to the wells and you take a bath but in this generation if you have to go to the bath uh, if you are the wife can you please on a geyser for me as soon as you brush less than the breast time you finish the bath we wonder like how you done your bath yeah you know what i am a superman superwoman i can finish everything in not even a sprinkle of water comes on this and will come out where is the heat going out from your body my dear friends where is the heat in olden days they used to go to the river and take bath where the all the body heat used to go out because drinking water mud still in the ayurveda used as a mud bath the drinking water mud not other mud i am i'm telling you drinking water mud used as a mud bath for us in the yoga shastra in the naturopathy okay because that cools your all the body it cools all the body because according to the, our indian climatical conditions all the human anatomical body is heated bodies you can check your temperature always it is 97 98 a uh, bp is don't ask sir if i go to the office automatically i'll get bp why do you get bp dear everything has a two solution okay if you find everything has a solution when it has a problem it has a solution you relax yourself and see you will get a solution for that but relaxing that it takes a little time for us practice nothing is hard if you practice everything is easy for us but practicing that is little difficult because when uh, we all have bore wells at our house when they drill because bores everybody has a bore but when we go and uh, have a new bore they have to drill they get a stone they have to drill they get a mud they have to drill still they get a mud they have to drill mud they have to drill water waste water again drill waste then see the pure water comes out this is also same thing sadhana practice everything you practice 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 end of the day you are the winner and you will be getting the benefits out of it now how to overcome this obesity you can have the beautiful things over here surya namaskars surya namaskar sun salutation you can see here front bending back bending sleeping standing twisting everything is becoming now right from here you can see ardha i mean namaskar mudra ardha chandrasana padastasana asvasanchalasana sarpasana astanga namaskar sarpa bhujangasana parvatasana asvasanchalasana padastasana ardha chandrasana namaskar if you can remember six asana the other six are wise words of it and you are aware or fit or not the surya namaskar it's called as in, in different way energy gaining exercises for example if you can see in running you will make only your legs work of course your yeah, upper shoulders also moves but in walking only legs in skipping again the body but whereas here front bending back bending standing sleeping twisting and all doing 15 minutes for running jogging cycling swimming and everything and doing one round of surya namaskar is equal to the same now imagine the benefit of surya namaskars where you can get a mental and physical benefits over here that is surya namaskar benefit and try to do three surya namaskars rounds every day and see the benefits out of it it will change your entire day it will make you completely active it will make you completely proactive after a certain point of the time that is the benefit it throws all the waste out of your body that is the beauty and benefit yeah somebody will say here i used to do surya namaskar one time tell me my dear friends used to will consider over here health doesn't care what you are in the past 
health only gains what you are in the present i used to go 10 km sir i used to go 5 km but what is 5 km what is 10 km used to there is no related to your present life in present life it is only matters what you are doing now are you guarantee when you sleep night can you get up at the same we don't have a guarantee for your life when you are there use your life properly because we don't have any alternative for our heart alternative for any health diseases okay because and you if you have also how expensive it is you know when you to go to the doctor we have everything with our doctor is like sunlight doctor is like vitamin and everything water everything we have but we want to go to ha uh, many of the it companies and all because i take up the sessions over there also sir vitamin d doctor prescribed i am a, a doctor asked me to take every day three vitamin d. my dear friend so funny part of it vitamin d you go to the sunlight you get it very free over there sir what time i have to go can i go at 6 uh, o'clock sir 6 o'clock sun started coming my dear friends and if you can take an example of the farmer can you see that farmer what time he go morning afternoon until the light ends he goes until the light until the light goes away he will be in the crops working hard so then you can see the beauty of us he will be more shiny he will be more healthy than us but we obesed diseased and all so and again we use spf 50 spf 100 all the sunscreen do we become anything what is god given us is already beautiful only thing is make your word beautiful then your work will also be beautiful and you also will be beautiful now coming to the next thing is pranayama anuloma viloma pranayama see i'll tell you because in the yoga also there are so many schools you can say this also nadi shodhana pranayama also nadi is a nostril this anuloma viloma pranayama as we discuss alternate nostril breathing like step one is firstly you have to this is nasikagra mudra because this again the mudra this i'll show you raising your four fingers closing your four fingers raise the little finger and the ring finger this is called nasikagra mudra and with nasikagra mudra let me show you how to do uh, this is my right nostril it may be a mirror image for you so please don't uh, confuse and use your left nostril closing your right nostril very slowly you have to first breathe into the left and then close your left breathe out to the right and again breathe into the right close breathe out breathe in close breathe out with i made it little fast so that you should know the concept now i'll make it little slower the very first time you have to breathe in close breathe out breathe in close breathe out breathe in close. which means the very first time left nostril breathing from then on whichever the nostril you are breathing out same nostril breathe out whichever the nostril you are breathing out same nostril breathe out that is anuloma viloma pranayama try to do it trust me and do it every day for 5 minutes of pranayama because whenever you are doing pranayama you can see the picture very clearly it shows the closing of your eyes because when you open your eyes when we see a ah, fan is rotating light is off my parent is calling my dad is calling wife we distract ourselves when you focus and do the pranayama by closing your eyes you will know the completely internal what is exactly the changes made in your self that is the beauty of pranayama now kapala bhati pranayama now you can question yourself how many of you have the diabetes at your family sir my parent doesn't have but i have i got diabetes i don't know how sir my parents have i am scared now why i may get it i may get it sir so i i have to be very careful sir because i am scared of diabetes my friend father passed away at the age of 40 because of diabetes i am scared first leave about this kid think about the solution why do you got the diabetes you are all aware of it why do you get the diabetes insulin glands become less in your body now a question where does the insulin glands produces in your body lower abdomen if you can see the right side image of yours the arrow is given lower abdomen where the lower intestines will be there the lower intestines relaxes releases the uh insulin glands lower intestines lower abdomen when you do the kapala bhati it stimulates and vibrates your lower abdominal muscles and releases the insulin now you all are aware of it like when you get the abdomen i mean like sorry diabetes high you don't have to use the medicine you have to use the injection what is that injection insulin injection is the highest dosage they can give it for the diabetes so what is the benefit you get it 
by doing kapalbhati you release the insulin glands in your body you regain the insulin glands in your body now how do you do the kapalbhati you have to exhale you can see the nostril explosive exhale I means forceful exhale and slightly longer and passive inhale inhale will automatically go if you, you can see slightly what does a slightly means a very slow small inhalation and exhalation should be explosive exhalation and inhalation is very slow inhalation will take and pulling the abdominal muscle compressing the abdominal muscle inhaling the abdominal muscles well you can see the first image and the second image pulling the abdominal muscle that makes you and you don't have to move your shoulder blade exhale and pull the abdomen that is the i mean like kapal bhati prana and kapal bhati kapal means what skull bhati is the cleansing technique of the pranayama this can also be called as pranayama and it can also be called as kriya kapal regular practice of the kapal bhati improves your memory power also it improves your memory power also that is the beauty of kapal bhati prana now coming to the last slide of today's importance of diet sara is just eat very nice uh, but what time you eat i already discussed what time you de- eat my dear friends tell me the time do you do you your breakfast every day ah uh, one day i do it when my wife cooks a very tasty yummy breakfast where i like when she get up morning or else i will eat my breakfast next to my office there are so nice bondas crispy oily i eat that or else ghee ghee so you eat no problem maintain a saturated time for it maintain a particular time for it do you eat in a regular time my dear friends no we don't maintain a time and i wonder and i'm very sorry to say as a human being somebody those who have a problem i'm not talking and i'm not pointing everybody please there are women and the men i'm saying it this is not pointing you universal example i'm telling you ha ah, sir when i get up i go to back of house or so and then smoke then only my excretion will come or potty will come out for me or else until i cannot throw out my stomach completely then somebody sir what to do as soon as i get up I, until i read the paper then the potty will not come for me then somebody will say sir as soon as i get up i have to do walking running then only it will come and that also sir two installments i have to go sir before I go office because office washrooms are bad have you wonder your friends have you seen any animal we don't honestly see that it is going shit or potty but if you can see a buffalo or a cow how fast it throws it dung out i'm sorry to say it but it is very good an example from the animal city it throws it potty out because it digests it is very good it is only grass but we if we cut the cow also we will eat it because we hardly it matters for us. crispy oily juicy spicy that's all what matters for us that's all matters for us my dear friends only thing is that's all matters the thing is we don't want the same thing ah who eats every day igli the patients will eat igli what is there in igli no oil no spice but eat everything moderately if you are eating beyond moderate compensate with that whatever i say you can see these are the five koshas of our body annamaya kosha pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha vijnanamaya kosha and anandamaya kosha these are the five koshas and how does it interrelated to sir it is annamaya kosha what is annamaya kosha the food which you intake will get into the annamaya kosha what is physical body and what does it becomes when you eat it turns into the energy that is pranamaya kosha if you don't have a prana where does your energy comes from? when you have energy then only your prana is when you there is no prana you, there is no energy the if your hand it falls down so the food turns into as an energy that is pranamaya kosha subtle body it is called then mana manomaya kosha emotional body so we have two two sides for everybody though how strict we are at our office or the how it, when we see our kids how we will come when they ask for small candy when the things comes how emotional we are oh my daughter i am proud is it not emotional thing that also with the food which you eat which you eat which it reflects which you take in which it take come out like for example the goat what does it eat the goat what does it eat it eats grass but how does it react but at the same time tiger and the lion what is the wild animals what is so it reacts the same way so again it, i leave it to you it may be a vegetarian or so balance balance your diet i would say so manomaya kosha is about the emotional vijnanamaya kosha what is vijnanamaya knowledge if you have a wisdom and a knowledge then you can see how does the wisdom come with the emotional i mean like physical body the food which you take 
then the energy body then the sub emotional body then only the wisdom the knowledge what you eat is only again translating to this many then anandamaya kosha ultimately if you are not happy with what you are doing can you sustain yourself definitely no if you are working though you are getting i mean like 10 i mean like imagine for example you are getting 1 lakh but still if you are not happy do you feel good for yourself so this is all about the diet which you take i mean what happiness again i'm sorry i didn't mention this you are completely feeling burps you are completely feeling this is again because of the food the stored food i'll tell you one example the food which you pre- i mean which prepared at home keep it on the dining table for two days two days without doing anything you can see the bubble fungus and all forms but we store it in the fridge and we want it to eat that and you see the difference two days on the dining table and we stick it in the fridge and three days ah three days no problem i will eat no problem i will eat it keep it it is my favorite food. this is the problem eat fresh you know in the vietnamese and the i mean asian apart from india they eat with the forks and forks no no spoon big spoon a eh, small spoon what will it do for me give me a big spoon i will eat it fast 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 how many times we are chewing our food we have a 32 teeth do we chew our food ah finish one spoon ah mama my time is up i have to eat in 5 minutes you don't have a time to eat what is that thing you are earning in your life how much you earn what is the use for what you are earning my dear friends what are for you earning into if you don't have a time for your eating eat relax you and do vajrasana so how many asanas are there if anybody remember can you please tell me any one i have said you one last time i can ask you anyone how many asanas i have told you in yoga shastra how many asanas only 84 lakhs sir. excellent ma'am only 84 lakhs see. among only 84 lakhs of asana vajrasana is the only asana which we can do at any point of the time which means the other asanas has to be done depending upon the food which you take like for example if you take a fruits it should be a half an hour to one hour depending upon the quantity of the food you take if it is rice and the normal veg it should be a two hours of gap if it is non veg four hours of gap depending upon the food and before food you can do it at any point of time but vajrasan is the only asana where we can do it at any point of the time because the beauty of vajrasan is it is good for digestion so that is the only asana which we can good at any point of the time so i hope everybody has gained one percent of the knowledge by this and i thank you one and all and uh, thanks for giving the opportunity to the uh, professor b sunil sir and the dr b mohan mohan kumar sir and professor lb lakshman khan sir and the badruka college also once again i thank you each and every participant uh, that's all from my end if you wanted to ask any health related issues or topics which naturally can keep you can happily ask because i have 5 minutes for you all thank you So, if uh, Dr. Ra- uh, Rama Lakshman and Dr. Syed Farooq Kamal are there, uh, your uh, inputs on this session, sir? Yes, madam. Madam, this is Rama Lakshman is there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, madam. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to all participants and webinar organizers. uh professor sunil kumar garu is my guru and other professors and uh, co conveners and conveners who have been taken a lot of pain in order to conduct this webinar uh, i am fortunate to be here as one of the chairperson for a second day second session today national e workshop sports and games orientation training program i uh, really it's a great uh, opportunity for me most of our uh, colleagues uh, that means uh, telangana social fair residence education society uh, physical education teachers and physical directors also have been taken part in this uh, important webinar we can't deny the fact that since ancient times the of regarding this yoga in india being practiced all of you know that the honorable prime minister of india narendra modi ji in his un address in 2014 had suggested the date of 21st june as a yoga international day as it is the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere as for his suggestion united nations general assembly resolved june 21st as a 
International Yoga Day since 2015. As far as uh, today's uh, session concerned, uh, Mr. Srinivasalu uh, Nallella is organizing, is cooperating with the Mr. Uh, Professor uh, uh, Sunil Kumar Garu and uh, Yoga Master uh, Mr. Srinivasalu. He gave live examples and excellent explanation of all asanas. A very well explained session with the live and women known examples. With this, all we come to know that yoga is a science of science. Dear friends, the art of practicing yoga helps in controlling an individual's mind body and soul. It brings together physical and mental disciplines to achieve a peaceful body and mind. You know, all of you practically is to know. If you do practically, then you come to know what is the use of this one. It helps to manage stress, anxiety, and it keeps you relaxing like anything. It also helps in increasing flexibility, muscle strength, and body tone also. Mr. Srinivasalu, because I have not met so far him, but his explanation, the way of preparation of slides, how he compared the yoga with the living examples, these all things, uh, I hope my dear fraternity, physical education fraternity will definitely, they will take uh, to do, at least to, he said that 1%. I, I, I'm not... Um, um, I'm not agree with him. Definitely, they will carry at least 10 to 15 percent from this uh, session. I request you all and spare your valuable time to do practice. You know everything, but thing is that you have to practice yourself and make others to practice because this is a cascading method. We have to spread like anything. Then only all will be healthy. Uh, thank you, one and all, uh, Mr. Srinivasan and uh, organizers. Um, Sunil, Professor Sunil Gaur he is my guru and who is asking uh, for this uh, organizing this all this thing, Nalala Srinivasa, Dr. Nalala Srinivasa, and other professors, uh, Professor Rajesh and Professor Deepla and uh, Professor Rathod, those who are encouraging this physical education to be in a highest level. Uh, thank you, one and all. Thank you, Mr. Srinivasa. Let me, let me meet very shortly because in order to conduct a special uh, session for this uh, Telangana Social for Residential Education, Society, we will exclusively conduct a seminar uh, with your kind cooperation. Shortly, I will meet by, I will take a contact number with uh, Mr. Sunil, sir, and uh, let you uh, contact. Please, thank you, please. Thank, uh, thank you, sir. you, sir, for your inspirational words to not only me, for everybody, for making the value of yoga to know. Yeah. I mean, this present pandemic, yoga is very much needed for us to overcome all the uh, problems which you are suffering from, it might be an internal and external problems. Thank you. Srinivas sir, would you like yeah. to say a few words? Yeah, thank you very much sir, Srinivas sir. That was a wonderful enlightened uh, knowledge on yoga. You have presented uh, very well on asanas as pranayama and even a diet have been covered. That was wonderful, amazing. I, I expect that all those participants are there. Definitely they carry the message and they regularly they do this exercise. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The present is all mine to be here today. Thank you, uh, Srinivas, sir. It was so very beneficial. And all the participants over here, I'm sure, would have taken some aspect of your uh, session with them. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so now we go on to the next session. And I request Professor M. Madhavi, Chairperson, BOS Department of Zoology, Usmania University, to take over the third session and highlight on sports physiology. And the chairpersons for the third session is Dr. Vimal Reddy, Physical Director, Indira Priya Dashni Degree College for Women, Nampalli, and Major D. Jay Sudha, Physical Director and NCC Officer, Kasturba Gandhi Degree College for Women. But before a short introduction of our resource person, uh, uh, Professor M. Madhavi has done a lot of, as professional field of research interest in sports, 
psychology, entomology, sericulture, environmental sciences, bioinformatics, and biodiversity. She has done a doctorate from Osmania University in zoology, has many international publications to her credit, as well as national, done review of book chapters, attended national symposium, conferences, was a PhD guide to many research scholars. She has numerous academic distinction to her cre credit. She has presented papers in many universities in India. She was a joint organizing secretary, organizing convener, and joint organizing secretary in many national and international conferences and symposium. We are proud to have Professor M. Madhavi with us today. Ma'am, please take over the session. Thank you very much. Madam, mute yourself. Mute, mute, mute yourself, ma'am. We can't hear you. Unmute yourself. Okay? Now is it okay, sir? Yeah, now it's okay, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much for a nice introduction. I thank Professor Sunil Kumar, sir, Professor Lakshmi Kant Rathor Garu, and Professor uh, Rajesh Kumar, sir, sorry, for introducing me and taking me into this uh, national webinar. I have been associated with the sports department and uh, it is really a very uh, wonderful experience working with all of you. I'm not a psychologist, madam. I'm a physiologist. So in this connection, I would like to talk about... I stand corrected, madam. I stand yeah. corrected. Yes. So thank you, Sunil Kumar, sir, for uh, giving me a chance to talk about uh, sports physiology. So now I'll be talking about sports physiology I'm very proud to say that exactly 20 years back, I am a student of this historic and prestigious Usmania University, a gold medal from MSc Zoology. And uh, I always uh, believe and trust that our stakeholders must be benefited as we are benefited from the same university. So with this uh, few words, uh, let us talk about this physiology and how this physiology is being connected with the sports. What is meant by physiology? The study of the living processes, okay, that is called as physiology. What is meant by the life processes? Understanding how various forms of life functions. If you see, this is an amoeba, which is a unicellular organism. And this amoeba is seen only with the help of a microscope. And you can see this single cell, only one cell, which we call it as a nucleus, will be for performing all the vital physiological functions that are needed for the organism. So this one cell is performing the complete physiological functions. And when you uh, take upon the multicellular organisms, so many cells put together, they have the division of labor and performing the physiological functions. Now, what is exercise physiology? The study of the function of the human body during and in response to the exercises, we call it as exercise physiology. So why is it important that we study the exercise physiology or sports physiology is to better understand the workings of an athlete's body systems. So this is the main motto of uh, the need or the importance or the significance of this physiology in connection with the sports. <laughs> How we can relate it to our area of the study so we can apply the physiological responses to the exercises whatever we are doing and our body's physiology is made up of a number of body systems so body systems i mean to say the anatomy of which all play a different role in our body's physiology during exercises so the main systems or the body systems in the man or the human being involved is uh, during our sports physiology is muscular system, nervous system, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, resp and also the energy system. So what do you mean by this muscular system? So the muscles work by contraction and relaxation. So the contraction and relaxation therefore causes the movement. So during exercises, all the muscles are obviously required to contract and relax more often. So when the muscles contract, they cause a movement and they require an energy. 
So how we can define an energy? Energy is the capacity to do some work. So this energy is needed to do some work and this energy is quickly used up unless oxygen is supplied to the working muscles via our blood stream. So here you can see these are the blood streams and how we are able to make the muscles move in order to uh, get an energy and perform a work. So this is a cardiovascular system and how the, in the cardiovascular system, in our uh, thoracic system of the human body, two very important organs are being embedded. First is the heart and the lungs. So these are the two important uh, organs that are being seen in the pectoral girdle of the human. So when you study about the heart, the heart is a muscle that contains uh, four chambers. And the upper two chambers are called as the atria and the bottom two are called as the ventricles. The heart's job is to pump the blood around the body. So whatever the blood that is there, that pumping is completely associated with the heart's job. And during exercise, the working muscles require more and more of oxygen. So this oxygen that is being utilized by our body means during exercise, the heart has to work faster by beating more times a minute. I repeat, the, during exercise, the heart requires more work by beating more times a minute and harder by pumping more blood out with each beat. So the circulatory system, as we all know, and I think many of the students are there, for them I'm telling you, it has got pulmonary circulation and also the systemic circulation. The pulmonary circulation is a circulation of the blood between the heart and the lungs. And this system takes the deoxygenated blood from the body and it gives it oxygen from the lungs that are being placed on both sides of the heart. And in the systemic circulation, the circulation of the blood between the heart and the body and the system takes the oxygenated blood and sends it to around the body. So that is the basic difference between the pulmonary circulation and also the systemic circulation. So there are three main types of blood vessels in the human body, the arteries, the capillaries and the veins. The arteries are the thick walled vessels that carry the blood away from the heart. This is the heart. So from the heart, the, cap, the arteries will be carrying away from the heart. Whereas the capillaries are the thin walled vessels that oxygen can move through to get to the cells and carbon dioxide can move into from the cells. So the veins are the thin walled vessels which carry the blood towards the heart and there is no oxygen in the blood. Because the blood is traveling up towards the heart, it is uh, what it is doing, it is fighting the gravity. Because it is fighting with the gravity, the veins and the valves are located in the veins that open and close to keep the blood traveling in only one direction. So that is the function of this veins. When you see the general functions of the cardiovascular system during exercises, it redistributes the blood from the less active regions of the body to the muscles involved in the activity and it increases the volume of the blood pumped out by the heart through an increased heart rate. The buffers and they remove the waste products and which also aids in the temperature regulation. Now when we see quickly about this respiratory system, you can see the beautiful lungs are located as I told you they are in the pectoral region of the body and the lungs are being connected from the mouth, the throat, nose, that is the external and the internal nares. And you have a beautiful respiratory tract, what we call, and this comprises the respiratory system. And the major function of our respiratory system is to bring the oxygen into the body and remove the carbon dioxide. So how does this respiratory system work? Oxygen is being inhaled, that is breathed in and down through the bronchi. So these are the bronchi. Mark. So the, down into the bronchi, it will be going. And uh, from there, it is transferred to the blood. Whereas the carbon dioxide and other waste are transferred from the blood 
through the lungs and out of the body so the respiratory system and exercises so when exercising breathing occurs very very fast so when we do this kind of exercising we all notice that the breathing occurs very faster and more deeply allowing more oxygen to be inhaled and transferred into the blood and the muscles where this oxygen is used to help this particular fuel for the exercise so the major functions of the respiratory system during the exercises they increase the rate and depth of the breathing so whatever they are there these particular types of muscles that are engaged during the process of breathing and not only that the increase in the oxygen and the amount of the oxygen and the carbon dioxide the gaseous exchange takes place in the lungs and the increase in the amounts of the oxygen to the muscles is also seen per unit of the blood and when you see the immediate responses during exercises the cardiac output which we call it as co that increases the amount of blood pumped out by the heart per minute so we measure this as the cardiac output and the stroke volume which we call it as sv that increases the volume of the blood that is injected into the aorta per beat of the heart so the immediate responses what we are noticing during the exercises is the first one is the cardiac output and the second is the stroke volume and after that we are going to see the heart rate the heart rate increases or increase due to the intensity and the workload so whatever workload you are being uh, taken uh, during the form of exercises so that increases and the blood pressure definitely increases and the blood and whatever the blood is there it is sent to the working muscles immediately and what happens long term changes to body due to training you can see this figure so this is the long term changes of the body due to excessive training and the heart it increases in size increases the work capacity the resting heart rate gets lower and the heart rate during exercises gets lower and lower and the heart rate returns to the normal faster after exercising and what about the respiratory system the lungs can breathe in and out of a greater volume of air and with it more of oxygen is being accumulated and it increases the amount of oxygen that is taken each breath and sent to the working muscles and the increased blood flow uh, more or less it will be more blood moving around the body with oxygenated oxygen that is being attached now coming to the muscular system the muscles get larger and very stronger and the muscles become more flexible and the muscles gain more blood vessels and receive more blood and oxygen so this muscles can store more and more energy now what is an exercise so the physical exercise is any bodily activity that enhances or maintains the physical fitness and overall health and wellness so that is meant by an exercise which i can say as a best definition for exercise so it is nothing but it has to maintain the physical fitness by keeping our overall health and also our wellness so it is being performed for various reasons including strengthening of the muscles and the cardiovascular system honing athletic skills weight loss or maintenance as well as for the purpose of enjoyment so in our day to day activities whatever that are there which are which we are involving the musculoskeletal system that is both the muscles and the skeletal system also gives the same effect as exercise but it depends on the intensity and extent of the work that has been involved so the effects of training on the muscles the first thing is uh, we are going to talk about the hypertrophy so here the increased myofibrils so what is meant by hypertrophy in the name only it is very clear ma 
Hyper means more, increased number of the myofibrils, that is the muscle cells, and increase in the mitochondrial enzymes. So we know that uh, to the students, I am telling the mitochondria that are being embedded in the cells, we call them as powerhouses of the cell. So power means energy. So a lot of energy being uh, is, is being kept in the mitochondria and the effect of the training on the muscles will keep the increase in the mitochondrial enzymes to 120% and the phosphogen metabolic system will also be increased nearing to 80% and the stored glycogen, the glycogen will be stored in the muscles and it will be for 50% and the stored triglycerides, so that will be 75 to 100%. And the rate and efficiency of oxidative metabolic systems, whatever that are there, will be uh, less than 50%. So we have uh, two types of muscles to discuss here, the fast twitch muscles and slow twitch muscles. So the fast twitch muscles are larger in diameter, ma, something around two times and uh, they are, than the slow twitch, they are less in diameter. And the fast twitch muscles have the Phosphogen and also the glycogen lactic acid enzymes, they are very, very active. They are more active two to three times when compared, when compared to this slow twitch muscles. Whereas for the slow twitch muscles, we have more mitochondria, myoglobin and enzymes for aerobic metabolism. And the fast twitch muscles will have less capillaries. Here they, uh, for slow twitch, they have more capillary. And for fast twitch muscles, they deliver extreme amounts of power for short periods, whereas for the slow twitch muscles, they provide the endurance. Endurance is the need of the uh, or the basic component during the physiological processes in exercises. Now, what are the different hereditary differences? So the proportion of the fast or the slow twitch fibers appear to be genetically determined. So the change of the muscles or the type of the training, whatever that is actually minimal, and the percentage of the fibers in quadriceps of the muscles is being measured uh, by in both the marathon swimmers, the average males, weightlifters, sprinters, jumpers, uh, with the comparison of fast and slow. So when they have taken the percentage of fibers in the quadriceps muscles for marathons, it is uh, uh, fast, it is 18 and slow is 82. Swimmers is uh, 26 and 74. And for average male, 55 and 45 is the slow. Weightlifters, definitely 55 and slow is 45. And sprinters, 63 and 37. Jumpers, 63 and 37 again. And the respiration during the process of exercises the oxygen consumption, uh, which is measured as ml per minute under the maximal conditions, the untrained average male is 3,600, whereas athletically trained male is 4,000, and the male marathon runners will have 5,100. And this is the oxygen consumption, and the relation between the oxygen consumption and the pulmonary ventilation is always linear. So the limits of the pulmonary ventilation for maximal exercise ventilation is 100 to 110 and maximal breathing capacity is 150 to 170. And when you see this VO2 maximum, the training increases the oxygen maximal consumption in about eight weeks for both the major organs like the heart and the lungs and the oxygen diffusing capacity appears to be genetically determined. And when you see the muscle strength, so what do, you, what do you mean by this muscle strength? The strength of the muscle is determined mainly by its size. Okay, ma? The maximal contractile force that is between 3 and 4 kg per centimeter square of the muscle cross-sectional area, that is the number of the myofibrils. So the cross-sectional area of the quadriceps of world-class weightlifter is 150 centimeters square to 525 kgs and the holding strength of the muscles is about 40% greater than the contractile strength. 
this would increase the strength to 735 kg now what do you mean by this diffusing capacity the increase during the exercises is due to the increased pulmonary blood flow so whatever the increase in the exercise that will be always directly proportional to the pulmonary blood flow and this blood flow through many capillaries at rest is very sluggish but increased blood flow provides larger surface for diffusion so the genetic predisposition for diffusing capacity is really a big question mark and also not much change in the arterial blood gas concentration in the exercises are seen and the respiration the increased respiration for stimulus is for the motor outflow on the respiratory center will be more and the proprioception from the muscles and the joints are also seen so what do you mean by this power so this power is determined by the strength distance of contraction and the number of times per minute i repeat power is de determined by the strength the distance of contraction and number of times per minute so power is a work done in a unit time expressed as kg minute per kgm per minute and the effects of smoking is also uh, more on this uh, physio physiology on the exercises so the nicotine that is causing the constriction of the terminal bronchioles so these bronchioles this are present in the uh, terminal parts of the lungs which we call it as the units of the lungs are the bronchioles so the nicotine whatever we are taking during the process of smoking so this causes the constriction of the terminal bronchioles of the lungs which increases the resistance of the air flow so the air flow whatever that is being absorbed or being observed during our study we see that there is also resistance in the air flow so the irritating effects of the smoke they have lot of irritating like you know uh, coughing and different types of problems during breathing so this irritating effects of the smoke increases the fluid secretion into the bronchial tree that, that will be like a tree with a lot of networks inside our lung and the swelling of the epithelial lining so whatever lung if you take one lung and spread out and observe then we can see that the effects the prolonged effects of the smoking definitely they cause the irritating effects and also the swelling of the epithelial lining of the bronchioles as well as the lungs and this nicotine that also paralyzes the cilia of the respiratory epithelial cells amma for every epithelial cell in the respiratory organ that is the lung we have the cilia okay these cilia what will happen you know they are very very sensitive the prolonged smoking whatever the persons are doing with the presence of this uh, nicotine it uh, paralyzes this cilia and the debris that means whatever the nicotine that has uh, causing the cilia paralyze all this will the debris will accumulate in the passage ways and adds to the difficulty of breathing is it not so this prolonged smoking of taking lot of nicotine into the lungs causes difficulty in breathing this is the main point the agenda behind the smoking why they are having the difficulty of breathing and the next is the chronic or what whatever the chronic smoking effects are emphysema chronic bronchitis obstruction of the terminal bronchioles and destruction of the alveolar or well walls so the maximal power that is the maximal power achievable by all the muscles in a highly trained athlete for first 8 to 10 seconds will be 7000 next 1 minute will be 4000 30 minutes will be 1700 so this will be uh, reduced and the power output of the muscle is only 1/4 as great as during the initial power surge and the efficiency of translation of power to performance is low at rapid activity 
than sustained activity the velocity is always uh, it will be uh, you know it will be more uh, lower when compared to the normal and the cardiovascular system in exercises when you take this uh, particular cardiovascular system the resting blood flow blood flow is also being observed to the resting muscles and during the maximal exercises the cardiac output for young men at rest will be 5.5 and young men at maximal exercise is 23 and for marathoner it will be 30 so endurance endurance is very very important for sports persons what is meant by endurance it is the ability to remain active for a very long period so that is really very much needed for the uh, sports persons and related uh, and it is related to the nutritive support of the muscle amma and here uh, definitely the food whatever we are taking definitely it should be of a balanced diet and uh, high carbohydrate mixed and high fat so here whatever uh, for when we are talking about endurance that will be more for high carbohydrate contents in our food now this is the changes in the heart in marathoners the volume of the chambers increases by 40% and heart mass increases by also 40% and the muscle metabolic systems now what do you mean by this muscle metabolic systems these are the amounts of atp that are present in the muscles as i told you uh, this uh, every cell will be having the mitochondria which are called as the power houses of the cell so what is this mitochondria will be doing these power houses they will be generating lots and lots of energy which we call it as atp that is adenosine triphosphate so the amount of the atp that is present in the muscles even in a well trained athlete is sufficient so to sustain maximal muscle power for only about 3 seconds that means the combined amounts of the cell atp and the cell phosphocreatine can provide maximal muscle power for 8 to 10 seconds only what happens because the glycogen lactic acid system this is the complex that is being produced as an end product in some cases as a by product as a glycogen lactic acid accumulation system in the muscles wherein it can provide 1.3 to 1.6 minutes of maximal muscle activity this system can form the atp molecules for about 2.5 times as rapidly as can for the oxidative mechanism that is being again studied in the mitochondria so that we call it as now the research has been gone to that much extent that we are also talking about the nanotechnology and we are also studying about the oxidative uh, phosphorylation how it is occurring even in the minute cells not only there we are also talking about the genes genomes and also today we have also talking about the dry lab not wet lab ama dry lab which we call it as the study is called as bioinformatics okay so the developing strength by training muscles can contract at more than 50% of the maximal force that develops the strength rapidly even if done by few contractions per day so the contractions with less force and without resistance will not develop the strength irrespective of the extent now what is meant by this body heat body heat how it is being connected with exercises so the body heat that is the heat production that increases with exercises which can increase the body temperature to a dangerous level due to the inability to eliminate the heat in the hot and humid environment or heavy clothing so this is the heat production uh, when in terms of exercise body exercise or body heat in terms of exercise so the heat stroke what is meant by this heat stroke when body temperature goes to 41 to 42 degree centigrade it is destructive to the tissue cells 
again we are talking about our histology we are going again to the tissues so when the heat is being increasing more and more in the body what is happening the tissue levels will be destruction including the brain so this is very important even the brain will also be uh, destructive the brain cells the neurons okay and the different kinds of the hormones are also embedded there so what happens the symptoms of extreme body heat in exercises is extreme weakness the first symptom and the next is exhaustion severe headache dizziness nausea profuse sweating confusion staggering gait they collapse and ultimately go into unconsciousness so what happens it is definitely fatal because temperature regulation is lost and many enzymes have doubled their activities so completely ours is a network first slide i showed you a single cell amoeba performing various vital or physiological activities is it not and here human being is being performed by various multicellular tissue levels the division of work division of labor completely collapses when you go when you see the body is going into lot of heat and uh, please my dear friends my dear learned colleagues please all, keep all these things into consideration when your body is getting over and over heat we are also seeing many types of uh, news in this regard also most probably before pandemic i think one of the student while uh, yeah yes before pandemic at uh, uh, nizam college under the control line uh, principal professor lakshmi kant rathod i worked as controller of examinations there i was the first lady controller with our uh, beloved uh, uh, professor lakshmi kant rathod's uh, regime what we have observed just before pandemic is one student one boy due to doing lot of excessive exercise he got unconscious and fell down it was really such a big risk for him so immediately uh, the authorities have taken to apollo care hospitals apollo hospital sorry which is nearby to nizam college and we could uh, bring back to the normal position with a great difficulty because he had all these problems what i have just discussed with you now what are the different body fluids and salts the fluid loss the sweating tissue fluids in the muscles the effect on the reduction of the body weight by 3% diminished performance and 5 to 10% muscle cramps nausea so all these things uh, my student i also have guideship uh, in your sports department chenna keshuli is my phd student i am co guide along with rathod sir so we have done so many uh, case studies in our nizam college students boys and girls and here we have come to the conclusion even regarding the body fluids and salts and what are this warm ups the increased performance of staircase phenomenon and the starting position starting law of relationships to the initial length to the force generated and the sports nutrition is definitely playing a very vital role in uh, sports physiology the high carbohydrate diet versus high fat diet so what is meant by more protein intake and why the vitamins and minerals are needed more and definitely amma there is a sex difference and sex difference is the uh, is also playing a very vital role i can say very strongly as a physiologist because the quality is the same but the quantity will be more in the males due to the presence of this uh, testosterone hormone in the males and here definitely it will be balanced by god or i can say the nature so when more of testosterone hormone is uh, there more in the males definitely females have lot of endurance and that is the advantage because of high energy storage and the problems of menstruation and pregnancy hormonal control and the efficiency due to the pelvic and other skeletal structural differences in both the pectoral and also the pelvic regions in the body formations is also having lot of difference 
Now, regarding the evolution of the hunter-gatherer, when we go back to our evolution of uh, Harappan and uh, Mohenjo-Daro civilization, the body composition, the muscles, 40% of the muscles and bones and the motor centers that are present in our brain, okay, and the cerebellum and the basal ganglions, these are all the networks that are associated with the nerve tissue fibers, the motor cortex, the brain stem, and the spinal cord, which we study as the, uh, what we study as the main, uh, uh, these are the nerves that are coming from there. We study as the uh, peripheral nervous system, central nervous system, and autonomous nervous system. So the control of this physical activity, the neocortex, on the basis of this short and long health, physical and other benefits versus limbic system on the basis of the emotions are also being concentrated in the control of the physical activity. And the technology, the automation and also the communication, the comfort, the unhealthy lifestyles. Just in our previous speaker was talking about, uh, uh, professor was talking about the unhealthy lifestyle and what are the things, the pranamas and all, what we have to do. And definitely, if at all, we are not following all these things, the tissues and the mass that are being em embedded in every type of uh, the systems, body systems, we will be losing. It is up to you whether you use it or lose it. So what are the nutrition facts that we have to know in physiology? The energy intake, the exercise energy expenditure, and also the inadequate energy intake. Not only that, eating before or after exercises, before for glycemic control, and the vitamins and minerals, though they are needed very, very in a low amounts, but definitely it is the need of the hour. And vitamins like B, C, D, and E, the water-soluble vitamins, and also some of the fat-soluble vitamins like beta-carotene, minerals like calcium, zinc, magnesium, and selenium are also important. And to some extent, her, uh, diet restriction is also recommended. The fluid and the electrolytes, the dehydration of the muscle cramps are also seen when you are not taking a proper diet. Now, talking about this metabolism, the enzymes for oxidation of the fat and the different kinds of the carbohydrate enzymes like carbohydrases or the amylases and the protein enzymes like protein, proteinases, okay, and the fat um, enzymes like lipases are being involved in the metabolism of carbohydrates, fats, and lipids. And the oxidative capacity will be definitely increasing in the metabolism and the glycogen will be depleted or reduced. The insulin sensitivity will be increased and the leptin level will be reduced. And the different types of exercises and diabetes, when we see this exercise and diabetes, the regular exercises definitely reduces the risk of type 2 diabetes in overweight and also obese individuals. It is also proven amma. And the regular walking exercises that must be done, at least not daily, at least it is recommended three to four times in a week, at least four times in a week, uh, because the increased energy consumption and the decreased levels of different uh, uh, HbA1c and also the different kinds of the hormonal tests will be seen when you go for the blood test and better responses if you do it uh, after dinner. So it, after dinner and early morning is also recommended about the regular walking exercises. If at all you are not getting time in the morning, definitely after dinner you can just uh, go for 45 minutes to one hour walk and I also recommend for meditation also depending on your age. That means, for example, you are 25 or 22 years age. So we recommend 22 minutes or 25 minutes of meditation. So depending on your age, the meditation is also required. If not daily, at least three to four or five times a week. And moderate exercises. The muscular uptake of the glucose exceeds the hepatic glucose production. 
So a lot of uh, liver is being involved here in the hepatic glucose production. And uh, liver is such an organ which is completely controlling the, the different types of uh, metabolism and also the diabetes uh, uh, in case of the uh, insulin uh, contents. And the blood glucose will decline during this activity. The plasma insulin, definitely it will fall and making the risk of exercise induced hypoglycemia that will be low as the individual is not injecting the insulin or taking the insulin very uh, spontaneously. And the skeletal muscles, when we talk about the skeletal muscles, the hypertrophy that feeds the arteries in the rats and the gene expression studies, what we are now my students are working on gene expression studies concerned to lot of not only cancerous cells, but also to some of the stored insect, also stored product insects, which are causing lot of damage to the human mankind and anabolic effect of the nutrient intake and prevent the sarcopenia in the old ages. The bones, tendons and the ligaments are definitely, they are very, very important. And the articular cartilage volume that is being proportional to the physical activity and the exercises in the older women did not show the increase. So the postmortem findings of a horse when they have done, they have seen that the calcified cartilage and subcontral bone thickness are being observed more in the growing children and the joint forms during the postnatal ontogeny process and we can also have a very great talk on this about the magnitude and orientation of the stresses that are being involved in the articular cart uh, cartilage so today a very big uh, new emerging subject i can say that is uh, stress physiology so stress physiology is also playing a very important role and this stress physiology is also imparting lot in the and it is the need of the our for your sports people also and i recommend uh, the all the organizing committee members especially professor sunil kumar garu to look upon even the stress physiology content with regard to sports or exercising in your curriculum and the epiphyseal growth is stimulated uh, by weight bearing. So, and also the bone mass and the architecture is also being done in lots of the stresses. And the fibroblast growth factor is also causing lot of ligaments in this connection. Now, injuries. So, excessive weight bearing on the epiphysis, the damage and the stunning, and the injuries to the muscles and the bones occur by overuse of accidents and also the little bits of games and plays, whatever you people will be doing. And more physical active individuals had more knee abnormalities. So the stress of the competitive sports overweigh the benefits of the exercises by the action of stress hormones, which is the need of the R. Immunity. What do you mean by immunity? The antibody production the optimal in moderate exercises, the suppression in intense exercises. So my dear friends and my dear students, today we are living in the COVID world. I can say this because we can say as pre-COVID, COVID and post-COVID. So immunity is definitely playing a very big role even in our exercises also. So this immunity will be having a lot of insulin resistance, atherosclerosis, tumor growth, and a neurodegeneration. And this neurodegeneration is again affecting, again having the uh, control with the happy hormones and also whatever the hormones that will be released from the brain. And the moderate physical activity is also may slow down in the prolonged diseases like different, uh, you know, HIVs and other types of diseases that our reports, we are also working on certain types of, uh, you know, the pandemic situation, coronavirus also, our group is there that is being globally and we are also seeing certain reports. Now, we know about this uh, asthma and all, and I just don't want to talk about all those systems. Now, what are the higher functions of the brain? So early life stress, that is maternal separation reversed by the exercises and in, in some case reports, 
and reduction of the depression and fear of falling in the older persons and these days we can see alzheimer's disease that was not our disease from in india it was western but today we can see that alzheimer's disease and the only uh, suggestion what uh, we are uh, uh, many of the research reports what we are do giving our uh, in the case studies is that if you have sound sleep for 6 to 8 hours or 8 to 10 hours once you are aging as your age is uh, increasing you must have a very good sleep for 8 7 to 8 or 10 hours then definitely our report says that you will not have alzheimer's disease and this is also relating for the functions of the brain and sleep sleep is definitely very important my dear friends for human beings so exercise seems to improve the mobility fatigue and the sleep quality uh, and also in the different kinds of colorectal and cancer patients also so the physical exercise could be an alternative or complementary approach to existing therapies for sleep problems and reproductive system yes definitely the reproductive system for the females the menopausal symptoms like night sweats mood swings irritability reduced by aerobic training and high impact of sports activities may produce the urinary incontinence and the rehabilitation for cancer like prostate cancer the positive benefits for improving the surgical outcomes and experience that are managing the side effects of radiation chemotherapy and improving the <laughs> psychological health सेंटर Uh, with mahavir care hospital my friend dr priya kumari is working very intensively in the palliative care unit of this rehabilitation of cancer patients now this rehabilitation of old age the uh, proportion of the aged population is increasing and minor illness will render them dependent so exercise training was feasible and effective in reducing the fear of falling and improving the dynamic balance and isometric strength in institutionalized older people with fear of falling so because they have certain problem in the brain as i told you this can be controlled not completely reduced can be controlled with 8 to 10 hours of sleeping especially for the older people so that they will not have any kind of this particular uh, you know the fear of falling and the 60 to 65 year group was capable of converting the physical activity into health benefits in both short and long term so my dear friends in my conclusion there is much evidence that a moderate amount of exercise is needed for the maintenance of functional integrity of all the body systems it is very important for growth and development of children not only exercise reverse the effects of immobilization it can readily produce a further of 10 to 20% improvement in the strength and aerobic power effectively postponing functionally important thresholds for some 10 to 20 years definitely in the west regular exercise is rapidly gaining widespread and advocacy as a preventive measure in schools medical circles and in the popular media so in the medical faculty in india of those who are currently exercising is only 50% the proportion of boys is 62 and girls is 38% the main reason i can say lack of time everybody has no time no time laziness exhaustion from academic activities were identified as important factors for not doing exercises what does this who recommends world health organization recommendations more exercise will be more health benefits so 5 to 17 years age at least 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity daily and 18 to 64 years 
at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity and an equivalent combination and 64 more than 64 years depending on their ability and conditions they can also do as well so for healthy life lifelong moderate exercise is a need but stressful exercise can be very harmful so with this i would just like to conclude my talk and i thank all my organizers who has given me the chance and a special thanks to Professor Sunil Kumar. And uh, it is really a commendable job what you're all doing from yesterday. So all the participants, uh, my stakeholders, and all the organizing committee members, uh, especially a big thanks uh, uh, to all of you for having this kind of academic spirit. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Last one word I would like to say uh, from the... I being an entomologist and a physiologist, uh, with the encouragement of our uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, I am establishing a butterfly garden at Uspania University, opposite to zoology department. Uh, in a very near time, I will be sending you in your groups. So please do come for the same. There is a special talk on butterflies. Thank you very much. Uh, very thankful to Madam uh, Professor Yam Madhavi, really in our department, backbone. So, so happy because we, before that we are thang is the backbone, now you are heart also, man. <laughs> because, <laughs> because you have to, all uh, uh, who is the uh, physiology related to particularly the heart, lungs, kidney, brain, muscle, exercise, sleep, blood, each and everyone, reproductive system, old age, World Health Organization, really. So now from the beginning to end, I'm so happy. I Not I'm happy, all are happy. Because we know the uh, new, new idea, new things. So that is a very, very good uh, and particular in our workshop. Actually, our concept is like that, ma'am. Because we know the each and everyone. So sharing and caring. Yes. So you sharing, we have to definitely uh, really is uh, too good. So very happy and very thankful to you. And on behalf of our uh, uh, committee and uh, our uh, organizing committee, very, very thankful to you. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam. Namaste. Namaste. And uh, Madam is, uh, uh, she is uh, more actually, this, uh, Madam is our family member, uh, Raja Shekhar. He is my yes. colleague at OU Engineering College. I am HOD of OU Engineering College. He is very good friend me and very thankful to him. Thank you, Thank one you. and all. Thank you, sir. Oh, Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Major Jay Sudha and Dr. Vimal Reddy, if you are there, please, your valuable inputs, ma'am. Jay Sudha, ma'am. Major Jay Sudha and Dr. Vimal Reddy, if you are present. Yeah, I think they were not there, madam. Okay, sir, a few words from you, Srinivasan. Yeah, definitely, madam. Uh, exercise physiology is our uh, favorite of our uh, professor, B. Sunil Kumar, also. Madam, you have been presented a wonderful uh, presentation, and you have covered uh, muscle strength, muscle fibers, we have small stitch muscle fibers, and uh, last uh, uh, red muscle fibers. That was wonderful, madam. For That is for uh, long distance runners and for short distance runners. And you have been talking about a respiratory capacity, and you have been talking about a power that is for explosive strength and endurance, uh, explosive power. That is was wonderful, madam. And you are talking about the effect of smoking. Definitely, madam. The effect of smoking is very dangerous for higher performance and for sports person also. Thank you for elaborating all the uh, psychological factors. Thank you very much, madam. Physiology, that physiology factor already yeah, made up also in told uh, previously. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Because is, uh, our mind is fixing only for the psychological, not the physiological. <laughs> so, uh, very good. Uh, no problem. So, Thank you, sir. Uh, ma'am, thank you so much. Extremely informative session, ma'am. Elaborate, exhaustive, extensive session. And we really appreciate the effort taken by you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, and ma'am. Namaste.
My best wishes. Now we go to the fourth session, as uh, next session, sorry. The next session will be taken up by Dr. N. Srinivas, Assistant Professor in Physical Education, Mathuri Venkata Subarao Engineering College, Hyderabad. He will be speaking on scientific skills and development with small sided games of football players' performance. The chairperson for the fourth session is Dr. Raja Rao, Assistant Professor in Physical Education, Government College of Physical Education, and Dr. G. A. Sham Mohan Reddy, HOD Department of Physical Edu Education, CBIT, Hyderabad. But before that, a small introduction about SIR. SIR's professional qualification includes postdoctoral fellowship in Indian Council of Social Science Research, PhD in Physical Education, qualified for APSET, specializes in sports psychology and football, has numerous awards to his credit, like Young Scientist Awards, Best Paper Award, etc. Sir is also a member of Indian Science Congress Association, Organizing Secretary Football Association, Barangal, and member of Indian Federation of Computer Science. We welcome you, sir. Please take the session. Uh, thank you, madam. Thank, thank you, you madam. Thank you for your elaborated uh, uh, information. Thank you. Shall I share my screen, madam? Yes, sir. Please do. Madam, may I speak? I am Dr. C. Rajaram, madam. Yes, sir. Please do, sir. Please do. Thank you, madam. First of all, uh, I thank you the Professor Srinivas, uh, sir, and uh, Dr. Nalla Srinivas, sir, for giving me this opportunity as a chairman, as a chairperson, sorry, as a chairperson uh, for this session. I happily then uh, I invite Dr. Singhasa sir, uh, present speaker. He is uh, present his presentation on scientific skills and development with small area games of football players' performance. Uh, once again, I invite you, sir. Please present your presentation. Thank you, Dr. Singhasa. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, is it visible, madam? Yes, sir. It is visible, yeah, yeah. sir. Voice is also audible. Yeah, very good afternoon, everybody. Uh, what Madam said, this is uh, Dr. Srinivas, my guru, Professor Bishwan Kumar. And we ha have had a lot of gurus of Usmani University, Professor Rathur Kumar, Professor Lakshmikant Rathur, Professor Rajesh Kumar, uh, Professor Satana Rana, Professor Deepla, and uh, a retired persons, Professor Prabhakar Rao Garu and Professor Venkat Reddy Garu. I, bless, I take bless from them, all of them. Uh, thank you. Thank you for giving me this uh, great opportunity for the uh, uh, national e-webinar on exercise and sports and games and orientation program. That is a brainchild of Professor B. Sunil Kumar. And we have been a great team, big team. Thank you, sir, for giving this opportunity. Yeah, my slides continues like title, introduction, and we had a 17 laws of a beautiful game and physical fitness, training methods, scientific skills, tactics, small side games, and conclusions. Yeah, sports training, always the body to gradually build up a strength and endurance, improve skills levels and body motivation, ambition, and confidence. Of course, a training, program has to be developed to meet the individual needs of athlete and take into consideration many factors like gender, age, strength, weaknesses, objectives, training facilities, etc. All the, all, as all athletes have a different needs, a single program suitable for all athletes is impossible. Training means engaging in activity to improve performance or fitness. This is the best accomplished by understanding general sports training principles overload, reversibility, progression, individualization, periodization, and specificity. Yes, now I'll go into my uh, title. Yeah, scientific skills and development with small side games of football players performance uh, study. Yeah, introduction already. Uh, football is a family. Football is a world game. Nearly 216 countries will love and play for their joy, for their country, for their everything. Football is a family of a team sports that involves to varying of degrees. Kicking a ball to score a goal, unqualified. The world football normally uh, means the forms of football that is most popular. Football has been a sport prominently played by men 
However, in the modern times, there has been a huge growth in, in, in the number of women participating in the game. Nationally and internationally, I've seen a significant growth in, in participants. Sorry, sorry. History. Modern football originated in Britain in the 19, uh, 19th, center, 19th century. Since before medieval times, folk football, actually it was called as Fort Bulgal games, had been played in towns and villages according to local customs and with the minimum of rules. Yeah, when it comes to Indian football history, the history of Indian football is from, from, bought from uh, army, like uh, Indian army. They used to play in, in Indian army. It was bought from Britishers, and it was a national sport at one time. Uh, and now it has been taken a, as a hockey. The impetus of this was to unify the Indian army. There is evidence of uh, referred team football games play, being played in the Indian army since as uh, at least in 1949. Uh, the, uh, in, India is ho home to some of the oldest football clubs in the world, right? Uh, we have seen uh, Mohan Bagan, uh, Kolkata. We have, we have plenty of uh, football clubs in Kolkata as well as Delhi, Goa, uh, elsewhere in India. Uh, and the world's the third last competition, the Durango Cup. There was a time when football India was highly celebrated in the Indian football or it was called Brazilians of Asia. And I like to uh, tell you that in Olympics, 1954 Olympics in Hyderabad, totally in Olympic team, Hyderabad football team was eight players in football team. That was a great to Hyderabad. Football was introduced to India by British already, I said, in the mid 19th century. It spread because of efforts of Narendra Prasad, Sadbir Kahai. In 1888, the Durando Cup was founded by then India's Foreign Secretary, Motorama Dorando and at Shimla in, in, at India. The Durando Cup is the third oldest football competition. This is what you can see the oldest uh, uh, pitchers uh, uh, Indian team in 1948, London Olympics. Indian team was participating in London Olympic Olympics uh, at the center of the years. Uh, this is what on the picture. And Indian team, at uh, Richard Park, London, in, with the barefoot, we don't have uh, uh, shoes to buy. That was a uh, situation at 1954, and India was disqualified from the Olympics because of barefoot. Association for formed association football, morally commonly known as football or soccer. In international level, it is called soccer as a part played between two sides of 11 players with a spherical ball. Football is the world's most popular sport already, I said. The object of football is to outscore your opponents. A goal is scored when the entire ball crosses the goal line. Between all, all these things, I'll be talking in a loss of beautiful game. Your rules and regulations. The match consists of two 45 minutes already, I said. First of uh, 40 minutes and the second of 40, 45 minutes. And with extra time, 15 minutes, if it is equally drawn, it gives a 15 minutes, 15 minutes. If side remains same as usual uh, draw, then it goes to penalty kicks uh, that occurs. Each time will each team will be taken a five penalty each. It scores a remaining level after both teams take the allotment of final penalties. Then it will be a sudden death. If all five teams were drawn, then it will decide on sudden death. Extra time and penalties tend to only occur in tournaments and not and comp competition. That is knockout tournaments not uh, out in a league ga game. League games will result in a draw. If it is draw, they'll give an each one one point. If it is if it is a uh, knockout amount, then the, the team will be decided if both the teams score the same amount of the goals. Yes, already I said that we had a beautiful loss in the beautiful game. There are 17 loss in the official laws of the game, each containing a collection of stimulation and guidelines the same laws are designed to apply to all levels of football, like juniors, seniors, whatever it may be. The laws are applied for all the games as the common. Although certain modifications for groups such as juniors, already I said, seniors, women, and people with a physical disability, and some modification at a, at a field. Yeah, we had uh, already I said uh, 17 uh, laws. The field of law, uh, the field of play, the ball, the players, the players equipment, the referee, the other ma uh, other match officials, the duration of the match, the restart and uh, start of the play, the ball in and out of play, determination, the outcome of a match, offside, false and misconduct, free kicks, the penalty kicks, the throw in, 
the goal kick, the corner kick. We had all 17 laws of the game. Yeah, this is what uh, the field of play, already I was talking about that. The field of play is, and I told you actually, football is called a field, not a court, not a ground. It's called a field. The field of play, the field ball match can match can take place at either natural or artificial grass or a turf or a layout. However, the surface must be a rectangular in shape and a green in color. The rectangle compresses two longer boundary lines called touch lines and two shorter lines called end lines or a goal line. The pitch is, is then split into two halves with a mod, midpoint called offline. The touch line in, in, the, in the field of line that is divided into 90 meters or max 120 meters wet. The, it's already as uh, wet and on the field. With the 45 meters maximum, the, yeah. Next, the ball. The ball should, should be in a spherical shape and must be made of leather. Uh, right now we had a many of uh, designs uh, uh, designs in the ball with the FIFA uh, approved. A wave, the ball wave must be at 410 grams to 450 grams. Uh, all the start of match and have a confirm and confirmation of circumference. I need to say that circumference of 68 centimeters to 70 centimeters. The ball pressure must equal to 0 0.6 to 1.1 atmosphere at the sea level. The match is stopped if the ball burst or restarted by a, a drop ball, where it was a burst or what it had a, a, a disturbance with the opposing players. Yeah. Next, the num number of players. A football match is played with the two opposing teams comprising 11 players, one being the goalkeeper. If other team has uh, fewer than uh, seven players, the game cannot start or cannot continue. Means minimum seven should be there with 11 members on the team. Team can use up to three substitutions, only a three substitution. There is no, again, there is no uh, uh, player, uh, in, even we do a substitution for one player, there is no chance to enter the same player into the field. Yeah, however, the same, some international players, fixes, some, some changes will be there. One substitution, a player can continue on to the pitch. Yeah, players on fourth, the players' equipment. This is very important for players' equipment. Players must not wear a jewelry or any item dangerous to uh, others because compulsory equipment, uh, this is a compulsory equipment like uh, shirt, jersey, short, or uh, mm, uh, knee, uh, shin pads, shoes, and uh, guards. Footwear, goalkeeper must wear disorganized colors because there should be a different color matching to the goalkeeper, other than goalkeeper from the other players and uh, referees. Yeah, next comes to referee. We had a plenty of, even I'm also uh, one of the uh, straight referee. And uh, the head referee uh, actually leads, uh, leads the game. They have a full authority and their decision is final. Referees are responsible for everything, ensuring the players have the correct equipment, keeping the time, signaling kickoffs and the end of the game. Punishing the rule violations, any stoppage in a play due to injuries or weather, deciding if a game can continue or not, a referee has a set of yellow card and red cards. If two yellow cards, that resembles to a red one red card. If one red yellow card is shown in one uh, game, that continues to the next game. And then if it is in the next game, if it's the same person gets yellow card, third, third game is not is not allowed to be a play. Yellow cards can be given to prevent repeated rule breaking or unstopped man like behavior if a player receives two yellow cards what i said this is the equivalent to a red one red card and he send off on the field from the field and he cannot return I mean, some uh, some uh, when we sit with uh, uh, all uh, 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 authorities yes next sixth law assistant referee the head referee has two assistants known as assistant referees the help, uh, they help the referee. When the ball leaves the field of play by showing which team is entitled to a goal kick, throw in or a corner kick. It, highlighting if a player is offside, if any incident happens out of the head of the referee's view. Means near the referee can't see all the field, 120 meters uh, and that is 90 meters. He can't see all the things. So he takes the help of the two officials. So that is called uh, uh, assistant referees. If a team requests a substitute, then the assistant referee only will deal with the uh, uh, substitutions. Whether the bro crosses the line at a penalty kick 
or if the keeper steps off his line before the player uh, kicks the ball, the head referee can overrule his assistant and always the final will be the final division will be the main referee. And the duration of the match, we have 45, 5, 45 minutes of, of time with uh, 90 minutes, I already said, 15 minutes break. And uh, if it is if it is equal, then we'll go with the 15 minutes, 15 minutes uh, uh, extra time. And then if, if it is also the same as uh, there is no goal, then we'll go with the penalty kick. If it is also the same with the penalty, five kick penalties will be given for each team. If it is also a same penalty kick, then they'll be go with the sudden death. That is one one. Yes, next. The uh, uh, start or restart the ball. How to start the ball? Task, task, task is there. Referee take a task and it, it, it give a choice for the players to choose ball or a side. So the game is started or restarted by kickoff that takes place. Kickoff takes place. When the match starts, after any goal is scored, again it will be brought to the center, uh, center of the uh, field. Uh, players can push pass back to the, any player or any thing or even shoot straight at the goal. Even when he starts from there, he can directly shoot, shoot onto the goal. What I said there, there is a task with the two players. The, the captain will be almost, the captain will be deciding the sides of the player or a kickoff. This is called a kickoff. And when it is uh, any uh, disturbance in the match, there again, how to restart means they'll take a ball and they toss the ball in here and then they'll decide for the one. When it is it crosses the touch line, in the touch card touch line, there will be a throw. That comes in next uh, slide. Yes, next law, the ball in and out of play. The ball is out of play when all ball crosses the line and the touch line. Yes, there is a lot of confusion in that. If it is on the line, on the line, it is it is in play. If it is touches the line, it is also in the play. The rule says the ball should cross the line. You can see the uh, figure in that how it is. Next, the determination, determination, the method of scoring, what is called determination of the goal is the determination of the goal. How it is scored? Yes, so many feels that. See the uh, line, uh, see the line. Mm, uh, the, this, is, this is not a goal. This is a goal uh, because the law says the whole of the ball should cross the line. The team can only score a goal by the ball crosses the goal line, underneath the crossbar and between the goal posts. The goal only counts if no other rule violation has taken place. The winning team is the team who scored the most goals. If the ball, both the teams are level, the final visual, then the match is drawn already, I said. And right now, by all this, seeing these things, the FIFA has decided to have a, a technology, goal line technology. On um, that have been uh, uh, presented a paper in international level by the uh, goal line technology in football. Uh, this is what a wonderful uh, technology draw. Totally, totally 14 to 24 cameras will be working on a goal. Uh, this is what that that goal, uh, the message is sent to the referee team with a single click. Next is, yeah, uh, this is offside, offside rule law. Offside law it says is one of the most debated rules in football. The player can stand in offside position if he is not interfering with the play. If he can stand, but he is not interfering the play, or he, 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 he will be not able to run or he will not be able to move. So the, he should not interfere the play. The player can, uh, uh, however, a player is outside if he crosses the opponent's goal line, then the this is what, this is what is the, this is what a offside. This is not an offside because somewhere he is uh, in, uh, you can see somewhere he is Stands, he's not moving, just he's standing. And this, 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 this is an outside. Is a is, is, this movement is other side. So this is not an offside. Yeah. Next, false and min misconducts of the play. See, there are so many falls in that. Uh, if we, if uh, uh, direct falls, like uh, uh, if we had a direct falls, referee can uh, uh, have uh, uh, this thing to send off or, uh, outside. However, excessive uh, force. Reckless. The most common faults and misconduct in football are kicking, tripping, and attempting to kick or trip on a point, charging an opponent, uh, like uh, sticking or pushing or uh, an opponent, spitting. Even they they'll spit on other players also. Uh, holding an opponent deliberately and handball, uh, handball. Yes, handball already seen. Where from where it is and handball. Uh, and even uh, only exception for a goalkeeper, he can. 
you can uh, handle a ball in only a goal penalty area only whereas there is a two areas that is penalty area and a goal kick area so he can handle to uh, with the hand in that area only he, 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 the, the ball must touch uh, another player before crossing that is opposing that is indirect they'll give an indirect kick or a, a direct kick depending on the infringement of the law free kicks free kicks already i said there are two types of free kicks indirect free kicks and a direct free kicks yes penalty kicks penalty kick is spotted in the penalty area where with the 12 feet along and uh, uh, if a defender commits a fall a fall play in his area own area attacking team are awarded a penalty kick the penalty kick is taken from the penalty spot the ball must be stationary and the player a penalty taker can score a direct from the spot the goalkeeper must remain on his line until the ball is struck all other uh, players beside the penalty uh, must be uh, away from a, a penalty spot means that is 12 distance uh, 12 feet away means 10 meter that's what 10 meters and uh, it comes to uh, outside of the penalty area next throw in throw in is another way to restart the match when whole ball crosses other touch line this is what an important touch lines means it's in a rectangle area which it should cross the touch lines not the end line and if the end line it is such as the end line that goes to a goal line uh, in next slide in next la i'll talk about the goal line uh, a throw in is awarded to the team who didn't do, did not touch the ball last the throw in is is in it must be taken from the ex- exact spot and the ball left the field of play the player takes the throw in must have both feet touch the ground see you can see this this is what an it should and the laws have been changed right now ball ball behind the head feet behind the line yes this is what an a correct uh, thing this is what uh, seeing somewhere and throwing is not right now and even if you lifting the hand uh, leg also it's an a fall this is what an a loss says and what i said uh, goal line uh, goal kick this is what an goal kick it touches the opponent's uh, ball so that it will take a, a goal line and a corner kick the if the same person touches the goal line then it decides to the uh, corner kick <clears throat> this is what all, all uh, about a beautiful game of a beautiful loss now i already was saying about a, uh, a technology that has been introduced by fifa war room war room is nothing but uh, that is assisting a referee it that <clears throat> right now the infringement sometimes it is what are happening is sometimes uh, there will be a more dangerous uh, fall by opponent player by players because if referee can't see with uh, all uh, running uh, in situation so they 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 can suggest the war room so there is a uh, like a third empire in cricket we right now these things are ca- came into existing uh, calling the third uh, referee and seeing into the uh, videos how it is happen and what is happen even even if if sometimes it gold is declared also the war room shows tells that if it is not gold then decides and go, go, they'll be getting the goal kick this is what on a war room and my objective of the study is the purpose of the study is to find out the training skills and development of a small side game on physical fitness physiological and skill related development on young football players and their performance yes because i have been working on uh, 14 to year, 22 years uh, uh, age group at kazipet uh, they had i am also a coach and i have been developed many football players and uh, uh, i'll show all the slides where i worked identifying the components of physical fitness and their importance in galactic games recognizing the train to train stage of the long term player pathway and focuses on player development implement practical ways to build fitness into games and skill development for young players it can develop players stamina cardiovascular fitness by incorporating small side condition games and high intensity ball trails in training session that's what i am going to say that if we if we include a small side games in football so definitely you can increase your cardiovascular strength agility physical fitness variables all the things you can develop next physical fitness is one of the most important aspect of football performance a skillful player will go along a way in the sport by without the fitness part of their game they will not be the competitive player of course this is what uh, i am saying about i am a coach over there and nearly 120 players were there at the grassroots level 
aerobic endurance fitness is one of the most important physical fitness attributes for football players players need to be able to maintain a high level of intensity throughout the 90 minutes game yes this is not a small side game this is a 90 minutes game with a stretch of 120 meters each player travels nearly 12 to 14 kilometers and even referee will travel to 15 16 kilometers per player at the high level uh, uh, tournaments another very important fitness component is anaerobic fitness which means running speed and particular repeat sprint ability players are also need a good ability strength a power and flexibility yes what i am saying physical fitness is the ability of human being to cope up with the environment over a longer period under maintaining pressure in simple terms we can say that is a person have to be physical fit to participate in any sport not only football we need a uh, fitness for basketball yesterday my friend was talking about the uh, uh, basketball game dr strikan he was saying physical fitness is a, a basic component for a sport to play any game and in this a, a very changing world the competition are being uh, stiffer and demanding therefore we have no pressure preparing the sportsman of tomorrow from today keeping the required physical standards in the mind now we must remember that all parts of human body have to given equal importance as they all very useful for the human body to remain fit example i can say that if there is a pain in the ear the whole human body uh, arches if you had a pain in the ear definitely whole body get arches and affects the performance of the player and the importance of uh, 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 this uh, fitness some experts say football is all about fitness of course definitely if you don't have fitness definitely you you will be using your game if you if you are very fit and even if you are fit also there is a, a mental training also if you are mentally strong definitely both mentally as well as physically you will be winning the game the potential duration of the game already i said 45 plus 45 15 plus 15 45 means 45 minutes is first half 45 minutes is second half uh, if it is draw 15 minutes and 15 minutes that is totally 120 minutes totally he has to play we can easily see the football players are in action for nearly two hours two hour fitness needed means if you train for three hours then only you will be getting a two hours training totally a two hours training a little more if they have to take penalty kicks definitely it increases your stamina if you have been a good physical fitness which is the most difficult part for all players when they are extremely tired maybe injured or un under a lot of pressure the diet of course diet swimming weight training rest endurance health and climate and physical structure of players is also important of physical fitness yeah fitness training requires what are the fitness training requires skill and technique speed quickness analytical and tactical ability ability balance and coordination motivation and self confidence coping with pressure situation reaction time aerobic endurance strength and power flexibility <clears throat> training fitness yeah training fitness regularly training is required for all areas of fitness this is what my students at a grassroots level where in kasbet we had a, a good stadium kasbet uh, railway stadium where we can we had a uh, training over there uh, the training should be directed to achieve a specific goal and to be individualized to maximize the physical capabilities of particular players in order to improve the physical load needs to be increased over time as the player gets fitter by using cross training and by incorporating fitness into training trails it will keep the condition in interesting and maintaining the motivation of the uh, players of course exercises to improve the football skills and techniques now before getting into the fundamental skills of football game it is important to prepare a muscles and body to cover the ground the pre exercise will improve the ability to accelerate and expose your football skills in the ground yes of course i have seen some slides with the exercises and technical skill like scientific training sports training is nothing but a, a scientific training this exercise like box blast this exercise to improve the explosive power means you can expose your legs that's madam by us talking about explosive power yes of course if you physiological madam by saying madhavi madam yes explosive power in your hips and legs to execute you perform the football skill in the ground this is all 
parametric training. It is important to create a separation from the opponent by slipping out and running with the ball, which is why box blast is prepared for exercises. Yeah. Yeah, already I was saying about talking one low, uh, this is what, how can we do uh, on a uh, low box, stand with one foot uh, flat and bend the time with the 90 degrees and low, look the ball, extending the hip, knee and uh, ankle exploded uh, jump uh, with the front, line, uh, front leg, leg in the same position back. Yeah, this is what an exercise is you in calves. This is very important. If you had a good calf, then only you will be have a, a good muscle power in that. Yes, it is important. Every see if you see the football players, if you see the Maradona, uh, how he looks, his legs with the full of muscles, with the full of calves. It is important to work out your calves before a football match. Calves strain, strain due to sharp, sharp twists and turns while executing football techniques. Of course, we will be getting a uh, strains over in matches. The cramps, if you do not do proper exercise or proper warm up before going into into the field. The basic rotation, third one is the basic rotation. This is one of works for your uh, whips and ankles supporting you in all troubleshooting with the coordination. Just uh, dragging back. Uh, this is a football ball exercise. We practice to improve your skills for football dragging. Means dragging, pulling a ball back or a, a, a friend. Uh, which are surrounded by other players. Ball master drill. This ball master exercise or football drill is a perfect one to enhance your football skill in the ground. Yeah, basic uh, basic skills. What are the basic skills of football? Basic skills of football. Jamie is not about to be a player, but to learn how to be a good football player. <clears throat> yes, of course, everybody is not in a football player because if you learn a proper uh, skills, uh, if you learn a proper skills, then you will become a, a good player. Football player, football being a strategical player, as to own techniques to execute a perfect kick. That's what there is a statical uh, play, tactical game. Uh, I will talk in next slides, tactics, what are the tactics, what are the techniques we use, what are the tactics and what are the strategical play. Uh, all, all these things will be, as we're talking in next slide, to execute a power kick, perfect kick. Some of you basic football skills are listed down. First of all, we should learn a blocking. How to block? A strong offensive capacity is basic a requirement, especially for those offensive players. This is where you blocking is for defenders. If I'm blocking starts from uh, 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 power players, then it comes to uh, off mid players, then it comes to the defender, then it comes to the goalkeeper. This is the basic skill of football that all offensive players should practice on. The offensive line opens the door of running what I said backs and prevents fast rushes from each reaching the faster. It's pa passing accuracy. There are so many passes, ground level passes, high level passes. Uh, every There are many of passes on that. The most fundamental skills of football game are passing accuracy. You need to pass accuracy. If you pass, the pass should be in a moving, moving way. To make use of both the feet in order to move the ball to designate at the designation. The feet should always have the power and accuracy to pass the ball, either to your opponent or to the striker of a ball. Passing skill is the one ultimate skill, and the football is devoted, uh, devoted of an accurate and precise passes. But right now, in nowadays, in nowadays uh, modern uh, football, uh, totally a uh, short passes were uh, introduced, and with this short passes only, you are getting more goals, not high passes or uh, high level uh, aerial passes. Only uh, ground passes are very working with this. With how do you learn uh, ground passes? Means futsal is the best way to learn passes. Futsal means five a side, six a side, seven a side game. Dribbling skill. The most efficient and best skill for football is dribbling. Of course, if you don't have a dribbling, different different dribbling skills, you, it is not possible to play a football. Dribbling is a very important uh, skill in football. Running with the ball. How do you run with the ball? Ball means one ball, one leg is on the ground, one leg is on the foot. You will be playing with one foot, you will be running with a run foot. That is the magic of a football. It is not as simple as it sounds. That's what I said right now. It needs a good control, balance and coordination to get a grab on it. Move up and down the pitch with the ball in processing and maintain your control. There should be a coordination between your leg and ball. This is what a neuromuscular coordination is required. 
where it comes to psychological muscle, a big muscular muscle thing is working, neuromuscular coordination, but like psychology, psychomotor skills is working. Neuromuscular coordination is very important in this type of skill. A good dribbler can move the ball in multiple directions with various pace. The skin is to the skill is to maneuver the opponent at a smooth pace without losing the ball's position. Of course, what I'm saying, right, trying to say is if you lose your position on the ball, then you lose your ball. That's what this is what you have need to coordinate with the running as well as controlling the ball. Yes, shooting. This is what an uh, uh, important, this is also an, a very important uh, skill where my student, uh, this is what my son is in front of it, uh, in learning a football. Uh, this is what an, a shooting skill. A perfect shooting always ends up in the four goal post. Of course, if you are being a perfect, 100 times shoots makes you one, one goal perfect. It means you need to practice one, one shooting skill at least 100 times. When we are in uh, sports shuttle at Sangareddy district, at uh, uh, Sangareddy, at Regional Sports Hostel in 1991. Uh, there where we had a plenty of balls and plenty of shooting were done. And even in Fateh Madam, that is called like my student, uh, there in the hostel, where we had a plenty of coach and uh, plenty of shootings and plenty of training over there. Shooting is the act of dispatching the ball to the opponent's post. This is the most, this is the ultimate trust of the match because at the end of the day, goals count your win, of course. Goalkeeper, if goalkeeper stands uh, in the same in, in the same uh, own game, if he lose, if he lose, leave the game ball, nothing will happen. If anybody do not score, nothing will happen. But the shooter, if he doesn't shoot, definitely you can't win. At the last, shooter has to shoot the game, Mick, because you need to have a perfect shooting. I'll tell you example of uh, one shooting free kick by uh, Roberto Carlos in World Cup. In, in the World Cup, the match between France versus and uh, Brazil in the World Cup final that was <laughs> had been taken a, a free kick. Everybody of a stand like anything. He been taken a banana kick that touched the goalpost and enter into the goal. Goalkeeper was Barthes. He was a number one goalkeeper in the world. But he, he looked stand and that goal entered into the goal. That was a great goal. That was that that much perfection should be there while shooting. Yes. Next is. The game of football is and it is not an easy already I said this is what on a basic skills dribbling shooting and tackling the game of football is not easy as we see it on the form of the gallery if you see the picture uh, that we see yeah, it is very easy we say that it is very to get the ball and to kick the post it is very difficulty without a practice without a, doing a, a practice with the ball players have to numerous tips and tacks in the field uh, one of them is tackling skills that's what I'm saying about the tackling skills. It is not mere running and carrying the ball and applying the shoulder, but the way you tackle the opponent. Tackling skills are necessary to carry on with the ball in your grip. Of course, <laughs> there are uh, plenty of tactics how to uh, take the player, how to uh, move from the player, and with the control of your ball so that you can win the ball. The basic way is to drive your shoulders, means moving your shoulders to the opponent, shift to the midsection before power, powering him to the ground. Make sure that while tackling, you do not end up making a full move, a fall move, or a red card. Sometimes it happens to a red card also because referee will be showing, but that will be a dangerous because the changes are high, chances are high. It's uh, receiving. This is what a uh, very important uh, skill. This is what a uh, basic skill receiving. There are plenty of receiving by thigh receiving, shoulder, uh, chest receiving, and uh, leg receiving. Uh, plenty of receivings are there. The, I am showing. Uh, uh, leg receiving. The ball receivers also include the goalkeeper, of course, how he catches, uh, how he holds, how he holds the ball, how he dives the ball. All this comes under receiving only. Receiving the ball is also one of the important and technical skills to acquire by every player, especially goalkeeper. He really should receive because goalkeeper will be catching nearly 120 miles per hour or 100 miles per hour. That much speed will be there in goalkeeping while he's doing a goal, goalkeeping. You cannot just catch the ball like a wide throw. Instead, you must extend the hands in front of your body and form a, into a target for the ball to land in it. Yes, now we are going to a tactic, technical skills. So what are the technical skills we do? Have? Why do we have uh, technical skills? Of course, what I said uh, in starting, there are many tactical skills and uh, technical skills. That is different from technical, uh, tactical, uh, tech, tactical skills. That's why I'm talking about uh, technical skills. The technical skills and uh, football skills and techniques are important to be practiced at 
The juggling is an important skill to be practiced. It helps us to possess easy control over the ball and ball handling skills improve. Practice juggling with your feet for five to 10 minutes every day to be proved. Because if you want to do practice with the ball, at least before entering into the uh, practice for 15 to 20 minutes, you can't control your ball. Yes, one of the technical skill is shooting. Shooting tips are yet another technique to improve your chance of scoring. The trick is to be up for a side shooting. Of course, you need to take a wall and you should have a practice over there for a more accuracy compared to other angles. The other point to be remembered to is to shoot by rather than high. Because if you shoot high, you can't reach your goal. It should be uh, at 45 degrees level. As you shoot low across the goalkeeper, but the chance of scoring is high and then the risk of blocking the goalkeeper is very really low. Yes, heading. Heading is one, one type of a technique to score a goal with the head. A major football technique essentially. This is this definitely where it will happen means heading where is the technique technique uh, heading technique is used is at a free kicks or at a corner kicks. This is what an a setup game. Uh, this uh, free kick as well as corner kicks. Shooting tips are yet another technique, what I said. The key uh, trick is to opt for a, a side shoot. You know, that's what uh, corner kick is as a make more accuracy compared to other ankle. Ankle. And it means, uh, the other point to remember to shoot wide rather than high. Uh, this is what I'm talking about uh, shooting. As a major football technique essential for both defending and marking, the heading is way of mastering the ball, all the presses and shooting in the field. This is used to a trick against the opponent by players in order to tackle the ball and the score. This is what I already have said. This technique is used as a as mostly in corner kicks and a, a goal, uh, 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 free kicks. And volley. Volley is uh, this volley is usually used in uh, direct kicks like a goal kick or indirect kick when the ball comes to direct over there onto the person and he'll be checking taking to the chest or it may be shooted by volley. Ball is a technique where a player directly strikes the aerial ball without having any period control over it and before the ball touches the ground. This is sometimes it, the volley take, has been taken as a banana kick, reverse kick. That is very dangerous, but sometimes uh, some players, with high players, definitely they'll be in a success. This is a super cool technique to be a good player in the field because the chances of defender are very low in such a move. Well, what the player needs is accuracy, speed, power, and coordinate to execute such a move. This volley is the most technique to be accurate by very few players because as you reduce the risk of defense, you are you in increasing the chances of scoring in the field. Yeah, defensive skills. The in, in, in defensive skills of is also one of the uh, technical skills. It is an important with the opponent. It is important to tackle the defense players in the field because they create they create a uh, 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 space, the shield shield for the goal, which with uh, an escape is necessary to you score. If a team has a strong defensive team with the, then the opposite team must have the best team with the defensive skill to tackle them and reach the destination. Yeah, feints. Paints nothing but a moving jug. When you open, when the opponent is dribbling the ball and you want to bypass him or to get for that position. <laughs> Yes, learning to play with the ball. This is one of the simple way to effective trick, trick and to dribble around the field with accuracy. Most of the players are good, best and strong foot, but in, ignore the hidden talent of their so-called weaker foot. First, we need to practice on weaker section so you can become a strong player. Once you are trying to concentrate on your weaker foot or a shoot, the result is just amazing. Dribbling with both uh, the feet are important to change the pace and position with the seconds of time in the field. There are some of the major football techniques and tactics which can be used in the field of to make the field uh, vibrant. Yeah, this is what a training session at my Kazi uh, pet. And uh, I already saying uh, there are dribbles, dribbling, dribbles, uh, drills by skills, dribbling skills. Uh, uh, this is what a dribbling, one is to one dribbling. Uh, dribbling starting off with uh, some dribbling skills. Uh, is a great way to warm up, whether to set up uh, some uh, cones or obstacles. Yes, cones or obstacles to work around it. Uh, dribbling drill around this 
teammates means with the same teammates you can practice to improve coordination to get head into the game these drills means this is uh, dribbling drills where we have shown in the dribbling drills uh, helps to close control the ball with a new uh, with well prepare of the match head uh, uh, both the sides of it and well as the uh, playing distance also and next comes to shooting this of course dribble and the shoot when when you are with the uh, opponent uh, with with mean with our cones dribble on the cones and one direct shooting that is called one direction dribbling or one direct shooting this is very very important uh, skill shooting skills and cross drills cross drills yes of course this is very important cross drills when one ball moving up, this is very important for uh, off to divide the ball because the two forwards will be running at the right side and the left side and one will be in the middle so you need to cross the balls to one, one left side or say a, or to a, a right side at the middle so this is very important at the cross drills head drills already i said but head drills this is what a head drills that comes to corner kicks or a, that goes to the free kicks or or uh, free kicks may, many may this head drill is very important for uh, uh, corner at corner time here yeah, tactical and drills here yeah, this is what an a very important where you can need a uh, st- uh, Uh, see your player, and you need to uh, um, pass accurately. This is very important. Stand and deliver because when you stand at a, at a particular place, and if you push the ball at the same place, then only you can reach the uh, good <laughs> passing ball. Yes. Next slide. Playing the through the thirds. Yes. This is very important. This is what all the tactics where you need to learn the shooting drills. This is very important. Keep. Two, three, four uh, goal areas and shoot at one one side. This is very important. Shooting drills, turn and score. This is what important. And ball control and frame footwork drill. This is what also a very important drill. That that is the skills. Yes, what I am right now talking about the tactical skills. This is what are important tactical skills. You what the there are uh, differentiate between uh, techniques and tactics. I'll tell you in the next slide because. Techniques, uh, tactics are you have to learn. Uh, technical skills have to be learned, but tactics. This is an aspect of play. Technical skills are the decisions and action of players and performers used to gain advantage in the game or competition. Example: serving to opponent's weak side, dummy dummy pass in football. Often tactics have to be adopted quickly in response to change competitive environment. Uh, this is what four, two, three, one. Uh, four is a defensive. Three is uh, uh, two is a forward, and one is a goal. This is what a very important uh, formation. The this is the uh, world football mostly they will be using this uh, tactics. And three is to five is to two. This is very important. When you had a good offen- offensive skills, you can use this uh, uh, three is to five is to two formation. This is very good formation uh, tactics. <laughs> So what I right now I'm saying, talking about the difference between technique and tactics in football is so uh, different. Uh, so while technique is uh, all about movement and skill, it does not take into account of opposition factor. That's what I'm saying. Technique is a different one. This is very tactics. I mean, tactics is a help that helps the player find the right position when moving either either and there in team because they make. Uh, Space uh, to get the goal, perform best in a situation that shows of the particular physical characteristics. Because if you move, if you move on one side, then only uh, the other move can happen. It does not then then that does not happens. That is what a tactics. Common football strategies that were long ball already. I'm saying about the strategies you have. A long ball strategy is the most basic tactic in soccer. The ball is moved from defense to attack in the most direction manner possible with a long range. Lofter passes often by passing by passing the midfielder. What all together the long ball strategy is most effective when the team possesses a tall and a physical strong forward or a striker. This target man uses the height of and strength to go the up uh, the long ball. Or this is the best example for Cristiano Ronaldo mm-hmm. because he is the best striker in the world and he is the best forwarder to receive all long ball goal balls position. Position so score in position of soccer is a strategy designed to give a team greater control of the game. A short composite passing system is used often combined with a slow tempo to gain the opposition position of the ball. 
position soccer is a highly technical strategy running uh, requiring skillful players and a good team awareness on the field yeah counter attack is another uh, tactic because when all the opponent players come to the uh, uh, goal area then suddenly you need to attack counter attack that counter attacking is so score soccer can be very effective particularly for team with fast attacking players a counter attack is launched as soon as an opposition attack is stopped out the defending team is tugging forward is an, an attempt to catch the opposition off guard yeah wing play this is what i said in a center for mid for midfielders wing players are very important uh, um, uh, in uh, in the making a score, score. Uh, wing, wing players is statistical that focuses upon playing the ball wide down both sides of the field. There are two main reasons why this strategy should be implemented. Firstly, team in the position of the quick and talented wingers means both the sides, left and right talenters should be a wide midfielders. May wish to give these players more of the ball in order to maximize the effectiveness. Secondly, a coach... Mm -hmm. A weak in this opposing defense that should be exposed by the attacker down the wings. Yes, of course. If the if the coach identify a weaker section, then only the main player goes into the guides the uh, player coach guides the player to go that area and get the place or get the score. The overlapping overlapping what I said that is also a very a tactics uh, uh, skill. The overlapping strategy is a stay, style of wing play. Wide defenders know the full backs are given permission to get forward and attack by advancing up and field and overlapping the wide midfielders or wingers. According to Jens Bansberg and Barber Peter Russell in, offense, in offensive soccer tactics, the overlapping is used mainly in the opposite opposition's half of the pitch and is an effective weapon for creating depth and width in attacking play. Other players need to cover for the defender when he attacks. Closing down, closing down when closing completely when up, uh, when the uh, all the players come outside, come when they comes out on the uh, opposing players. Closing down and shutting down is a defensive strategy. It is high pressure for a defensive option. Compelled, apply, appealed, uh, applied to all parts of the field. When opposing teams have opposing opposition for the ball, the defending players will close it down immediately. This can unsettle the opposition. Giving them a little time to choose their paths. Offside trip. This is this is what one of the a tactical technique that need uh, to find uh, uh, defenders. This uh, offside tri trap is a defensive strategy and has a little influence among, upon a, a team's attacking play. Uh, as described by Robin Jones and Tom Tant and his soccer strategies, defensive and attacking tactics. The defenders step upon in front of the opposing forward when appropriate to. Thus, standing the letter in our offside position. Yeah, already I was talking in the offside uh, law that shows this strategy relies upon good area organization. If one defender fails to advance with the rest of the back line, the opposing attacker may not be caught in an offside position, leading to be a clear goal scoring opportunities. Yes, right now I'm going to come into the small side games. What are the small side games? How it will be developed? And how it will develop the performance of the players and their physiological uh, variables. Even if they, they can develop physiological variables as well as physical fitness variables also. Although seen many as a modern approaches right now, uh, modern uh, football or modern soccer are approaching or practicing the small side games have been used in since 1960s. Of course, the best way to coach the skill, key skills and uh, uh, skills and techniques to younger players. This is what uh, we can uh, develop with the uh, skills. Uh, we can develop uh, small side games with the uh, uh, skills or what else. Uh, the four, like four is to four system. Uh, this four is to four system accelerates development of te technical ability and game intelligence. And the four, uh, four is to four system is about to solve problems. The player respond to area you have marked out of them. All the elements of the real game are there up there then to understand, yes, this is what one of the uh, best four is to four or two is to two, because we, we as a coach, we provide a number of balls to them when they lose the ball. We, when, they, when they lose the ball, we provide balls and they'll tell them to go with the ball because we give them time. In one minute, they have need to score in four is to four or two is to four. This is very difficult. They can learn a number, even they can learn passing, dribbling, shooting, every what not, everything they can learn in small side. Games. And what right now I'm saying about two versus two, 
two versus small side game to maintain a position yes this this creates this creates a position in the main game it creates a space in the main game that shows them they can drag the players they can uh, bring the players to the other side they can drag the players they can show the space where we need in the small side games players have to keep a position for the team and pass the ball to teammates standing outside the uh, pitch this is what a figure that shows a beautiful uh, pictures of four side four in a small area uh, you can use this small area and you can have four is to four or two is to two to show your yeah, two is to two in a, having with uh, uh, cones aside uh, with uh, cones here and you can use this dribbling basis and uh, dribbling as well as shooting uh, and uh, all the skills you can learn and uh, this is what the pictures shows and the triangle triangle of a game mm, is very important uh, uh dribbling shooting and defending the game uses three players and aims to improve attacking and defensive skill by focusing on dribbling and shooting close down space with the four is to four what i am just talking three in one soccer coaching session this is what this is the transition soccer game which gives your players excellent workout with one is to one Two is to two and four is to four. It is their three games on the same pitch. The empires moves from individual skills to teamwork and company communication. Yes. Yeah. With the small side games, I can tell you that I have been uh, worked from long time with the small side games, and I have been uh, and I have I have prepared a paper. effect of small side games on physical and physiological character of young football players at barangal and they have have presented this paper in an international conference on exercise physiology and nutrition for enhancing health fitness and sport performance organized by department of exercise physiology and biomechanics at tamil nadu physical education and sports university on 5th 7th march 2019 and have been awarded with the best paper because this is an a practical thing where we can uh, uh, improve our ourselves as academist as well as as a a, a practical coach also uh, have been uh, presented and have been uh, worked on this and uh, this is what a slide shows my uh, presentation this is what uh, the uh, 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 conference where it is held this is what a certificate that shows best paper award for me yeah in my uh, discussion young players need to develop what are the what the what they need to develop they need to uh, a training program they need a training program uh, to develop and improve physiological abilities affecting physical fitness and to generalize and adopt them with the football skills during a match these physical fitness and physiological factors depend on not only on intensity of play but also on the direct involvement in activities with the ball in small side games training causes more involvement with the ball and more opportunity to perform skills like passing kicking controlling dribbling for the players it can improve and develop physical fitness and physiological abilities and adopt them with the football skills during the match and that a small side games training could lead to enough stimulate for physiological adaptation and the physical fitness of all players can be replaced by changing the playing area encouraging players and changing number of players in each training training session that's what i need to tell you that if you have if you if you improve if you give a small side games to the children at a younger age by changing strategies like 2 is to 2 to 4 versus 4 3 versus 3 5 versus 4 definitely they can increase their physical fitness they can increase the skills related uh, skills health uh, skill related and uh, football skills tactical training everything they can be trained and in my conclusion yes football play, football performance is depend on multitude of factors of course all right said not only a physical factors definitely you need to mentally strong mentally strong and physically strong so that you can be and uh, uh, you need to have a technical strategy also that de definitely that leads to a good performance technical skills playing tactics and endurance capacity are known to be have a major influence on match performance it can conclude that a significant improvement on physical physiological and performance related variables such as physical fitness variables such as speed agility endurance vital capacity breath holding pulse rate dribbling passing and receiving because 
already as a physical fitness components are compulsory and that leads to physiological development and that leads to improve your skills technical skills whatever the skills it may be that definitely improves uh, uh, in a small side games training program be an effective training program for developing the physical fitness physiological and performance skill related variables training means already i said beginning training means engaging in an activity to improve performance like fitness this is the best accomplished by understanding general sports training principles overloading reversibility progressibility and individualization periodization and specificity with this all references i say big thank you i thank you professor b sunil kumar garu giving me given me a great opportunity to share my views on effective of on scientific development uh, with the small side games of football performance this is what yeah. thank you thank you very much thank you sir and uh, i would like dr raja rao and uh, dr shyam mohan ready to give their valuable inputs if they are present okay very nice uh, uh, lecture by this uh, nalal sinwas sinwas really i observed that your development resource as a resource person really what the sinwas earlier right what the sinwas right now it is given a good information informatic uh, this thing about the football really good ma i appreciate your efforts by organizing this along with this uh, sunil earlier earlier also you are organized a one a webinar uh, this is the workshop or webinar okay good thing this is a workshop workshop workshop, workshop. 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 sunil very nice sunil namaste namaste okay any other participants any clarifications required in this moment ma participants you can raise your doubts to clarify yeah, with our resource persons dr nalal sinivas or uh, otherwise I, i have to appreciate the sinivas guru sunil also <laughs> for giving us such a training <laughs> reach he is a is a is a engine to me okay okay <laughs> uh, but anyhow good good ma very how uh, we appreciate your efforts towards the organizing of this uh, webinar workshop and also the your efforts towards the as a resource person united uh, about uh, this uh, football the rules and regulations of the football really we are we are observing here lack of grounds people are unable to participate in a football area uh, now the recently what we are observed the in the cities also in a roof called roof they are preparing the the football seven uh, uh, a side or five a side grounds people are attracting towards that side slowly we have to give a such a scope to participate in a football yeah you rightly said sir uh, it's more like a five a side a second a side or a six a yes, side yes yes that's what that we had agreed improves i can tell you one example these international players definitely they play a small side games because yes. they need to have a control on the ball so mm -hmm. they play a small side games and then they show their good performance in mm -hmm. uh, big like a yes, uh, yes, so yes. soccer game yes, okay good in city recently the the box cricket box volleyball box uh, uh, football yes, the seven a side players developed as such a way that in a roof gardens a roof uh, also sir you are muted sir sir sham sir you have been muted sham sir we are unable to hear you Mute yeah, good. 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 Yeah, Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you very okay. much for your uh, elaborated. Uh, no, no, no. We have to appreciate okay. the uh, people thank like you, you that uh, uh, encouraging 
for all the directions actually we can say that you are a junior to me but you are engaging no, the junior and uh, the great appreciation uh, sinivas thank you sir sir sunil kumar sir sir anyhow we uh, okay university college of engineering given a good platform thank okay you, thank, you. thank you thank you second any from the room side <coughs> any other thing sir, sunil ha sir, sir. Ah, sir okay sunil can sir bolo sir sir abhi yeah yeah you can uh, now you can tell about our program how many participants are there here ah, so very thankful to you all chairperson and uh, especially thank each and everyone who are to present here see uh, our concept is uh, sham monit sir because the yes, sharing sir. and caring that is yes sir yes sir that's good we have to put in uh, knowledge hub so we are to fulfill we are build it each and everything okay so, yeah, given a platform that to express yes, all yes, the yes, views yes sir very good so whatever you know you know we are not at all able physically meeting from the last two years for any yeah, yeah, occasion yes sir <laughs> that's all i'll take care previously only the one day uh, that is the seminar but now we got workshop so workshop for three days uh, each and every uh, one uh, to uh, take the knowledge particularly yes, what sir. is the update going on got because the lack of gap is coming to each and every one that is thank our answer okay thank you once again sunil and sinvas <laughs> and other organizers those who are in a room participants we appreciate your patience also to huh? bearing this all the one and a half hour okay thank you once again thank you very much sir, thank you sir i request uh, uh, professor malesham sir are you there sir malesham sir malesham sir there yes i am here sir thank you yeah, yeah thank you very much sir for joining us uh, can i move on to the last session sir yes uh, madam yes, uh, then madam see we don't yes, have a lot of time we'll go with the validity okay we'll go straight away to the validity sir yes yes okay so, fine sir fine sir Okay. Uh, just a minute. Just a minute. I want to speak with Rajesh. Wait, just a minute, madam. Yes, sir. Rajesh. Hello, 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 sir. Mike. No, no, no. मैडम तेन मैडम यस सर सर प्लीज गो ऑन या आई एम गोइंग टू द आई एम स्ट्रेट अवे गोइंग टू द वैलिडिटरी सर यस 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 या ओके सर Uh, we conclude the two-day national e-workshop on training development of sports and games orientation program organized by the Department of Physical Education, University College of Engineering, Usmania University, in collaboration with Badruka College through a valedictory program. Today we have three guests for the closing ceremony, and I would like to introduce them to our eminent speakers and wonderful participants, Professor Sushil Kumar. HOD Physical Education University College of Engineering Osmania University who needs no introduction as he has been with us throughout the two day workshop we welcome you sir sunil sir professor rajesh kumar principal ucp osmania university hyderabad also uh, will be uh, is also another one of our eminent guests and i would like to give a short introduction about our guest for the valedictory Sir has obtained his bachelor's degree, master's, and doctoral degree in physical education from Osmania University. Has a diploma in sports coaching and athletics from Sports Authority of India. He is presently working as a chairman and principal, Department of Physical Education, Osmania University. He has held many administrative positions in Osmania University and Kakatiya University. Sir is the president of International Federation of Physical Education, Fitness and Sports Science Association and Secretary General. 
He has published and edited seven books in the international conferences in London, China, Turkey, etc. He has received many awards like IFP, FSSAIN to 2018. He is the chief editor of International Journal of Health, Physical Education and Computer Science in Sports and Asian Journal of Physical Education and Computer Science Sports. Sir is also editorial yeah. member and reviewer of many yeah. international and national yeah. journals. Well, we welcome you, sir. And the third, um, the third chief guest of for the validity program is Professor G. Malaysian, Dean Development and UGC Affairs, Osmania University, Hyderabad. I would like to introduce our chief guest for the validity program. Sir has 20 years of teaching experience and industrial experience. He has done his post doctorate at A University in IIT Delhi, both PhD and MTech. Sir's area of interest is soft software computing application to design renewable energy power system control. Sir has won many awards, grants, and honors to his credit. Has many administrative experience in university, like convener, special officer, member of the governing body, member building advisory committee, etc. Was general and organizing secretary. Sir was a reviewer of IEEE IET International Journal of Electronic Power Energy System has conducted, organized, and coordinated workshop training programs. Many research publication is credited to serve. Foreign assignments with visit to many countries like Canada, USA, Finland, to name a few. Sir was a reviewer and organized guest lecturers and workshops and represented Andhra Pradesh and participated in many national level cross-country athletics. And um, Sir has 40 publications, both international and national, journals to his credit, wrote three online books and three patents to his achievement. Presently, Sir is holding the position of Dean Development of UGC Affairs, OU Hyderabad. Now, I request Professor Sunil Kumar to give the valedictory speech. Sir, you're muted. You're muted, Sir. Thank you, Dean Madam and Dr. Nalala Sinwas and uh, our team on behalf of Rajesh Sir, Badruka Kole, the Mohan Sir, each and everyone who are to support us because is our concept is only we are to workshop to sharing and caring. We are to share the knowledge. So update the knowledge. So again, we will be planning uh, going to uh, three months or six months is the half plan. We have to planning. So definitely we have to do because it's a, we are you cooperation is the most important. And I respect to all each and everyone, uh, especially the Malaysian sir, who are to present here, and Rajesh sir and myself, each and everyone, Dr. Nalala Sinwas and uh, Manoj, each and everyone who are to present, especially I very uh, thankful anchoring Ten Madam, really do uh, <laughs> wondering. Because it's a very tough job, you know. She is uh, sitting is more than a six hours, not a is a ordinary task. So though she is uh, fulfilled and very 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 happy. And uh, view of this, uh, after the vote of thanks, uh, please uh, uh, go through the chat box link and fill your detail for key certificate. Once again, I repeat, please go through the chat box link and fill your detail for key certificates. So thank you each and everyone who are present here wholeheartedly on behalf of again in my esteemed team. Thank each and everyone listening, caring, and sharing. And be happy. Santosham Purti Balam. Santosham Gaunte Purti Balam. So in our concept, previously they had to say that Santosham Sagam Balam until But now it's a trend in change. Santosham Purti Balam. Arogya Mahabhagyam, Santosham Gaundala, Happy Gaundala. That is our concept. That is our concept. When we were in the VPA school, we were in the VPA school, we were in the VPA school, Professor Venkatesh Lusar. You are very good. Your job is very good. That means you are a double sambhasana. So really, really it is very good because you are a double sambhasana. That means we are also doing education too. Education too. And uh, fitness would ask no more. So that each and everyone, we have to write, we have to go for a brisk walk is uh, 30 minutes each and every one. That is my 
uh, especially uh, to Mrs. Tuam. And thank you, one and all. Uh, give me all uh, patience and reasons. And uh, next, madam. Yeah, thank you, sir. Now I uh, request Dr. N. Srinivasan to give the validity speech. Yeah, thank you, madam. Uh, good, good afternoon, sir. I welcome uh, Professor G. Malayashangaru, uh, Dean Development and UGC Affairs, Usman University. Thank you, sir. From last two days, we have been on e-workshop, sir. I need to give uh, some information what the deliberation has been gone from last two days. First, we had an uh, inaugural session at 10 o'clock by the Chief Guest, uh, Professor B, uh, Professor Lakshmi Kantarathu. Uh, and uh, then we had a guest of honor, uh, Dr. B, Mohan Kumar, Principal of Badruka College. Uh, then the session starts with uh, uh, B, Sunil Kumar, sir, Professor B, Sunil Kumar, with the latest trends in physical fitness. And the second session, we had a wonderful man in Hall India, um, <clears throat> same person, that is Professor George Abraham, YMCA uh, principal, <clears throat> YMCA College of Principal Physical Education, Tamil Nadu. He has been deliver delivered a good lecture on uh, sprints, athletics. And we had one more coach. For second session, we had one more coach, Ratan Bose. He had been talking about the training methods. That was wonderful. Right now, we knew you, we need to have a, a training session, a training methods. And after that, we had a Nasima Yadav, <coughs> Dr. Nasima Yadav. He had been uh, talking about a uh, Koko a chase, uh, <coughs> indigenous game with a good physical fitness. That is Indian game. He, he has been talking about a uh, uh, Koko. And we had a, uh, another speaker, uh, Dr. K. Sridhar Reddy. He was talking about a table tennis uh, performance in first Kelo India University. Uh, this is what it happened on day one, sir. On day two, uh, uh, and one more uh, day, on day one, we had uh, Dr. Uh, E.B. Srikant. He will be talking about the basketball training methods and development and performance of players. He has been given a good uh, session uh, on basketball training methods as well as the basketball players. And day two, we started with uh, uh, Swati Madam, uh, psychologist uh, in head science, uh, head of Usmani University. She has been talking about the psychological skills and their sports performance. She has been uh, good, given a good delivery. She has been given a good message for the sports persons. How to keep mental, uh, mental attitude, mental uh, performance, how to maintain a mental performance at the higher level. And we had another speaker, Srinivas, who has been a yoga expert. And he was a wonderful and he was amazing among throughout the uh, his lecture. That was wonderful. All have seen. Uh, in chat box, that was wonderful, sir. He has been given a good uh, uh, examples with uh, yoga postures. That was wonderful, sir. After that, we had a, th a third session. Uh, Professor M. Madhavi, she was talking about a sports physiology. She has been talking about a muscular um, fibers with the small stitch fibers and slow stitch fibers. And she was talking about uh, endurance with uh, uh, explosive strength that gives biometric training. That was marvelous, sir. And, uh, and the last of uh, my session was there, uh, Dr. Srinivas Nalala, it's myself. And uh, we have, have been delivered with uh, scientific skills and development of small side games of football players and performance. That was this session, sir. I welcome you, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Tanya, madam. Thank you very much. And I also thank Prof. Uh, Mohan Kumar Gadu, principal, uh, director of uh, 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 principal of Badruka College. Thank you very much for giving the uh, great platform for us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, to uh, truly conclude this highly informative workshop, today week workshop, I request our chief guest, Professor G. Malaysian, to address the participants. Sir. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, very good, okay. good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Namaste. I'm uh, very happy to uh, happy to listen the updates of uh, update from uh, Srinivas. Sir, thank you, sir. Uh, after listening to your updates, I thought you know you should have attended at least one uh, session in your uh, you know workshop. Sir, sir. So yeah. So again, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, respected uh, and uh, convener, uh, Professor Suril Kumar. Head of the Department University College of Engineering, Usman University, and his co-coordinators, 
yes uh, after uh, from shrinivas i heard that there are excellent uh, uh, resource persons you have identified and uh, the participants uh, who are here for attending this two day workshop that is on training and development of sports and games that is orientation program i really happy first of all i i my heartfelt uh, and uh, thanks to and thanks and gratitude to professor sunil kumar sir and he invited me as a chief guest of this valedictory function and uh, organized in collaboration with in badruka college of uh, commerce and arts so it's very nice sir and also <clears throat> the topics which are covered are wide range and uh, it's all, all are interesting and up to the present scenario and uh, modern style of life and uh, that all that is uh, some of them when i was going through the brochure that is latest trend in physical fitness athletics chase up chase up game that is coco kabaddi table tennis basketball and uh, and also you are address the uh, psychological skills and also sports performance and uh, and uh, and the yoga so these are very good topics you have taken sir and uh, i wholeheartedly congratulate you sir as a convener uh, professor thank you sir thank you sir. sir and co conveners dr shrinivas uh, mr rajesh and mr manoj kumar and then babulal and your team for successfully organize this uh, two day workshop and yes sir uh, i start with a small incident happened uh, recently a few days ago uh, i was talking to one of my friends and he was sad and uh, stressed about his son saying that you know his son went into depression and uh, put on weight for you know almost 100 and plus around 150 kilograms and he took uh, him to his uh, son to all the doctors across the city and uh, psychologists but uh, if you you know uh, if you see the solution or advice from all the doctors if you see for not only that child but all our children and also for all of us uh, that means everyone the solution they gave is please put them in a sports and games that is the only solution the doctor advised and encouraged him to uh, you know play maximum sports we give medicine and some kind of advice but the, those are only temporary but the permanent solution is only to have a physical activities means the physical as activities nothing but a sports and games so the solution for this uh, depression or failures obesity stress and uh, stress because of so many expectations right and competition among us and uh, not able to handle at work pressures and all etc so this is all for you know only thing is you have to take out some for some time in a day and play some sports and games that nothing only that's only solution there is no other way this is only the best way to relax yourself and keep yourself fit i at this juncture i must thank my teachers my school teachers and my physical education teachers sri narayan reddy garu in my school uh, my school days who used to teach us the physical education uh, all the games and sports and unfortunately we don't have any teacher in my intermediate and then my in engineering when i was doing my graduation in osmo university college of engineering professor uh, p venkareddy sir and also the rajesh sir uh, is a principal now university college of physical education osmo university these are all my teachers and my gurus and who helped me to you know mold myself and uh, the reason for what i am today is physically or mentally so i i must mention it at this conference level they are the, my best sports people in my life and many say if you don't get any prizes or medals or fame the uh, sports are waste of time but uh, as per my knowledge but everybody have to accept that is absolutely no today i am in this position as a dean development and ugc affairs in usman university such a big university at this age, at a small age i can say i got just because of my activeness that activeness i got it from only sports and games nothing else even today if i get a time i even today i run a minimum 5 kilometers without stopping and if i don't get a time i do uh, skipping at least 1000 or 2000 if i don't get a time so this is what i keep myself fit and you know uh, active so 
as a you know the sports are you know very important to all of us uh, for our uh, for our entire life many of us you know we do not focus on health and fitness we always think about work and work and you know it leads to finally stress and then causes laziness so if you take as a student or in if you as employee you have to ha- handle so many challenges in the, in your place and you should be a very responsible person it may be you know job or you know uh, any job or work it's not as smooth as what we think or what we imagine so you have to work in teams and you have to connect with every socially with others handle pressures and you have to accept the losses the way you know sometimes always you know it's not always a successful life so you have to accept the losses and balance even winning winning also we have to balance at your workplace as well as in the society so this is this is our part of life and this can be only learned and practiced only from sports and games nothing else there is no other option so this kind of characteristic we get only from the sports and games so when so just i know you all are sports persons i know that but just i'm sharing from my thoughts so when you normally play a game or anything i, I that to we play in a, you know in a team on practice and we coordinate each other we we put the time table we call them if anybody missing we so so much of thought process we do it and understand them and those person they can we we'll also identify their talents we try to encourage them sometimes we lose then what we do no we we tell our you know challenge them kelo hum aur ek bar khelenge so let us play one more time so that kind of attitude will come or we write we try to request or or ask them so we'll we'll play we'll again we play next time and you know we'll see that we'll be who will win that so this kind of attitude will come so in that's only possible this with only sports and games so that otherwise you know if you don't have this sportsmanship in your uh, in your you know attitude then this is this kind of what we heard from children you know they will take extreme steps and also you know uh, the students will take you know they go to depression so called uh, all the things so this uh, the sports and games are you know it's uh, really useful and meaningful to our you know uh, social relationships and uh, happiness and many more and uh, nowadays if you see if anybody says that you no know, sports and games are fitness first thing thing comes in our mind is that gym uh, you know it is comes in our mind is gym that is with you know strong and muscular man, man or men women so the, the the sports and games or you know fitness mean doesn't mean a gym it need not be you should go to the gym and do it's not that is wrong you anything you can play you can take play indoor games or outdoor games any small things even playing with your kid without any uh, any kind of in any ball games or anything we, that is also called as sports so sports is uh, you know that should we have to uh, take out and uh, sports and uh, the we all call whenever and also one more thing it comes on comes is the sports and games means we talk about only competition no it is not only competition it is not a sports and games is not a competition at all it is the platform to showcase our talents keeping us healthy that is the mental and physically and also it also helps us in you no know, practice and goal setting and having about fun being physically active improves our thinking ability and building coordination in the team works and also gives us self uh, self confidence patience and zeal to you know play again and again and sportsmanship to accept everything and uh, finally to excel ourselves academically or professionally or socially and most importantly what i feel it is my personal opinion and it, a true sports person will see everyone equal no religion no region no caste only talent matters only talent matters that's what the true uh, sportsman person will feel and i was when i was reading you know about the sports i frequently read and recently i saw one quote that is uh, direct jeter a uh, baseball player there are many people that have they have more talent than you but there is no excuse for anyone to work harder than you do this is very true for everyone even we should sometime we also feel sometime that you know there are many talented person better than us but still we are performing and we are doing better than others and reason for that is only the hard work 
and that hard work will only can learn from learn and practice from own sports and games because sports and games all gives you only the you know this uh, characteristic of hard, hard work no other thing okay and uh, i also ask i uh, know that's why uh, because the eminent people are over here and i request all of you to encourage uh, sports and games in your institutions and take out for time for yourself and as well as to your family and uh, for this sports activities and keep everybody you know physically fit and uh, you know sound before i close uh, you know i wanted to uh, congratulate this you know uh, recently participated uh, all indian players in tokyo olympics so we have got you know in seven uh, medals one gold uh, uh, one gold two silver and three bronze and also para olympic also they have got around uh, 19 medals i think out of them five gold six silver and uh, uh, six bronze yes in fact we all feel proud sir we all feel proud uh, about indian players when they are in a international level so any irrespective of any game we always feel and excited so but still i have a dream still i have a dream like you know uh, a country of you know 1.2 billion people 1.2 billion people but we are not performing well at international level and we have to think a lot and we have to uh, you know um, uh, take some activities to encourage talented people especially uh, from the villages because the villages you know uh, i was in the us uh, and i was in a finland finland was a small country and if you see the i was in a remote uh, you know in a, in a remote place where the village is having all facilities that is we don't even find in hyderabad we call so called not even hyderabad in delhi also we don't find that such kind of you know facilities so that kind of you know facilities there is no question of getting the facilities in now in the cities cities are in every small in, in small part of the land also become very costly so this sports and games should you know distribute and go to the towards village levels and village people also only they give that they give the maximum extent of you know contribution to the sports and sports and also not only that that coming to the infrastructure that is very very important that is to be you know uh, improved and we try to get the projects for the uh, you know yes uh, thanks to our uh, professor lakshmikant rathod sir and uh, all his team who brought the kelo india project of worth of 12 crores for you know uh, for improving the you know usman city uh, facilities such kind of project should uh, everybody should think of and uh, we should increase the you know uh, infrastructure uh, related one and uh, yes uh, the, there was, if i compare with when i was student in usman university uh, when i was i was represent usman university and i also national sir uh, twice but the facility when i compared with my days and present days not much difference as in either i can say that the a grounds is much worse than the you know previous so yes we all have to focus on them and improving this uh, facilities and uh, yes sir uh, uh, sunil sir and all is your team and uh, thank you very much for given me this opportunity as a part of your this program and uh, to express my views with you all and uh, thank you thank you each and every one for this opportunity given to me thank you thank you sir thank you professor malle sir really so really अरे दिल से कुछ बोल नहीं सकते हम मगर हर चीज से बोल सकते हैं सो रियली यू आर चीफ गेस्ट रियली इज अ वंडरफुल बोले थे ना सोने पे सुहागा है सोना तो है है सोने के ऊपर सुहागा है मल्ले साहब रियली इज अ यू टू ऑल एंगल्स और मल्ले सर इज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इज आवर फैमिली मेंबर नंबर 1 एंड इज अ वेरी गुड बैडमिंटन प्लेयर एंड वेरी गुड एथलेट and we are, we uh, we remember sir malle sir we have to start from to engineering college to arts college for walk and jogging and running yes yeah sir. yeah yeah i remember that what were you saying because you only one to take a platform only o u engineering college whatever is actually going on under only the malle sir so this is a walk walk suppose if you do the walk sir uh, build of health and a walk if you do you uh, build your health jog for build up fitness and running is build up competition these these are three layer we have to go for but fitness is build up happiness build up happiness and overall uh, overall development of our body sir 
Yes. So really, uh, uh, we are your teacher and your valuable suggestion to give and uh, Hello India project also under you, sir. Really, you have to more supporting, uh, definitely be fulfilled, sir. And uh, you are saying is uh, sort of high ground and all this, sir, because it is not under control because it's uh, uh, Corona. It's a uh, two years, very difficult. And manpower, they never to, uh, means is manpower also is very fear. Particular, they never took a ton up uh, to uh, college and all this. Stuff. That's the drawback, sir. So next time, definitely, after the after the complaint, hai, kabhi bhi complaint nahi hai, sir, dekhi hai, or happy thank you, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, madam, uh, then madam, regarding to sir. Sir, shall I propose the vote of thanks? Oh, no, 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 I, I want to talk, madam. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, chalo, like talk. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Ji, Malaysian sir, Garu. You have given a good uh, knowledge and being a sports person and being a, a sports lover, uh, you, have, you have had a, a great knowledge on uh, physical education as well as on sports. Uh, because you've been a sports person, you are going for a, a 5K run daily and you are maintaining a good physique. That, that shows that um, in, in, in immense you, uh, thing that you had uh, towards physical education. Thank you very last, much, sir. Last week and, I did 50 kilometers, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's great, sir. That's great. And one more thing, we we are on not only a competitor for, uh, but we we make all to participate in events, sir. That's a great. You have given a great, wonderful uh, message, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yes, yes, sir. I'll okay, sir. On uh, it is a great honor to propose a vote of thanks for this two-day workshop. On behalf of the Department of Physical Education, University College of Engineering, Osmania University, and Badruka College, it is my privilege to propose a word of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of those of the organizers who worked hard to make this two-day national e-workshop on training development of sports and games orientation program a success. I also sincerely thank the Almighty God for making the two-day e-workshop possible. On behalf of the organizers, once again, from the Department of Physical Education, University College of Engineering, Osmania University, and Badruka College, my sincere thanks to our chief guest for the inaugural ceremony, Professor Lakshmikant Rathod, and the chief guest for the valedictory ceremony, Professor G. Malaysian, for gracing this online workshop in spite of their busy schedule. Thank you, sir. I thank all the speakers for gracing your crucial work and sharing with us your information and knowledge. I would have loved to take all the um, resource persons, but Srinivas sir had already taken the eminent speaker's name, as well as the wonderful topics that they have uh, been for. We were fortunate enough to um, and understand and learn. Also, a big thank you to the chairman, chairpersons of the two-day e-workshop and providing crucial inputs and opinions on the topics presented in the past two days. I place on record my deepest sense of appreciation to all the organizers who made this workshop possible. My special thanks goes to the convener of this workshop, Professor B. Sunil Kumar, HOD of Physical Education, and co-convener, Dr. Srinivas, who made my anchoring easy and there was constantly in touch with me. A big thank you, sirs. And also, I would like to thank the principal and organizers of Badrugno College for every step of this two-day workshop. They were present and helping us along. Thank you. Thank you, sirs. And thank all the coordinators of Badruka College. A very big thank you. I also appreciate the efforts of the members of the organizing committee and coordinating committee for making this workshop a success. A special thanks goes to the participants who have been the backbone of this two-day workshop. I once again want to place on record our, our thankful to our esteemed chief guests, speakers, chairpersons, and participants. We thank you from the bottom of our heart. It has been a great pleasure. Thank you. Be safe. Get vaccinated. Good day. Before I conclude, I need to thank Thane, Madam, because from last two days, she's very uh, busy with the anchoring. Uh, and she, she is not our physical education department, but she has been with us with one word by Professor B. Sunil Kumar, sir. She has been with us. Thank no, you no, very no. much, sir. We need to say thank you. A big thank Sino, you. Sino, sir, now also we are part of in our physical education. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Being, being a political science <laughs> from uh, Little Sabar Degree College. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, My madam. Pleasure, thank you. My pleasure, sir. My pleasure, sir. My pleasure. I, I, I need to thank uh, Prusty, madam, also. Yes, she is. Uh, she is on another call, sir. 
thank you very much. And thank you, Madam, also, principal. Yeah, I will convey, I'll convey the message to us, sir. Yeah, my regard. Yes, definitely, sir. Definitely. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. sir. Thank you, dear now, now I request yes, all the participants. Now I request all the participants to raise for a Janagan Mana. National. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Janagan Mana. Be fair for five minutes so that we can have a discussion with everybody. Be for five minutes, then we'll close. Sir, can I leave, sir? Sir, yeah, can I leave, Srinivas, yeah. sir? Yes, yes, madam. Yes, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. Professor Sunil, sir, and Srinivas, sir. Congratulations, Successful Professor Sunil Kumar, sir, and all the teams. Shri Khan, sir. Can I get uh, to speak? Uh, Kumadini is there. Kumadini is there. Kumadini is there. Sir, I'm fine. Thank you, ma'am. I've been listening, sir. I was not on screen, but I was listening. Oh, good, 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 good. good. Sir, good evening, everybody. Thank you, Raj. Sir, good evening, sir. Hi, Mali, sir. How are you? Mali, sir. Sir, good evening, sir. I am very thankful to you, sir. And once again, all the uh, uh, we are uh, success today. Uh, I am very proud of uh, uh, being a physical education teacher. Uh, so happy. So congratulations to all the team efforts, all the members of. Thank you very much. Actually, this is a conference and a workshop. This is a team work, not individual work. Yes, yes, sir. And very thankful to Dr. Nalina Srinivas. Srinivas, 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 Srinivas
was yeah. very successfully conducted. Yes, they were. Uh, the screening was done by Srikant, Dr. Srikant, and Dr. Nalala Srinivasar had done a fab fabulous job. And thank you, Raja, thank you so much. Sir, sir, uh, Srikant, thank you so much for your kind heart support. Uh, with your presence, we need to conduct more sessions in future. Right, right, sir, right. Sir, yeah, sir, sir. One more thing, Sin, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, don't close the session as quick as possible because we need to download the session. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, will, I will call you back so that you can shut down the session. Now we are uh, just downing, downing, downloading the session. Na? Okay. Ah, sir. आप लोग पूरे खाना खाए नहीं खाए हम लोग भी नहीं खाए आप लोग भी नहीं खाए मेरे को तो उतना तो मालूम पड़ रहा है नहीं हमारा क्या बोलते हैं आपने देखने वाले ज्यादा है तो आते यहां यार देख खा लिए हम काम करते हुए खाना खिला रहे सो स्वीट थैंक यू फॉर द होल टीम हु इज बीन वेरी मच टाइम टाइम को मिल रहा है टाइम को खाना मिल रहा है एवरीथिंग इज टाइम टू टाइम ईच एंड एवरीवन टू हेल्प अस अंडर डायरेक्टली इनडायरेक्टली आई थैंक यू ईच एंड एवरीवन I know, sir. Seriously, it was very informative, sir. Sir, sir. I could not see physically, but I was very much audible, sir. Yeah. और अच्छा है नहीं नहीं वो लोग आज जो भी क्या बोले तो hundred तक हुआ हमारे permission का hundred हुआ और more than ही two hundred हुआ two hundred गए कि hundred गए कि उससे हुआ YouTube से हुआ. I was very happy, sir. मैं बहुत सारे बच्चों को बोली, sir. अच्छा अच्छा कर अच्छा कर. वह सर वह सर वह तो अपना क्या बोले तो काम भी बच्चे ना. अपना अभी आवर स्टेज इज ओवर सो कमिंग अप कमिंग हु आर टू कम ईच ऑफ जनरेशन टू कम एंड टू कम फॉरवर्ड सो ईच एंड एवरीबॉडी हैज टू कम चांस गॉड गिव टू चांस ईच एंड एवरीवन एंड गॉड गिव टू एबिलिटी ईच एंड एवरीवन ऑफ कोर्स सर वो खाली ऊपर आना है वो इंपॉर्टेंट है सो मेरी तरफ से सबको बहुत बहुत वो लोग को शुभकामनाएं देते हुए और हेल्थ अच्छा रखना और मैं हेल्थ के बारे में ज्यादा बोल रहा हूँ मैं आपका सेशन भी वही था सर बहुत बोले आप बोले श्रीकांत बोला तीनों सर भी बोले सर नहीं नहीं ऐसे और कॉन्फ्रेंसेस करते रहना सर आप सी दैट यू डू सम इंटरनेशनल ऑफलाइन आल्सो सर वी आर होपिंग फॉर यू टू डू सम ऑफलाइन कॉन्फ्रेंस आल्सो सर वेर we will get a platform to you have to try right showcase our talent sir we have to try we have to help uh, uh, the all our professor uh, deepla sir rajesh sir each and every one each and every one who are to present uh, in uh, working in the department take the help and we have to do certainly and the half length of the three month or of the six month yeah because we are all in our team is good strength apna team hai na वो टीम से अपन हां बोले उधर जा सकते हैं डेफिनेटली सर यस सर एंड आवर सपोर्ट आवर विल बी ऑलवेज विद यू फॉरएवर सर शोर शोर विद यू ऑलवेज दिस इज इन आवर टीम दिस इज अ टीम टीम इज पावर स्पोर्ट्स इज पावर टीम इज पावर और और कोई बोलने वाला इच इफ एनीवन टू स्पीक बिल्कुल ऑन लेट्स या be happy take care of your health each and everyone enjoy enjoy the life yeah yeah dr malle sir <laughs> malle sir dr malle sir dr malle dr kumudni again bhai good evening good evening good evening each and everyone guru ji successful ha aap logo ke bagar kuch bhi nahi hai bhai ha hamare rajesh sir team effect worked out very uh, well sir हमारे राजेश सर दीपला सर क्या एग्जाम में बिजी हो गए वो लोग वो एग्जाम आए उनसे वो लोग क्या बोले तो चार्ज नहीं मिला अदरवाइज वो सर भी लोग रेडी थे सो नेक्स्ट टाइम डेफिनेटली वी टेक टू ईच एंड एवरीवन हेल्प दिस इज नॉट बाइनरी सुनील बाइनरी ऑल इन वन पूरा ऑल फिजिकल इंटेलिजेंस टीचर का बाइनरी हां सर ओके डॉक्टर नल्ले सर 
ओके 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 सर ओके सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर सर लेट इट बी लाइन अच्छा लाइन पे रो मोर है साहब ठीक है ठीक है सुरेंद्र साहब चिन्नो आए बोल रहे सर आप हाय हाय चिन्ना और यू नमस्ते बड़ा है छोटा है छोटा वाला है सर चिन्नो का है बड़ा का है अभी नहीं आया साइकिल चला रहा है सर बात साइकिल चला रहा है हां ट्रॉफी पहन लेके चला रहा हूं मैं चलो एम पे सागर राजेश राजेश राशु अब मुस्लिम वो मुस्लिम Yeah thank you all now the session is going to end thank you very much thank you all